East Asia have been the conquerors of the land of dawn. But now, new competitors have arisen, hungry to vanquish sea's dominance. Twelve teams will come to battle. Only one can be champion. In this MSC, the 12 qualified teams compete in two stages. First, the group stage, and then the knockout stage. The group stage starts with a draw. The champions of MPL Indonesia, MPL Philippines, MPL Malaysia, and MSC 2023 Myanmar qualifier are placed in Pool 1. All other competing teams are placed in Pool 2. Pool 1 teams will be distributed across four groups. A, B, C, and D. The other eight teams will be drawn randomly into the other groups. Teams from MPL Indonesia and MPL Philippines will not be drawn into the same group making sure things stay challenging. Each team will fight each other once, with the winner of each match decided in a best of three. Only the top two teams of each group will advance to the knockout stages. As for the knockout stage format, it will be a single elimination bracket, with each team fighting in a best of five series. Teams from the same group won't be drawn into the same knockout matchup. There is no second chance. Losing teams are eliminated from the tournament until it comes to the semi-finals, where losing teams fight for a chance at third place. But after the semi-finals, we come to the grand final in a best of seven matchup. The knockout stages will take place over four days, from June 15th to 18th. No matter which side you stand for, let your voices roar and carry your team as they fight for honor, glory, and victory. Witness history in the making as we see the world this MSC in Cambodia. Big difference sebab dekat M4 nampak macam mereka ada identity crisis. They're not sure how they want to play the game. They're not sure who's going to be the carry, what kind of rotation that we're going to use. 
Contohnya macam Momo cover lebih daripada satu role, Ziku juga lebih daripada dua role sekalipun di cover. Jadi ini membuatkan pasukan tu terlalu boleh saya katakan uh, sedikit bercelaru, hilang identiti. Lapor digugurkan ketika ini. Sedih, ya. Yeah. Kecewa, ya. Yeah. Tapi apa lagi yang perlukan? Apa lagi yang kita kurang sebenarnya untuk membawa jalur gemilang ke Grand Final di peringkat yang lebih tinggi? But for this season, like you said, they're very focused. Chiku, you only play gold lane. Chiku, you only think about how we're going to win. And everyone else is going to provide the, the coverage for Chiku guys. So for this season, it's definitely different where they're very focused on their own style of play which is the langa playstyle but now it's almost like the lawan balik kind of langa where you're trying to make the opponent fight you and then you win the the, the fight eventually bila uh, player dengan coach Filipino masuk ni dia lain sikit daripada kebiasaan kita orang buatlah selalu dia lebih kepada lebih de, uh, disiplin at first it's hard uh, because of the language uh, there are those times that I cannot understand them and they cannot understand me. But me and Jim figured it out like, okay, Jim, I will tell you the instructions, then you translate it to them. So that's what happened. That's why our work get easier because of it. Pemasukan Coach BF, saya rasa dia lebih ke arah disiplin lah. Sebab kita orang ni tak ada disiplin sangat. So bila dah ada dia ni, kita orang lebih ke arah disiplin and ingatlah motif kita nak main dan tujuan kita main sebab So I've known Chiku before he entered Dota. So I've known him for a while now. And I feel like he really did not change much. And yes, he is comfortable on camera, but he's more comfortable in stream. So maybe the viewers online are not as intimidating as the viewers in person. Perbezaan dulu saya single, sekarang saya dah kahwin. Kalau Ciku ni sebelum kahwin ni dia jenis kaki langgar Tak kisah lah kalau uh, sebelum ni Puknis kan uh, girlfriend dia kan Dia langgar je Puknis tu uh, Sekarang ni dah kahwin tu dia macam Okay ni wife aku aku kena jaga dia Dia tak boleh langgar lah uh, uh, Itu lah uh, itu Ciku lah uh. I think he's an absolute legend I think that he really pushes the agenda And he really knows how to test the limits Or at the very least very situationally aware of what he's capable of on a particular marksman. Although the meta has shifted and Chiku has definitely changed roles, he's, you know, he has to evolve with the times. I feel that Chiku is still at an age where he's adaptable, but age is eventually going to catch up to him at some point. We just don't know when. Kalau bagi saya, selagi saya rasa saya boleh main, walaupun tak macam orang lain kan, macam kalau main macam pasien main. Tapi bagi saya, benda tu tak penting, dia lebih ke arah on point lah. So selagi saya boleh on point kan benda-benda yang penting, lagi tu saya akan main lah. Kalau dah sampai masa orang tak boleh, stop lah. Ramai orang yang maki kata suruh keluar Toda, Moon dengan Ciku suruh keluar Toda apa semua. But in the end of the day, kita orang sendiri dapat buat lah. So bersyukur saya sangat kepada Allah SWT yang memberi kita orang kawan-kawan yang macam family macam ni. So Alhamdulillah sangat-sangat lah.
dream team Ain't nothing can stop or restrain We are a force to be reckoned with Destiny, kingdom, and land Battle like Atlas, winning with madness Count us to practice, that is his match We are the heroes here to slay Never back down, never a strength It's Mirko from Indonesia. Here from California. It's North America's favorite caster here. I'm Diablo from IGAG. I'm Sing Echi. I'm from the United States. from Echo Philippines. I'm Yawi from Echo Philippines. I am Raime from Phine Esports. I am from Myanmar. I'm Chma, one of the junglers in Cambodia. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جمهور موبايل ليجند الكريم منورين أحلى عيلة وأحلى جمهور في الدنيا. And I just want to tell you guys all to get hype and to get excited for MSC 2023. All the underdogs are coming from across the world to go and compete against the pros, against the favorite. <تصفيق> Without being said, hashtag see the world and hashtag roar for MSC. Roar for MSC. Nampotoda, buat tuntun, elangga semua Alright. Hashtag roar for MSC. Hashtag see the world. Kamu cari sini. Roar for MSC and see the world. Hashtag roar for MSC. Hashtag see the world. GG RG. Roar for MSC and see the world. And Shark, I know you're hungry for first place. I'll play them. I'll class them. I'll style them. Let's go get them, boys. See the world, roll for MSC. Don't forget to watch us in MSC. I hope you support us on MSC. See the world and roar for MSC. It's time to roar for MSC and hashtag see the world. My name is John Marwila Luna. I am the team captain and the tank support of Blacklist International. Uh, my favorite MLBB hero would be Estes. And I think, um, alam naman na ng karamihan yun. And favorite ko siya kasi ano, ever since talaga na naging into gaming ako, sobrang hili ko na talaga yung mga support heroes, yung mga utility heroes. And parang sobrang fit kasi siya talaga sa, ano, sa playstyle na meron ako. Yeah, of course, kung hindi iba ba ng kalaban. Uh, siguro kung magkakaroon ako ng superpowers, yung katulad na lang din siguro ng favorite hero ko na si Estes para mahil ko lahat ng mga brokenhearted. Uh, my real life hero would be my mother. Kasi ever since na bata pa lang ako, grabe na talaga yung uh, mga sacrifice niya para supportan ako. Hindi lang ako actually, kundi yung uh, buong pamilya, buong pamilya ko. Talagang ginagawa niya lahat para mabigay yung mga pangangailangan namin pang araw-araw. And actually, kaya sobrang inspired din ako gawin yung mga na-achieve ko ngayon dahil talaga sa kanya. Kasi hindi marami siyang value na naituro sa akin na ayun yung ina-apply ko ngayon. Uh, biggest rival in MSC. Uh, for me, pili ko lahat naman biggest rival eh. Kasi this is Battle of Champions eh. Kumbaga Battle of the Best. Pero kung merong isang team siguro, it would be Echo. Kasi ilang beses na kami nilang dinurog eh. So parang magandang mabawian sila sa Grand Finals. And siguro para magawa namin yun, kailangan talaga namin double, hindi lang basta doblehan, kundi triplehan yung ginagawa namin uh, pagpa-practice. Yes, yeah, sila na sumusuport sa Blacklist International, sa Blacklist Asians, sa Weaver Spam, and maraming maraming salamat sa walang sawang suporta nyo. And sana padali nyo pa rin kami suportahan yan kahit anong mangyari. And maraming maraming salamat.
dream team Ain't nothing can stop or restrain We are a force to be reckoned with Destiny, kingdom, and life Shining yeah. like Atlas, winning with madness Count us the practice, that is his match As we are the heroes here to slay Never back down, never yeah. astray I'm Danavid James Del Rosario, also known as Wise, and I'm the jungler of Blacklist International. Ang um, favorite Mobile Legends hero ko is si Sanshin, and kasi ano eh, Korean ano siya, general. Tapos yung kit niya sa paglalaro, sa yung passive niya, yung skills niya overall. Tingin ko medyo 50-50 yung paggamit ko sa kanya sa MSC 2023 kasi yung meta ngayon hindi masyadong pabor kay YSS so mahirap siya ipasok sa ano sa game lalo pag ang kalaban mo is mga pro player din and yung mga best of the best tulad ng mga champion and sa mga first runner up medyo mahirap siya ang qualities ng mga hero is ano eh inuuna yung yung iba kaysa sa sarili nila and yun yung mga hindi sila selfish eh pagka ano hero ka talagang unahin mo talaga yung mas ikakabuti ng iba kaya sa sarili nyo. Ang real life hero ko is yung parents ko, syempre, kasi sila yung nag, ano sa akin eh. Nag, nagsilang and simula dun sa pagkabata ko, sila na yung kung ano ako ngayon, sila yung dahilan nun kung ba't ako tumagal sa mundo. Uh, medyo mahirap yung buhay namin and yung mama ko is nag OFW para supportahan kami. And nung nag-start na ako as a pro player, mas sinuportahan pa ako ng ano ng mama ko na iperso yung pangarap ko and siya talaga yung pinaka nag nag ano sa akin nagtiwala nung wala pa nag sumusuporta sa akin siya talaga yung andyan number one supporter ko so sa kanya ko talaga nakuha yung ano motivation na ipush tong pangarap ko hanggang sa ngayon na successful na ako na pro play Uh, si mama talaga hindi siya mahilig manood sa on-site kasi inaatake daw siya sa puso eh. Pero nung nanood siya, malaking bagay yun kasi malaking tournament na kasi yung nasalian ko nun, which is MPL na. And madaming su- taong sumusuporta na. Nakakatuwa lang na nakita ng magulang ko kung ano yung ano, niris ko yun. And nagtagumpay talaga ako dun sa pinurso ko na pangarap ko which is paglalaro nga ng Mobile Legends. Nakatuwa lang na nakita niya yung kung gaano kalaking community na yung ML dito sa Pilipinas. Uh, sa mama ko, thank you sa pagsuporta sa akin. Tulad nga nang sabi ko, ikaw ang pinakadailan kong batang dito ako yan kasi ikaw ang unang nagtiwala sa akin. Ang biggest rival ko talaga this coming MSC is Echo talaga kasi sila yung champion this MPL Season 11. And dalawang beses na nila kami tinatalo sa Grand Finals. Pero lahat naman ano, tinitingin ko as rival sa MSC kasi yung mga kasali sa MSC is champion din ng mga region nila pero tignan natin kung this time makakabawi kami ngayon sa ECHO sa ECHO sana tayo pa rin magtapat sa Grand Finals and this time tingtingnan namin kung kaya na namin talaga kayong talunin uh, thank you sa mga sumusuporta sa amin simula nung umpisa sa mga agents sa BY Spam sa Kawais at sa Mamshus ka Mamshus Uh, thank you sa sumusuporta sa amin. Sana supportahan nyo pa rin kami sa MSC and sana makuha natin yung champion.
every boundary and chain Ain't nothing can stop or restrain We are a force to be reckoned with Destiny, kingdom, and land Battle like Atlas, winning with madness Count us the practice, that is his match Just be of the heroes, he it is late Never back down, never a strength ការរៀបកម្មទៅខាងស្រាវនេះពិតជាមានក្រៈសំខាន់ <coughs> <coughs> <coughs>
Gaze to heaven, set the fire to the sky Woo! Keep burning bright, keep the allies And the enemies mesmerize Strive for domination hey. Hey. Feel the pressure rising The fight with your life and for your nation With your devotion and emotion Lay it on the line, the choice is yours Offense or defense, let the courage war Reaching for new hearts Chosen one that brings the heat, the passion, the heart, the soul, and the fury. Show it all, let the world see we are legends. Stepping on the ground, no time to waste. Striving to conquer, face the foes we grace. Be the challenger.
boundary and chain Ain't nothing can stop our restraint We are a force to be reckoned with Destiny, kingdom, and land Battle like Atlas, winning with madness Count us to practice, that is his match We are the heroes here to slay Never back down, never restrain Yo, yo, fatal length Yo, yo, cynical swim Match by match, day by day Determination and one at a time
Welcome everyone to MSC 2023. Welcome back everyone. My name is Harada Miki and I will be your host of MSC 2023. And today I'm in with Gideon Q from Malaysia. Welcome to Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Thank you, Miki. I'm really glad, glad to be here. I've been impressed with the friendliness and the cheerfulness of the local crowd here in Cambodia. You guys make me feel at home. Really? I, well, <laughs> Your cheek's so red right now. <laughs> I, I can't help it. I can't help it. I'm super excited today. But Miki, what are we doing here? Of course, we have something special here. Ooh. Yes, of course. Special, special. Yes. And also have something special from Malaysia too, I think. โอเคจ้องดูในระดับนี้มาทั้งท่าการประกวดไทยนั้นคือจีไงตีปีจมูกน้องแวะกรุ๊ปสเตย์ใครก็มีจมูกน้องกล้องโตแต่ก็โดย
what's with what's with that? What was, what was with that eye? What was that eye? What was that eye? I mean, like even we Malaysia, we don't say sword pictures that much. We're just like, not? why? What's wrong with it? It's, it's not as catchy. Pictures. It's just like you know, Todak Langar. You know, right, it's it's more right. it's more our flavor, you know. All right, all right, Todak Langar then. Boom. But you know, before we get into the next match, we are going to thank our sponsors first because MSC 2023 is powered by Moonton, supported by ROG, the official gaming phone, and Secret Lab, our official chair partner. Thank you to our lovely sponsors because MSC would not be possible without your support. Absolutely, and MSC 2023 is coming full swing right now. From June 5th all the way to June 18th, purchase the MSC Pass to get all new CN, the Atlas Rune Sentinel, and you can complete the pass daily to obtain lots of MSC coins and exchange them for returned MSC skins like, you probably know the Jawhead skin, the Space Explorer, Leo Mord's Triumph Eagle skin, and Claude's Earth Smitius. Other rich rewards award await you too, and LaFell's gonna bring it to you. You know what? Aside from these, you can also participate in a lot of events like MSC Support Chess and Champion Guest. What are you waiting for? Join MSC 2023 event and now hashtag see the world, hashtag mobile legends bang bang, hashtag MSC 2023. Yeah, don't forget those hashtags, okay guys? If you want to upload anything you want, you know, don't forget those hashtags. Put it in so we can also enjoy the content that you create as well. But, you know, I kind of forgot what happened yesterday. What, really? but Already? Yeah, I have a really bad memory. So I think we're going to take a look at the daily recap video. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get to it. MSC 2023 group stage day number one was a showcase for the gold laners. With projectiles and ranged attacks, who came out on top? <laughs> Onik is determined to shake off their group stage curse against Burn X Flash. With the help of an incredible showing from Boots and Keyboy, the Sky Kings gobbled up Donut to get their first win. Shut down oh, Boots! They're defending! Dunk will kill! And Shut now Cat gets Tyree! The face will no. grow! No way! Oh my god! Maniac for Boots! Maniac in the first game of MSC oh Game goes! Next, Team Evo allowed Yaoi's Cho to go wild in both games. With that, the Orcas, the M4 World Champions, are on course to their goal of topping Group A. It was a fierce back and forth between the White Tigers against the Rising Phoenixes. It's still a battle! It's Flipper Forward! But ultimately, with the help of Taz, Brand, the Indonesian King of Marksmen, was able to secure the victory for Evo's Legends. Evo's Legends have reverse swept Phoenix! We saw plenty of amazing goal laners showcasing their skills during day number one of MSC 2023. For day two, which other roles will continue to shine? It's time to hashtag see the world. All right, and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the event that occurred yesterday that Honestly, I don't think anyone could forget, right? Yeah. Match number one, Onik, the go bouts against. Oh my God, that was that was too much, man. You know, one would say too it's much. Mad Liddy, right? Mad Liddy. And obviously, you won't. How can you forget, especially after watching that recap? Whoever voiced that was a, is a, he has a great voice. He does. Here's, here's the thing, right? Honestly, we went back home, <laughs> scrolled. We see a lot of moments, man. A lot. Which a lot of bombastic, Mister Bombastic. Mr. Mr. Bombastic, but this is the group standings here from day number one. We are going to see up this being updated, right? Because we are going to see matches from Group A, Group B, and Group D. And in particular, today, we should know who's going to be on top here in Group B. Definitely. Larry. I mean, looking at Group B and Group C, a lot of people are, you know, mixed about which one of these groups are, is the group of death. And yeah. so far, I'm really looking forward to how Group B unfold. RSG, SG, we've heard so many good things about them during scrims, and even just with the new roster coming up. And 
I just, I'm excited to see their match, and especially Group D, because this is the first match of the day. We're going to see Todok taking on Occupy, and if this was M4, we'd probably be, be saying it's going to be an easy game for Todok yeah. based on stats. But Occupy has since improved a lot. Yeah, we've heard so many good things. We're not going to look at Group C because they're not going to be playing today. But yeah, Todok going up against Occupy. Occupy is the first non-C region that will be C playing for today. And you know what? As a Southeast Asian kind of guy, we do want to see how does the regions outside of Southeast Asia, will they bring balance or chaos? This is the first day where we will see it happening. And th this is today's schedule. Toda going up against Occupy. Phoenix going up against RSG Sleet SG and ending it out Echo going up against Fire Flux Impunity. There, you got it. Yeah, I did. I did. You didn't I, say I, yeah, I, I I tried really hard. <laughs> I, I focus. He had to slow it down. If yeah. you guys replay it again, he said I, Fire Flux Impunity. impunity. It's I a practiced bit of a my mind off. He not not the same one, but you know. His I mind off. off. Gotta do it in the right tone, yeah. bro. All right. But of course, coming back into the first match of the day, like you mentioned, it is going to be Todak going against Occupy, the Egyptian Drakes. But the headline, right, the theme okay. of this match what is, it? is protecting supremacy. Ah. Do, do, you, do you get it? It's, I get it. I get, you get it. it? You it's, get a, it? it's a whole theme of last year's MSC, mm -hmm. supremacy, right? And we have been seeing the supremacy reign over the entire MLBB esports world. So and far. So far. So far. It's time for it to change, though. And Mina has a shot to try to upset the odds. And so far in MSC 2023, we've seen a lot of crazy upsets almost happening. So we're at the edge right now that I just want to see it happen. Because if we're going to talk about changes, right? Having an MSC being won by non-MSE region, that's going to be big. It is going to be big for sure. But we do have to take a look at this for just a bit, right? Occupy is a team that is comprised of very, very... Tall members? Okay. Yeah, they are I was, tall. I, I was about to say they, they are, are definitely tall. a team. They are tall. They are a team, but they're also very, look very intelligent, this. right? Medi medical studies. Exactly. Engineering. Alpha as well. Wow. Yeah, this is like, dude. They're overqualified. Yeah, I, I can't do any of this. Brains for bronze. Oh, Brains for man. bronze. And honestly, it also just shows you how much they've improved. Because um, from what I know, Occupy Thrones back at M4, it wasn't the full team. They actually had a few substitute members because a few of their members couldn't actually fly out. Now, with a new roster, we're going to have to see how they perform on stage up against a very well-known team who's been in every international M series. Not going to lie, I'm actually surprised. I'm hearing the crowd cheer. But yeah, Soda, basically, they are the face of Malaysia. Every single international event, even SEA Games, where uh, we have a lot of uh, different members from different teams, there are Toda representatives. Doing the M1, start off very strong, having third place. After that, they've been struggling. Now we have to see whether for this MSC, will this be the start of a new Toda where they can start to get a better placing in international tournaments. For sure, but even then, we already see a development, right? I mean, do you see MSC 2021 and then MSC 2022? Yeah, they place it, a little it, bit it goes, higher. No, it, goes it, it went it goes lower. Back, it's, it's it went backwards. No, it's like third and then fifth, sixth, fifth, sixth, and then nine, twelve. Right. So right. It's, okay. it's kind of like their gold graph in game. <laughs> okay, C games. Yeah, C games got good. C games. Silver. C you know. games, right? Silver, medal. I was involved, so that was great. What's the C games? I don't remember anything. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's I don't think any Indonesians really want to <laughs> remember the SEA Games. But sure, we already see some sort of development coming in from all these respective regions. And honestly, I'm excited to see what exactly is the performance that Todak has in store for us today. But before that, I think we need to welcome them onto the stage first. Most definitely, man. Once again, both these teams are going to be making their way up on the stage. Firstly, we're going to start with the first team walking up all the way, having a lot of experience. But we start with the marshals. To officiate this match, we have our marshals to facilitate the game, providing fair play and esports integrity. Now it's time. The Malaysian Swordfishes are determined to swim across the river of Nile. Todak Langar! Will Todak continue its unorthodox approach to the game? Will there be any non-meta heroes used by Todak? This is the first time Malaysia only has one representative. We'll see how they do. Revamped, rebranded, 
and recomposed, the MENA representatives are ready to rumble from Egypt. Team Occupy! If Todak is a Chiku-centric team, Opie is a Leo-centric team. The team dynamic is going to be led by the big brother as all the rest follow him behind. Looking at the teams again, we're going to introduce the coaches from both of the teams, starting as well with Tona here, bringing up the analyst as well. We have Coach Moy with Ashi as the analyst and Coach Ola, the analyst, alongside our head marshal to referee this match. Looking at this lineup, Tona, there's a slight nerf because their, uh, their analyst couldn't come because he has his own family issues. So now it is going to be a test for Moy as the head coach for this MSC. But having Ashi by his side, Ashi has been reliable since day one. I feel it's going to be all good. And now we're going to take a look at the official team lineup here for Todak. It's Chiku, Rival, Momo, Moon, and Yums. And one of my main questions here, LaFell, is are things going to swap out once again? No. Are things going to get flexible or is this just going to be flat? The only flexible thing is the heroes. But in terms of the roles, they've, they said no. Not anymore. Not anymore. Chico is like, I don't even care if you give me a tank. I'm just going to play the goal lead. I will never go to any other roles after this. So it's already a very, very different Todak that's stepping on stage. You mentioned a backstage that it is a very stable Todak. Maybe the most stable that we've Definitely. ever seen from Todak. And we're going to see if they are going to stick to that stability here in terms of the drafts as well. Because you mentioned they're very flexible. They've, cr they've actually done a lot in the gold lane. They brought yeah. the Layla even in MPL MY. And team lineup here from the side of Occupy. It's going to be Speedy, Leo, Alpha, Smile, and Maro. And honestly, well, the one thing that I remember about Occupy, okay, there are several, but one of the main highlights for me in particular was Maro, Agreed. honestly. Yeah, I think Maro was the uh, it's very shining light. Yeah in that Occupy team that we watched at M4, that we witnessed at M4. On the Franco, maybe not so much the Kadita, but all the initiation picks, he's able to make it work for his team, and he acts as the prime enabler that gets Leo ahead, Leo-centric. Looking at, looking at both teams is definitely going to be a lot in terms of what's going to happen around mid, because again, Maro is actually very, very strong in terms of engaging, because again, he's a very, very aggressive uh, roamer. And looking at Toda, even though it's a very Chiku-centric oh, style, Wait, what? I don't remember doing this. No, 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 no. Who Someone did changed this? it. Someone changed no, it. No, no, I did not vote for this. Same. Actually, the have been pretty accurate. Like, I mean, with our curses. Who I changed this? Our curses. Wait, okay, okay, okay. We got scammed by the production, man. All right, calm down. Calm we got down. scammed. Calm down, Mirko. What was your prediction? Occupy. Okay, Same. what was yours? Same, Occupy. Because right. mine didn't change. We agreed to Tolkien. use the curse. Yeah, I we mean, agreed to vote for no biasness, other, no but you know, biasness, yeah. but you know, we, we gotta test out the curse. Well, if yo, production, we got we gotta have a word. No, they're using our <laughs> curse against us. They know how powerful it is, so they don't if, let us do it. If Todat loses, dude, oh, dude, the curse is actually like I'm legit. in trouble. So far, your gut, you guys are sitting at hundred percent. Yeah, zero percent lose a win rate. Yeah, that means hundred percent curse, curse rate. rate. Yeah, curse rate. All right, so if anything happens, ladies and gentlemen, you guys know who to DM. After oh, this, the production, right? the, the production, <laughs> not us, not us, man. All right, back to Occupy, right? They're from Middle East, North Africa, MENA, right? But one of the main things that I really wanted to highlight again is Speedy, right? He was a rookie, but last time at MPL MENA Spring 2023, he was actually the FMVP. So there's a lot of other than Maro, right? There are a lot of players that we can actually highlight here. Which but is very course, different. Very uh -huh. different Very. already from yeah. Todok. And now we got to look at the ROG challenge segment. We got to see how they use the ROG phone. How do they use it, Eterna? Pre-recorded footage of a selected player with ROG phone. That's what we're looking at right now. But ASUS Republic of Gamers, or ROG, is the official gaming phone partner of MSC 2023. The ROG Phone 7 comes with the Aeroactive Cooler 7 that provides you with a portable oh. 2.1 sound system Yo, and alongside so the spectacular 165 hertz AMOLED display. You can play games like you never experienced before, so you guys need to check this out right now and utilize the ROG Phone 7 to do that. Bro, who let Leo cook? What? I don't remember his family being that good. Dude, it's the ROG effect, man. Oh, it's you're the right. This, this is what happens, man. Like, if you feel that you're not good, it's not that you're not good. You just got to change phones. 
And if you're Ew. still not good, then we talk. No, 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 no. Then you upgrade your ROG. Yeah, right. Exactly. It was the ROG six, maybe. Now it's ROG seven. Exactly. You Ooh. know what? Clever boy. Clever boy. Clever was one wonder boy, too. Merkel. Yes, a clever wonder man. Lafell. Thank you very much. I wonder wonder lady Eterna. Ooh. Thank you. You can't say woman. We say lady. Yeah. Why? Why? God why man. not? All right. <laughs> Which one you prefer? Right now, I prefer the ROG seven because again, looking at how he played. I think I gotta get that one because I don't play Penny like that. Honestly, I think it's super smooth. It's very smooth. You're very smooth. Thank you. What are these compliments on the desk today? I like it though. I like the vibes. But going back, right? We're looking at Todak here. What can we expect from Todak, right? Because this team is one of the most unexpected teams. Like, we don't know what to expect, what kind of heroes that they're gonna pick out, what kind of roles they're gonna. Yeah. Just bring up Fun, to the... Funnily enough, for play. me, the thing that I'm expecting is mm -hmm. for Chiku to lose lane but still win gold. That's that's a whole picture. Kind for of me, it's right. you said a lot of expect. I think the best way to head on to an, a Todak game is to not expect anything. All right. right? We try to expect their picks, then they go for something weird. We try to predict something weird, and then they go for something normal. So you know what? Just do, let you... you the, the fact that... You, Signature heroes, you see how Mia yeah. in the signature heroes. Oh <laughs> That's it. That shows everything. That's your explanation. What to expect? Don't expect. Recognize for his ability to obtain impressive farm, no matter winning or losing his lane. Like I said, regarded as one of the top three gold laners present at MSC 2023. Now here's the thing. It's kind of weird that Chiku guys. It's very Chiku centric, Toda, but that doesn't necessarily mean they will put a lot of resources onto Chiku. In fact, if we're gonna see weird drafts, we just gotta ask, how does this actually give profit to our Chiku? But speaking about that as well, we're going into the drafting phase. I'm definitely looking at the mid because if Maro can shut down the mid, then I gotta say, man, Toda won't have a lot of room to move around. Then we'll see here, LaFell, Mirko. What do both of these teams have to say in the drafting phase of the first game. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get straight into it here. I'm wondering who's going to be on the blue side? Who's going to be on the red side? Oh, they already got a oh, first wow. There you go. Very quick bands and picks okay. coming through right now from the side of Todak. The Farsa. I'm guessing Joy Occupy? Wan Wan is Occupy is the, the one that got the Novara. Band. But it seems like there is a swap here. It should be... Wait, let me check. I Occupy on the right? Yeah, I... Left, sorry. Occupy on the left, right? Yeah. Because we have Alpha Maro, or is it the opposite? No, no, I, I feel Occupy got Novaria as well as Carrie Occupy. and Lancelot. Okay, okay, okay. And Thora was the one that got the Eve as well as the Arden. Yes. Okay, looking at it again, we just have to talk a little bit about the Novaria. It's sitting at a 100% win rate, and it's only been picked once. Other than that, it's always been banned out. So... We had this discussion yesterday. I'll have this discussion again. I'll take that discussion right now and ask you, LaFell. With Sans playing it, do you think it is just a busted hero? I do think it's a busted hero for a lot of different things because the utility it provides is great. But the other thing that not a lot of people are talking about is the fact that it's so difficult to catch this Novaria. One of the more consistent ways you want to kill her is to use something like a Hayabusa, uh, an Amon, maybe even a Gushin that just bursts very, very quickly before she can enter the wall. And I kind of feel like that is a very difficult thing for them to do and the damage from from, from the Novaria, it's it's one of those things where you don't think it hurts that much, but after you die and you check the replay, it's like, yo, what? 80% damage just from the Novaria? Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Her, her damage is definitely underwhelming at first and overwhelming you later on, but I was thinking that Novaria seems a little similar to Xavier in that sense, right? Mm. He's, he has a lot of damage before, especially before the Wait. nerf happened onto him, but you can oh, counter wow. these kinds of heroes with something that can g dive into the back line. That is ridiculous, by the way. The stats we're yeah. seeing on screen. Fun fact, Speedy's carry, Melissa, and Brody are at 100% win rate. So what? it really shows you how dominant they were in the MPL Mina to qualify for MSC. They didn't just win, they took over. Here's the thing, man, because we've seen this fun fact for other players like Sanford with the Yuzong usually was like one hero. Uh -huh. He has three heroes with 100%? And he That's picked a the carry instantly, right? He he's confident in it. He it shows that, sure, he has the stats to back him up, but the confidence to play it on stage in his first ever international event hey, as a rookie, going up against Lord. the second best goal laner rated internally. Right now, honestly, looking at the draft, 
as a Malaysian, here's one of those things Time that Momo doesn't talk a lot. He's one of those guys that just plays girl. the game. He's, he's quiet. He doesn't show a lot of emotion. But even he said, guys, why do you guys keep giving me the Arlet? Why do you guys just ban him away? So now that Momo has the Arlet, it's already a very good start for Toda's draft. And for now, we got to say, Toda, nothing surprising just yet. Everything looks as it should be. The Eve, the Arlet, the Kufra. And now, I feel if they really want to help out Chiku, maybe pick up Rivals Hero first, and then think about the Marksman matchup. I actually do have a question, right? For Arlet in particular, for Todak, right? Is it only in the EXP lane? So Should far, be. yes. So, so far, far yes. yes. All right. So that's what we're assuming so far here. If, like you mentioned, they want to pick something up, they could pick up something a that can go a against a Lancelot oh, in oh, that jungle. And the Paquito is going to be the choice. When was the last time we saw the Paquito being played on an international oh, stage? But when's the last time we saw the Minotaur? Minotaur. When's the oh. last time we saw a Minotaur? I mean, we talked about this already in the patch notes, right? Yeah. Uh, the only thing really capping the Minotaur was that Rage. And with the adjustment onto the Rage, now you don't even need Rage to go for that brilliant Minion's Fury. And looking at Toda, yeah, they picked up the Paquito. My question is, what's this Paquito going to be? Is it going to be the Tankito that we saw in Indonesia with the Demon Slayer emblem? Or is it going to be full damage knowing that Rival might want to get some damage and or might want to get some cheeky ganks on the Navaria. I'm not so sure, full or not, but I'm kind of feeling this is a Hunter Strike, Malefic Roar, Paquito. After Ooh. that, we'll see whether he will go for the Blade of Despair or he will go a little bit more defensive. Something about that Paquito, though, the damage Still Paquito swords. is you need to get that snow. There you go, okay, ladies you and gentlemen. Like That's Goal a Paquito. Ring. Gold in Paquito. Gold lane, Arlet. Gold lane, Arlet. All right. You know I'll what? do you one better. What? Chiku gold lane Arlen. Yeah. Wow. All right. Here's the thing, right? See, that's why you said assume. There no. you go. And and here's the thing, they won't change the roles. The hero, sure. Like I will use oh tank. I will God. use fighter in the gold lane as long as I'm still in the gold lane. We're what? all good. I love it. I love it. They I want a snowball. It. They want a snowball hard. This is exactly I what I it. was expecting. Stepping into a Todak match. And I'm sure that Occupy aren't really ready for it. But we got to talk about this, right? If Arlet is in, in fact, in the gold lane, mm. how is that going to fare against carry? Oh, early game? You can, expect, you can expect the Arlet to completely bully this carry. The only way you can get him down is if you gank him and shut him down from the start. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the game number one for our first match of the day of MSC 2023 group stage day number two. Into the land of Dawn we go. All right, let's Welcome confirm it right now. Go. Yes, it is Chiku guys on this Arlet. Wow. And Momo. And, and, and here's the thing, right? I kind of feel it because everyone is looking. Arlet is like, okay, this is definitely Momo. It's Momo's hero. I think Chiku guys like, you know what? You're taking a little bit too much of the spotlight. All right, give it to me. I'll show them what I can do. They went for the unbending will here, yeah. LaFell. So he is going for damage. Maybe, maybe like one defense item, uh, something like a, a garden helmet. And then after that, yeah, I, I kind of feel like early game, he's really going for that damage. And uh, we can see Maro here. He's not going to be too aggressive moving around. He's just like, I just got to make sure that Speedy gets his farm. Yeah, that's all, that's all they need to do at this point, right? Because like you mentioned here, Chiku is going to be able to bully him, and Maro knows this. But that actually gives Todak a little bit of an edge when it comes down to that mid lane rotation. Here we go. Right now, a little bit worried Chiku guys might not be Ooh. able to get the last hit. Okay, he still gets it. Oh, he doesn't get the cannon though. But still, as long as he gets it, because at that point, I thought that they were freezing it a little bit too well, that Chiku would actually miss that gold uh, gold minion. So the fact that he still got it, I would say it's still pretty good. But the thing is, smile on this Novaria, usually with the Novaria, you will always get those faster ganks. We got to see how safe Chiku or Momo will be in the side lane. Yeah, so far things are actually looking a little bit passive, right? I think oh, Occupy also, they want to wait for that level 4 power spike to hit on tomorrow in particular. There's a lot of heroes that he can hinder with his ultimate. So I think we're waiting on that for just a little longer. But yeah, so far, nothing too fancy just yet. Actually very interesting here because Toda, they really are Chiku-centric. Just now we saw that Chiku went in range to, gra to grab some experience from the jungle, sharing it with Rival, making sure that everyone gets level 4 for this turtle fight. We'll see, Toda, will they actually contest this? They wanna, it does seem so. But Yums, nope, just uses the Tyrant's revenge away, giving Leo the first objective for Frey. Occupy strikes first, and this is what I'm worried about. For Todok, 
The fact that, you know, they are going to be outscaled here by Speedy. If he is given this much space to play the game, now Minion Fury into the mid lane, forcing a flicker very early on. Luckily for Todok, Smile does not connect, but it's going to be the final stash. We're going to back onto the Tyrant's Rage, into the real world manipulation. And it's a good trade over. Todok with the first blood. Now, Finch Boy is over. Smile's going to be targeted down. He does not have the flicker ready, and he will surely fall to the blades of Rival. Yeah, that backfired for Occupy real fast, real quick. The counter engage setup coming in from Todak was actually able to give them a little bit of an edge there in that mid side. But you can see here Leo already trading back. You saw that beforehand. Oh, wait a minute, Rival? Okay. Yeah, but all this right, does right, show right. the stability of Todak for now because it does look like what they want to do is this they just want to get the farm first and then engage. Looking at the way they're playing the game, it's just all about getting Speedy to a comfortable position, right? Even Smile has taken a few hits in the early game where Todok have been able to completely punish. Smile is very hard to catch on a Navaria, but you need to be very careful because that's what the Ling was picked up for. Whoa! Wow, even more. Smile again, just as I say it, it happens. Smile's gonna get caught by Yums on that Timer's Revenge, 0-2-0. I don't know about the scaling on this Novaria now. I'm actually quite... I want to ask a question, right? Steel leg plates on Smile. Is that normal for Novaria? Actually, not really, because you kind of want to rush getting that... Uh, getting those first two items first. It really depends. Some do want that Enchanted Talisman. I personally prefer having the Clock of Destiny so that you, you, you scale very well come mid to late game. So, yeah. Very not normal, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's unique, right? It's unique, You see yes. the Elegant Gem, obviously, for the mana and the cooldown, but... It's paired with the steel leg plate, so I think she's looking for what more sustainability in these team fights. But now both of these teams are going to be rotating on this next objective. And Chiku guys already starting it up. Already going all in, forcing the Minion Fury very early on as the real world inflation comes down, and Chiku's gonna be able to sustain back up as Speedy tries to deal some more damage. That's the Phantom Execution and even the Retribution from Leo securing it up. Toda only sent three members over there. A good sidestep from Yum will get him to safety. But Rival's taking that purple buff. He's looking for something on the map as Momo just goes for a little bit of a trade down below in the bottom side river. Todok still unable to find these neutral objectives. For that one, it was very questionable. What was the call? Because we see three members of Todak going for the turtle fight, but obviously Rival really needs that purple, so he's not going to be doing anything until he gets it. So maybe a little bit of miscommunication there, because if you want to play around the turtle and Rival doesn't want to scare the turtle, perhaps it's better for him to actually go on Occupy's jungle. But now, Leo. Oh, yeah. Answers aggression with more aggression. He actually just uses the Phantom Execution on to Moon. Gets him chunked quite low, and Occupy actually have gotten a pretty good position here to look for something up top, but I don't think they have enough kill pressure to really threaten Chiku guys. Yeah, they're trying though. They're going for something else at the moment, but that's what I wanted to ask. Todak's composition, right? Is there a certain power spike that we should be looking forward to, right? Because for the first few turtles that occurred in the game, it didn't seem like Todak wanted to commit onto it until just then, where they lost it. I will honestly say, in terms of item, Toda has two power spikes they're looking for. One item onto Momo as well as Chiku guys, and then three items on Rival. I kind of feel like when they have those items, then they can go really, really aggressive. Now, Yumes, does he want to come in? Minion Fury onto Chiku, still able to escape for now. Again, it's going to be Smile missing that, but Yumes is going to be able to find Tyrant's Rage. He will fall to the hands of Speedy as Momo rotates up top. Chiku wants some more, has the final slash, brings them back in. Momo with the flicker. That's going to be Maro still surviving, but in the end, gets punched to death as it's another hit from Smile. But there is no more follow-up. It's Todak winning in these trades. But in terms of kills, Leo even stealing away from the purple buff from Rival. He did use his retribution, but Rival did too. So Leo just won an outright 50-50 retry battle. Yeah, looking at the situation now, I thought they're, they're making quite a lot of decisions that is very, very risky, which is kind of the Todak Langa yeah. flavor. But again, it's like going up against Occupy, I don't know whether they, they're, they're really just trying to force things out and then see how would they respond. And now Leo gets caught just a little bit by Yums, but not enough damage just coming in from Chiku. Okay, at this point, we have a few seconds left until the Retribution gets picked up, but Leo is just, just constantly on these objectives, right? He's on the next turtle already. Yums here trying to open up map, open up the vision as well for his team, but at this point, it doesn't seem once again Todak want to contest. If they did, if they committed, do you think that's a good idea? Honestly, just because this is a link going up against a Lancelot, I do feel that 
the Lancelot will win 70% of the time, so I kind of feel like instead of fighting for the turtle, you just delay it for a little bit and then have Rival farming somewhere else because he needs the Triadus but Maru goes in. Oh, the Mini Fury cancels out the Tyrus Revenge! That's another knockoff! It's massive! But it's a Tyrus Rage in! A final slash from Tiku, guys! Speedy targeted it down, locked up. That's a split split, doing some more. Alpha able to mount on Yums, but he will be traded back in again. That's the gold laner taken down. Meanwhile, Leo. Meanwhile, Leo. <laughs> Meanwhile, Leo, go and get another objective there in the top side. But these are already certain differences we see between both of these teams. So far, Occupy, they have been able to translate that onto turrets, onto objectives, finding something, you know, just more not abstract like Todak. Whereas Todak, they're going in for fights, but there's not necessarily something that they get in advantage towards them. Right now, looking at the replay, Tora, they played the fight very, very well, but I think it's because of their composition having a lot of tanky front lines. But also, we can definitely see Leo has very good decision making where he's like, I could possibly go in this team fight and maybe get a kill, but if we're talking about money, it's probably better just to get the turret and better map control. So I like the decision coming in from Leo. He could have came in for the fight, but he's like, nah, something more valuable is here on the map. Yeah, Todex trading back though, right? You can see that Rival was able to get a turret in that bottom side. Momo here being a little cheeky, trying to push that top side as well. He doesn't necessarily get it because it was cleared on time, but oh, wow. He dodged away with the Thor Rose Leo. Unreal reaction time. Dude, that was actually amazing, and a lot was expanded there. Thought that they, they were waiting, they were trying to camp the bush, trying to get a kill, but he's like, no, I can read you like a book. <laughs> Alpha now is frontlining for the team, and hold on, we see Chiku guys keeping a little bit too front. You gotta be a little bit careful there. Oh, that bottom lane is pushing though for Todak. Don't know if they should exactly commit onto this without clearing that first. But we'll see here. The Lord already in the Land of Dawn. Both teams are trying to sniff one another out. Trying to look for the proper setup, the proper positioning. But look at Rival here. Yeah, he's trying to do what Leo's been doing to his team all the way in the bottom lane, but the Lord's gonna be engaged on fully committed actually right now. Leo has the retry advantage. He's gonna be able to secure it for the team as the Minion Fury locks Yums down, punishing him for that very, very aggressive engage that he doesn't find anyone on. And Occupy! They're winning out through macro, through objectives. I gotta say, just now, Yums, he did not hit his skills as well. Momo goes in, he's trying to clear the minion, and now Chiku guys is there as well. Thought out they're thinking about fighting. Two final slash there, Speedy's still gonna be able to deal some damage. Oh. Rival now with the time of the blaze, flicker for Speedy! Oh, oh my god! god. Speedy! What? An absolute monster in this game! Gets out, and the coordination from Occupy how is this happy and happening? Alpha stopped him for a second. That was so beautiful, Fel. What was that? It must feel bad to be rival at this point. And now, though, it is going to be a 4 for 4 with a Lord on the way in favor of Occupy. 2,000 gold lead. How are we feeling, wow. right? How are we feeling about this? We got to address this. The last time Minotaur was picked was in M2 <laughs> by Tenseca Gaming. A M2. Long time. That was a long time ago. Yeah, right now the Lord is marching up top and Toda, even though they have the Eve, right now Maro is looking for Yums. Oh, the mobility, everything's thrown at Yums. Some of the blades onto the back, Speedy will finally fall there to rival as he's gonna be able to jump onto Smile. He pops into Astral Recall, still able to escape for now as Alpha actually mounts Moon all the way back, gets baited and brought back to the turret. Even the base here at this point with Momo bringing him back with a knockout strike. Alpha should surely fall. Chiku doesn't whoa, want to whoa, stop. Whoa. He goes for the final slash. Maro, so able to escape. If he gets out of this one, I don't know Yo. what to say. The Astral Yo. Spear gonna be used. Mara, Mara. Mara, one HP. Yo. Chiku dives deal the vengeance, but he might actually pay with his life. The Astral Spear is ready. Max range doesn't get it, and Chiku will be able to live for another day. I'm sorry, but Maru was from the base of Toda. Mm -hmm. All bad. the way there. <laughs> yes. That took a very long time to kill the Minotaur. <laughs> he ran a very, very long distance there, buying a bit of time, I guess you would say. And interestingly enough, even though it seems like things are going in the direction for Occupy, the gold lane has shifted, guys. Definitely. Oh, Speedy, though. Oh, just as you say, the gold lane has shifted, the gold has shifted, the gold lane gets picked up. Just like that, easy time for Bench to find him. Leo is able to escape.
What are you doing, Eterna? Sorry. The moment you say I'm something sorry. nice about something, something bad happens. I mean, well, you do have the thousand gold lead. You know what? This is the epitome of a caster. The moment <laughs> you say something good, something bad happens. But speaking of which, right now, looking at the itemization here, Rival has indeed completed three items for himself. The Wind Talker, the Bizzard Fury, as well as the Endless Battle. Quite enough of damage, but so far, he's not immune to crowd control. So he just has to be careful about that whenever he wants to go for those crazy uh, kills onto Speedy or Smile. May I say something real quick, right? Sure. As the longer this game progresses, is it not Todak's game to lose because of their decision to not bring a marksman in that gold lane? It's definitely very risky. Definitely very risky. So it's, it, it will be a skill matchup between Rival as well as Speedy. If Speedy goes down first, game Great. over. If, yeah. if, if Rival goes down first, then even Toda won't have enough damage. So it really is a skill matchup between the jungler and the gold laner. I mean, you can see Speedy already trying to respect the damage output coming from Kodak, right? Already with a Wind of Nature. Perhaps that will have an impact in this next upcoming fight as both of these teams are going in. Retry battle, it's gonna be one out by Leo. This time Speedy's able to flicker out of Yost, but that's a flicker responded over as well. Speedy's still trying to deal with damage, has a little nature, actually buys a lot of time, and he's gonna be able to dish out so much damage before he ultimately falls. Smile on the back, gonna be zoned away as Leo's gonna be caught in the real world manipulation. Chiku guys, bouncing on by Alpha, but he is able to sustain back up. Smile is low, but Occupy, they fall one by one. We can definitely look at how Toda is approaching this game. You know what? Objectives is great and all, but we want kills. We are Toda Langar, and they understand Speedy is the main problem. As long as Speedy is taken care of, then everyone can go in. We see Yums goes in first, being that distraction, but really, the game changer was, was Moon. Creating that space, creating that box, making sure that Speedy has nowhere to go, making it so that Rival can come in. In fact, we're going to look at the replay right here where, sure, the Lord was secured, but look at the way that Moon, if he did not drop that real world manipulation, I honestly feel like Speedy could have outplayed that. Oh, you're right, you're right. He was at the right moment, at the right time. And the trigger discipline that he had on his ultimate as well really just helped those things come along together. And that's how things are looking great for Todak here in these team fights. And I like how this has become the discussion, right? Yeah. Because I asked in the beginning, I was You're like... You're so clever. You know, if Arlet versus Speedy in the long run, it's, you know, it's, it's in favor of Speedy, right? It's in, it's in favor of the carry. But if carry dies like that, like what we just witnessed earlier, then it's no problem for Todak. Speed needs to go and play it the way Benny Cutie does, right? Because for Todak, it's all in or nothing. He needs to go for an all in compass, uh, an all in team fight there with the final smash. They need to display Speedy. If Occupy engage first, I guess that's an answer as well. They can just bait out some of these abilities. But as long as Speedy plays in the back, waits for those big ultimates to be used, and beat up big abilities just like this, they can actually go and melt them down first. Minus Fury, and look at Speedy. He's still all good. Smile's gonna be targeted down, though. Smile on the back. Is assassinated by rival Leo and Mauro. Trying to play it front to back as Yum is going to be able to find a Tarn's Revenge and the Rage to lock him down. That's the RWM dealing some damage as well, but Speedy is way too far away. He needs to clear out this mid lane. Luckily for Occupy, there's no objectives for Todok to take, but they got to be really careful. Smile has been so vulnerable. Right now, honestly, Alpha is doing a pretty good job as a glue, making sure that he's isolating the targets, namely Moon here, but Todok kind of like figured out what they're trying to do. So, Rival, you can solo, you can 1v4. Everyone else is gonna try their best to either protect Moon or protect Chiku guys. Right now, looking at the in-game equipment as well, let's look at Speedy, where he's basically full build. He's only waiting on that rose gold meter. But again, the thing about carry is that you're very short range, so you just gotta make sure that when you go in, you go in safe. And with Rival playing the way that he's playing, it's kinda hard to play safe right now. Yeah, Rival's scary. Rival's very scary for Speedy and for Smile. And that's what I wanted to talk about in the drafting phase, right? Novaria, sure, she's broken, she has the range, she has the utility, and she just has everything in her kit. But the problem is her mobility is so bad and she barely has any defense or escape mechanism. So, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Chiku, guys, is he okay? Yeah, he has the vengeance, so it's all good. Final slash, all alone though, Chiku! 
Okay, he has the immortality. Moment's gonna be able to find the three man knock up, but then again, Fury finds them all. Smiles in a good position. Speedy's still able to escape right now, but Tempest of Blades will knock him up. Speedy not oh. able to outplay that situation, Ooh. but Smile is able to take it back around. Now it's a 3v2. Yums and Moon. Moon is still free hitting. Smile's not able to find that angle just yet, and Alpo is able to find a split split back in time. That's the Astral Recall, giving the Astral Fear to go for Moon. Alpo's still chasing, and that will be it. The lockdown. For or move. Ooh, that that is not enough still though. The split split comes back for a third time in this team fight. And Moon is still alive. Yeah, four members though taken down from Todak. And that means that Occupy, they're gonna force this. They're gonna try and get the Lord. They also take it for sure. And once again, another objective in the hands of Occupy. I gotta say, man, Occupy played that very, very well because they were like, yo, we think they're gonna engage. So let's just guide back a little bit, try to bait out a lot of skills. Once the, once the final slash is, is out of the way, they all all in on the Chico guys. I'm pretty sure even he was surprised that he died that fast. And then after that, Tora's gonna come in just one by one making sure they get the kills onto Toda, and then it's like, okay, you know what? We're all good, we're all good. No one is around to fight us again. Now we go for the Lord. Uh-oh. Seems like they just want to commit down below as well. Toda can't really defend this at this point. They need to rotate up top as Alpha is able to mount Momo, but there's no more fall of Smile. This time in the late game, he's completely scaled up, and this Astral Recall will be on a very short cooldown that he can use to completely bully Todok. Momo trying to defend all along, but the Beast Turret should fall here. Just in a bit, Chiku only finding one with Final Smash. Jim's charging in the back, joining in, but the Minus Fury, oh, with a flicker as well to lock them down. Speedy in the back, targeting it down, but he has the win of nature. He is able to escape for a bit, but the Tempest of Blades will knock him up to take oh him God. down. Speedy's down, oh. that's a Final Smash on the two. Leo still able to survive, but Rival picks him up instantly. He goes for a triple kill, but Smile finds the spear from downtown. Alpha mounted on Moon. He's looking for more. The split split can't save you now. Alpha will fall, and it should be an, a maniac, but we don't see it. Rival almost, though, taken oh. out. Dude, this is a fight of ego, man. Both Toda as well as Occupy, they both want to fight. It's like, we don't care what's going to happen, win or lose. We're just going to go in. We're just going to see who can out-damage you and Tora in that skirmish. They won just because Yumes for once, not for once, for a few times, but this one in particular is amazing because he engaged directly on to Leo. And then look at Rival. No one is there to stop him. And Moon, with a very good real manipulation, actually stopping their movements, that was great. This is one of those situations where, where Toda, they were able to actually stagger their, their, their crowd control very, very well, giving them a big advantage in their fight. Yeah, and luckily enough for Rival, he's on the emblem of Killing Spree, right? So he was able to sustain through whatever messy team fight what we saw earlier without getting taken down first and just immediately take back the domination in that situation. So. Todak now has the gold lead, but 20 minutes in, most of these players should already be at full items. Speedy needs to be really careful in his team fights, and I feel like he's just not being careful enough. He needs Boots to tell him, be careful, bro. Yeah. Someone's looking at you. And Get right someone now, from a different team. Exactly. Speedy, he's been caught so many times, and even in the positions where he is in the back, it's always in range of the real-world manipulation. It honestly just feels like Speedy isn't aware of the spacing he needs in between these fights, uh, going up against an assassin and a long-range mage. At this point, it's almost not his fault. Because again, look at how Tora is kind of like forcing everyone to come after him. Because Alpha, Alpha, your job, go after Moon. And then Maru, your job is to protect Speedy. But the moment the third hit of the Minuan Free comes in, Rival's gonna jump up as well, I frame all of that crowd control and then come back in. So I kind of feel like it's up to the rest of the team as well to protect him, but it's easier said than done. Oh, look at Rival, man. Oh, the, I just think like the Ling is so disgusting for certain way, certain oh, yeah. reasons, right? You think you have the map pressure, you think you've set up properly for the objective, and then Rival just comes in with the Ling and takes that pressure away. And so... Leo is going to be forced to handle that for the moment, and that's information for Todak as well. So, really bringing oh. a game right now. They're looking for an advantage. Oh. Alpha, this might be dangerous, man. Is he going to mount? No, he's not. He's not. He Rival. buys so much time, though. He has the vision. He undated. Occupy now know where Todok are, but 
Whoa, Mono still goes for it. Yums is able to find a rage, and in the back, smile. Rival. Completely targeted, free. Winter Truncheon popped in early. Leo's not gonna be able to save him this time. He buys the immortality, but smile. Oh, he gets out with a flicker. Real world manipulation locks him down. Speedy's still able to free hit for now, but he's not in range to free hit. And Toda just get a free trade, despite Alpha already revealing to his team everyone's position. This is what happens when Toda already got their items, and I like that they understand they can't go for a 50-50. Going up against Leo? No, 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 no. That's not what you should be doing. You should be going for the fight. You should be going in for the kills. And now Rival looks like he's very comfortable. He's like, yeah, you know what, guys? Just give me time and I'll deal with the rest. Man, yeah, Rival has just been so annoying to occupy. Moon as well, honestly. True, yeah. but like the follow-up from Moon is annoying, right? And this is what I wanted to see, the in-game equipment here in the 22nd minute. What stands out? What stands out to me is the fact that everyone has like, what, 13, 12,000 gold ahead. So now we're going to see a lot of items swapping after this. The Novaria, I kind of feel like for a better roam boots, instead of going for the dire hit, I kind of feel like in this situation, just have encouragement so that you have extra damage on speedy where encouragement gives you more attack physical stats as well as attack speed. Even though, yes, for now, it looks like speedy should be around capped on his attack speed, but maybe that extra damage could really help the team out. I think even the poke here, they need to utilize it. They haven't been able to utilize it here in Alpha. Oh, good cancel with the split split there, baiting out the real world manipulation and the Tyrant's Rage as that's the Evolve Lord. He's gonna be able to charge down in the mid lane. Tiku finds the final slash, but Marina Fury knocks three of them up. Disengaging properly for Occupy right now. Phantom Execution clearing out this mid wave, but there is still another wave in the bottom lane and that top lane. Alpha engaged on, that's the CC coming in. Final slash with him back, has the immortality right now. That's also Leo jumping in to try to give his XP laner a bit more space to survive. Three phase turrets down, Todok are looking for more, but they might have to just back up and play for the next Lord. Yeah, they don't have the resources to do so, but Moon already has her ultimate here. Not really sure if they want to commit with that, Looks like they are going to go back up, but look at him charging. Honestly, right now is actually a very bad spot for Toda because Rival, he's always been flanking. But once Occupy is in the base, where are you going to flank? You can't actually come from their own base, so this is actually <laughs> a very this is a very good spot for Occupy. If Toda wants to force this, Speedy is just like, I could dash one step back and I'll be full health within seconds. So. Thought that they, they gotta make sure that they actually bait Occupy out. And this is one of those uh, one of those weaknesses when you don't have a marksman, you can't poke them out with physical damage. Sure, magic damage hurts, but at this point in the game, physical damage is kind of more valuable. Mm-hmm. Minion Fury already used up earlier though. That's a two-man knockup, but there's no more follow-up. Double man stun from Chiku. So looking to find a splash, but he's not gonna be able to find a range right now. Speed is gonna be in the back, targeted down. He doesn't have anything else. He uses where the nature. They step too far off of the base, and Smiles not able to find the astral spheres on. Leo loses his immortality, buys him with a truncheon, is able to pop it right before he dies, buying some more time. But in the back, the team is getting melted down by Moon, poked down, and brought back to the team by Chico with the final slash. Alpha has the immortality. The base is wide open. Rival's gonna go for the turret lock right now. Smile tries his best to defend with a truncheon, the jungle but it does not matter. Toda, with their clashes, with their skirmishes, they take game number one. Todak Langar strike first here in the series of a best of three. And that's exactly what you would expect from a Todak game, right? Theoretically, it would go this way, but Todak takes it into their own hands. They understand their own winning conditions. They understand, I would say, the disadvantage or just what lacks in their enemy, and they just capitalize over it. I think what they really capitalize is that surprise factor. Who would have thought, right? Because we saw the carry ban, uh, sorry, we saw the quad ban, and then they're like, okay, we just gotta shut down Chiku. And they're like, wait, Chiku's on the Arlet? Because again, talking with the players, they're like, the, the best thing about Mobile Legends is that if you don't know what we're doing, we will always have an advantage. And you know what? I kind of bring that energy too. If I don't know what I'm doing, the enemy won't, do what, won't know what I'm doing. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you don't know what I'm doing. Arlet do Goldie. I don't know how. Will you bring it, Mariko? Well, I'll try it, definitely, right? And I'll probably go 0-5, so I won't have the <laughs> same results as Chiku, guys, but that's what makes him Chiku. He can bring the Layla. I mean, his signature, he has Mia in his top three signature heroes, so I think it's time to just say it's pretty normal for Chiku.
Yeah, Chiku brings gold laner versatility to a whole new level, it's right? Like we're in the previous meta where the fighters were in exactly, the jungle. Exactly, because we used to see what Yuzong's in the. Oh gold yeah, Esmeralda, Paquito. I thought it was Paquito gold. Yeah. Same, same. Yeah, we, we even said it. Because that would make sense more. Yeah. yeah. Bully the carry, boom, boom. No. And then Arlet. Yeah. Here's here's the thing. Again, I kind of feel like at first they're like, yeah, this is Paquito jungle, and they're like, what if? <laughs> what if we put Arlet? And then they won't see it coming. Yeah, and they're like, who's going to be the jungle then? Oh, we still have one more pick, boy. Let's pick a Ling. This is this is why, in a way, I kind of love Dota. Because as players and casters, we have like this this banter. Uh -huh. And they will just type on their phones like, guess what? We're drafting. And I'm like, oh, uh, you That's know what? You, and, and then they pick something normal. And then they pick something normal. But either way, we got to talk about Occupy as well. They impressed me. Really did impress me, especially Leo. And actually... I'm not too impressed with Maro's performance. I, I mean, we've been hyping Maro up. We've been saying that, you know, he was the uh, shining light for Occupy back in M4. But in this game, <laughs> really felt... Oh. Of course. <laughs> come on. Come on. The MVP you know for that game. It's Chiku, guys, on the Arlet. And I don't think that's the items, by the way. I, wa I was just about I'm to say, this sure. looks kind of sus. I, I this might be Moon. No, 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 no. The emblem, 100%. I mean, come 100%. on. Because he was on yeah, no, bending, he was on will. bending will, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so let's, right. let's actually move on and look at the highlights. Because at this game, honestly, if we're going to talk about MVPs, uh -huh. I kind of feel like Moon did well, uh, Rival did super well, but I kind of feel like Rival was activated by his team. Because looking at the looking at the fight, it's actually Dota at, at the beginning of the game trying to bait out Occupy into those fights around uh, places that, that is very, very narrow so that Yumes can actually have a very good counter engage. But then after that, just because of how... This, this is one of those situations where Alpha really changed the situation for Occupy. And I do agree with what Mirko is saying, that Maro on this, on this Minotaur wasn't that great. And I kind of feel like... Is it Mara or is it the hero? Because I feel like Minotaur is great, but maybe not used in this kind of draft where you have like two fighters and then an, an assassin. Because again, the Ling, it just keep, keep, keeps on baiting out the Minion and Fury. And then it, it has no value. Yeah, the two times that he did get a big Minion Fury, it was good for the team. But at that point, their backline was just completely shredded down. I like that you mentioned that, right? Because Mara was incredible when we saw him on the Franco, if I'm not mistaken, right at M4. So you're right. Is it the hero or is it the player? As we now take a look at the post-game equipment and stats here. Looking at the items here, because I kind of feel like in terms of damage, they do have a lot of damage. But Leo in this in this game, I almost want to see him build one more damage item because I kind of feel like Moon was able to get with uh, get away with a lot because Alpha went straight on to him. But still, it kind of doesn't matter just because when you pop the real world manipulation and at the end of the game, Blood Wings was built by the Eve, making it so that, yeah, you can come on to me, but I'll survive all of your shots. So maybe just a little bit more damage could have helped out a lot. And you guys using the gold lane Arlet actually built defensively, not offensively. And looking at Momo, he did build the, the Hunter Strike as well as the Malefic Roar as we thought as a jungler, but he's going to add on the Bloodless Axe as well to make sure that he can survive a little bit more. And for Moon, I do feel one of the more impactful items is definitely the Ice Queen Wand as well as the Blood Wings, making sure that no one can run away from the real world manipulation and he can survive yeah. a lot of hits. I just want to say that's an aggressive Eve. That's a very aggressive Eve. No defensive item. Usually exactly. we see like a winner At crunching. At least brute force or immortality, maybe? Something. Just one defensive item. Yeah, and this is full just full damage. Okay, maybe the Blood Wings can be yeah, kind yeah, of considered yeah. defensive, right? It does increase her shielding. So that's the sustainability that she needs. But overall, very aggressive builds coming in from Todak. Definitely. I mean, it's kind of weird because it's aggressive on one side and you see Chiku guys with just full tank items. He has a Thunder Belt and that's it. Everything else was tank. And uh, it was actually Momo who built more damage. He was the one who went for the semi-tank uh, yeah. build that we expected from Chiku with a Hunter Strike, Bloodlust. Again, just really dynamic. I feel like they just did that in-game you know adapt. I think that's the idea. Chiku guys is like, I think for MSE, everyone will target me. Ah. Let Wait me use a, a second. Tank. Rival gold per minute, 908. He wow. had 20k gold, I, I believe, at one point of the game. Uh, yeah, he did, because it's 25 minutes. And yeah, he was a monster on this Ling. Not only was he You're getting a monster. 
Thank you. In a good way. Yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be a monster in a bad way. But I am a monster in game. And that's why I can tell you guys that Rival is a beast of a man. Because not only did he win, by the way, a Cambodian dress up challenge with Miki, but anyway, the real, the real thing now in game, that's an unreal stat to have up against a composition that could actually cover up. They had a glue, they had a lot of invades. And usually, as a Ling, if you're facing off against a Lancelot utility with Demon Slayer, you don't get to, t to play the game. At one point, Leo actually stole the purple buff, and he still yep. was able to play around that. Yeah, he did. Multiple times. Multiple times. And at some point, he was a level ahead of Rival, and yet Rival still has the highest gold per minute in that game. I would say this is one of those situations where Rival was great, but it really was his team, because they bought a lot of time for him. Yeah. It's like, guys, I don't have the purple buff. Can we not fight? And it's yeah. like, yeah, sure. It's not within our nature to not fight, but if you ask for it, we'll give it we to you. We want a long guard, but it's fine. We will we, we hold back. But again, I also want to bring up, Moon did so well in that game. He only died once. He did the most damage. He had the most assists. And the fact that the real world manipulation, he always positioned it at a way where the moment you walk just a little bit, you'll hit the edges of it. Yeah. Making sure that there's no way for you to outplay that. So I kind of feel like that that really helped out the team a lot. Yeah, Speedy was not having a good time at not all. Time. Like he was the main source of damage for Team Occupy and yet, there were moments when he was untouched that you saw him actually, what do you call it, outplay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? But most of the time when he gets caught, like you mentioned in that real world manipulation, it wasn't a good game for Speedy at all. No, seven deaths as a marksman, right? Definitely something that they have to try to, you know, adjust and uh, learn from in game number one. Because again, I feel like, yes, like LaFell said, it is very hard to be Speedy as a low range marksman in this game against two assassins. No, one assassin, two fighters. Everybody just wants to dive at you. I understand that it's tough, but he needs to adapt in a way where maybe he can play the guerrilla warfare style that Benny Cutie brings to the table. Wait in the back, wait for these resources to be used because I think that was the opening. Or maybe just not an early carry pick. Yeah, no. but also we gotta that was not his fault though. We gotta talk about Toda betting out the, the Franco as well. I kind of feel like they they just like okay, as long as no one can stop rival, that should be good. So taking the Minotaur, because again, Minotaur is good for engage. For disengage you can kind of outplay that as well. So mm. I kinda feel like the Minotaur pick is a good pick, just not against a, a Link. Mm. I agree. You know, if they Maybe have a carry, Akai? Akai? Maybe even honestly Kaja and Franco. Akai, right? Kaja, the two picks that they can I mean Franco was banned, but yeah. yeah. Kaja, uh, Akai would be great. Mm -hmm. Banned. Banned? Banned. Damn. Yep. Yeah, that's why. That's why it was really hard for them, I guess. I mean, uh, looking at it, right, the Franco was banned in the second phase. Yep. So the Franco was still up for grabs in the first phase. That's yep. what we're talking about here. And usually, again, if you go for the carry, that's why Torak instantly banned out the Franco. Franco carry is a disgusting combination that a lot of teams have used in the past and even to this day. Just because, like, because again, like the carry has a lot of damage. The only problem is doing it safely. Mm -hmm. Having a suppressed hero always makes sure that you win the two v ones no matter what. But again, looking at the way that Toda is drafting, something about international events makes them be a little bit more experimental. I I almost want to say because again, during M4, Chiku brought the Hayabusa goal in, didn't do too well. The start of MPL, bringing out the Grog goal in, kind of was okay, but didn't give them the victory. Now bringing in the Arlet, and I kind of feel like this kind of puts just a little bit more pressure onto Occupy. It's like, what do we got to do next? Yeah, they don't know what to expect at this point, right? You want to prepare, but you don't know how to prepare. And at this point, they, they kind of have to win, right? In this group, it is tough. A lot of people already wrote them off from the start of the, mm -hmm. the whole tournament. They're in a group with the Malaysian champs and Blacklist International. Oh. That's their next matchup. I mean, we were talking to Ken, and even Ken is like, I don't know what's up with Malaysians. They're always strong in the group stages. The next part, I'm not going to say about how they <laughs> perform during the knockout stage, but you know what? I, I, I'm holding out hope. But I want to ask honest opinion from you guys. Do you guys think the Arlet pick was good, or, or was it like kind of unnecessary? Like the rest of the team kind of carried their own weight, so that was kind of whatever. I you want to go first? For me, I get the, I get the idea, right? Carry in the late game, it's very difficult to counter, I would say. So why not utilize where Carry is the weakest, right? Which is in that early game after the buff, sorry, the nerf that she experienced in like two patches ago. So I get the idea. I don't know why in particular Arlet though. Because I think that same function could be achieved with a different hero. Mm. 
I think in this particular draft, I think it was really good because they, against an Ovaria and a carry that was picked early, like you said, maybe that was one of the mistakes that Occupy made. That's how you get it done against this composition. A pure front-to-back composition, it relies heavily on range. You want to make it chaotic. You want to make it as though the front-to-back does not work. That formation is what keeps Occupy in the winning position. And speaking of the Novaria, yeah. now, one and one, 50% win rate. We've been talking about how broken it is, how it's built in map S-tier, yeah. S -tier, but I think this confirms it, right? Not anyone can just pick up the hero. It is a very tough hero, especially against dive-heavy teams. So it's not broken. It's it is not broken, like but there's counterplay. For me, I Because, like, the word broken means, like, anyone can pick it up and anyone can do well. And, like, that's not the case. I don't think so. Because, like, Fanny was broken, but not everyone can play Fanny. Hmm. For me, I've talked with some players, and they, the way that they scale it is they, they compare it to other heroes. They say, like, Novaria is broken, is strong, but she's not a Valentina. Like, Valentina, the, 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 the start of Valentina, she, she completely washes the competition. 100% ban, the moment you get picked up, 100% win. The Valentina was, like, the top of the yeah. S tier. So compare Novaria to Valentina, Novaria is kind of like high A, low S. I honestly think it's because of the vulnerability of the Novaria. Yeah, it has a very low HP pool. Like, I, I, I think Rival like did two or three basic attacks. And, and it's gone. Winter Truncheon, yeah. everything. Because like Valentina, you can still dodge around, you can still escape, you can have a lot of you know creativity with her ultimate as well. But for Novaria, you're just basically a walking target, similar to um, Xavier, that's why I mentioned Xavier in the game as well, but we have a quote here from Maro, his thoughts on Group D, Miracle's favorite group in particular. Even we have a hard group or a group of death, we have Blacklist, the world champions, and they won MPLPH a lot of the time. So we also have Todak, and they're also really good, they've beat Onik, but I still think that we can compete. Yeah. So he's still yeah. confident, he understands his group is extremely difficult, extremely hard against Blacklist and Onik, but he's still confident that he can compete against these really mega giants, honestly. Yeah. Backless and Todak and uh, Maro. I really like to see that, right? Because I think they've kind of proven that they can, yes, face off against these teams and they won't get stomped uh, like they did at M4. That was a close game. Very sure, close. it was Todak that got the victory. There were a lot of mistakes made by Occupy, but they have really improved. You can see the improvement. And I want to see more of this team. I really hope they, they can actually adjust and give us a show in game number two. I feel like the adjustment that's going to be happening for Occupy for this game is just to make sure whatever draft they're going for, Speedy will have a lot of free space. Because I think that was what really lacking. Because you can engage, but you can't peel. And let's hope that they can give Speedy the space and the best choice of hero as well coming into the drafting phase of game number two between Occupy and Todak. There is a um, not so fun fact if you're an Occupy fan if you, and if you're Occupy, but the carry is no longer at 100% win rate for mm -hmm. Speedy. That's definitely a, a, a hit, like confidence-wise, a big morale hit to Occupy because in MPL Mino, when they get these picks, they can feel comfortable and say, we got it in the bag now. Even their comfort pick, even their strongest pick, isn't enough. I kind of feel like Eve has to be paid attention as well. Because I really do believe that Moon was the bane of the existence of, of Speedy as well. So I feel like the, the, the bands is going to be very, very interesting. And I'm, I'm looking at here, it looks like for Toda, they ban out the Akai, the Kufra. And looking at Occupy, they ban out the one one as well as the Novaria. They don't want this Novaria to be on the hands of Moon. Wait, so sides. this time, exactly. So this time, they've actually opted to swap sides. So now Todak has the first pick instead of Occupy. I want to see how this changes that first pick, right? But Todak here, they still have one more ban to go for. Do you think they're going to com commit onto a Valentina ban once again? I. I just think whatever they can let go, as long as they can get mm -hmm. an Arlit first pick. Because I kind of feel like that's what they, they're really going for, because we saw what happened so in flex. game number one. Yeah, you can flex. Like, usually we don't say that. Usually we don't say that. We, usually we don't say Arlit go lane. But for this one, it could I happen. Kaja gets banned. And right now, Joy is banned as well. The Arlit is open, but as well as the Eve. The Eve could be a good pick, as long as you're careful of a Kadita counter pick. 
Hmm, now, now it's interesting, right? Because uh, for Occupy 2, they can just trade in a few heroes. Their second pick, which Todak was able to do earlier. Yeve or Arlet, which one is more prio for, for a team like Todak? For me, it's Arlet, but I can see a argument Valen? for Yeeve. Uh, no? Valen, Valen is good as well, but I kind of feel like Moon really shines when he has a hero that he can uh, control his own uh, distance. Mm. Because oh. with, with Valentina, sometimes you have to go in, and it really depends on the ult that you have. So I kind of feel like just to be a little bit safe, uh, better for Moon's playstyle, the Valentina is good. Maybe just a little bit risky. All right, so high ground high is ground, the priority yeah. for Moon, right? So we'll see. Oh, God, it's, wow. it's a Lancelot. All right, so I was talking Maybe jungle? to... Exactly. Uh -huh. Maybe no, jungle? Exactly. No way. No way. No oh way God, can no Lancelot way. be flexed. But I was talking to one of the other Indonesian casters, right? Goni, he's also an English caster, and he mentioned that nice he guy. feels that the Lancelot is broken in this meta. But honestly, honestly, Milo from Malaysia is saying the same thing. I think everybody's saying the same thing. Even Anti-Mage has said this many times in his streams that I the Lancelot is so good at doing everything, especially with the gold adjustment. Now exactly. he's even better. Now he can actually go War Axe, Thunderbelt, and even bl <laughs> Despair, Blade of Despair. Yeah. Yesterday we did see that. So Valentina becomes the option right now. The response from Occupy. We want to go for the Arla pick Valley as well. No, nope. the Frederick up against the Lance. So far we've seen this matchup a few times and the Lance has had a better time. Yeah, right now, honestly, because they picked up the Valentina, it is still a good situation for Moon to pick up the uh, the Eve, or if he wants the Farsa, if he really wants to deny any kind of crazy um, uh, crazy steals of the of the ultimate with IMU, maybe even a Lilia, or just like prolong it, because even though people are like, yeah, the the Valentina can <laughs> steal away the real world manipulation, but I'm I'm kind of feeling like it almost doesn't matter. Hmm, we'll the claw has been picked up, so at least yeah. not a gold lean. Uh, Lancelot. God, if it was like a goldly Lancelot, come on, come on, Todak, right? Okay. Uh, the Claude has been picked up, so like you mentioned, it does give Among more room for the Yeet pick, the which is exactly what they go for here. Which Occupy now have a chance to figure out how they're going to deal with this, right? Do they want to go for a gold lane here before it gets banned out and Speedy gets limited? I think now is a good time to go for the carry, right? Earlier, we said not a lot of Or peel. Leslie. Now, Fredrin Leslie Ooh. works, but against the Lance, that's going to be tough, that dive. Chiku Guys, the ultimate flex since joining Todok in 2019. Chiku Guys has played every single role and used a total of 56 unique heroes. <laughs> Even the Layla in MPL. Even I mean, Hanabi. Hanabi in MPL. This guy. I mean, he. I, I think he's really showing to Moonton is like, you can make me a part of your marketing team whenever you're <laughs> highlighting a new <laughs> hero. I can show people how to use this hero. You know, my question is, Chico's not using a Koya today. Oh yeah, no, he's kind of like stayed away from that. So I, he's not stressed. He's chill, right? He's that, getting that healthier. After, oh, he's getting healthier. After getting married. Okay, congratulations, Chico. then. But back here, we see the Brody is going to be the choice here for Occupy. So no carry this time, but Brody. I think the Brody up against the Claude, great matchup. Now I up against the Lancelot, very team. good too. But I think Brody struggles more against Eve than any of the uh, you know yeah. uh, other choices that we mentioned earlier. And that's something that they need to be very, very careful of. I guess what they're trying to say is we have a, an XP laner prepared that can actually disrupt the Eve and can provide some space for the Brody. Because if that happens, then the Brody is going to have a really, really good time in the back, just dealing damage onto the Claude and winning this lane. I think winning the lane is going to be much easier here for Occupy than it was in Game 1. Looking at both teams, they're both, for now, lacking EXP laners. Sure, the Frederick can be flexed around. I'm looking at heroes like the Lapu Lapu, like the Yuzon, because yeah. I kind of feel like for both teams, they can really utilize the hero very well, looking at the draft, having the, the, the Claude and the Eve, the having the, the, the Brody. But for now, thought that they're, they're kind of smelling that this Frederick might not be in the jungle. How, why do I get the feeling that that's the case as well? I'm not really sure, right? I don't think that it could be. I just feel like right now, Occupy with how much dive they have, maybe they need something with Engage as well, right? Something with CC. That's something that they're lacking still for that roaming position, perhaps. But I don't know if that's Maro's style. Does he like those hard engaged Atlas type of heroes? Yeah, he does. He, he, I mean, not, not fully. I think he still prefers just the pick style heroes like the Franco, but I think that's the second most comfortable role, right? He doesn't like the mages like the Kadita and just the supportive ones. He likes the Kufra, Akai, Kaja, and 
those are actually all the three Bands. heroes that was banned yeah. out. So you can see the proper respect already given over from Todak to Occupy. Franco the is still up for grabs, and just Bang. as I say it, they... Caster Curse. See, it's it's this. They understand. Toda understand as well. M4, Mara was the guy who shined, and these are his four picks that he usually is able to utilize. Right now, the glue is open still, and Alva did well. It's just that it wasn't enough. But this time, there's... I don't know. Is the glue still a pretty safe pick here, or they just want to pivot off something else, not showing their hand where this Frederick is going, EXP or jungle? But at this point, Roamers, does he... I don't know. Lolita? Uh, Lolita would be good. The, the Claude, uh, sorry, sorry, the Cho would be pretty good as well. They picked up the Brody. They banned out the Franco and Kaja. Cho, I'm, I'm thinking Cho, but who knows? I'm thinking Fanny. We saw Leo on the oh, Fanny right. a few times. There's a lot of lockdown heroes already out of the game, and Todak, the front to back composition, is certainly going to struggle here up against a dive, and never mind, Fredjin's going jungle. Is the Dyrof yeah. going to come up here? The Dyrof is going to be pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be pretty good going up against the Uranus as well as the Fredrin. For sure. Is, is a Formies kind of hero? I kind of feel like Momo could use it as well, but I'm not so sure how comfortable he is on, on that hero, but I kind of feel like it's pretty good going up against the, the Uranus as well as the Fredrin. You can increase the tempo very, very fast. What about just glue? Yeah, I think the glue is fine as well, but, you know, I want something explosive. <laughs> if you expect something from Todak, <laughs> you will not get it. All right, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Expect the unexpected. So Dyroth or glue? Glue and Dyroth, it's probably going to be Esmeralda or something. Lapu? <laughs> yeah, Lapu is probably the safest one. Probably Charizla. the safest one. I'm just naming all the EXP layers, but there see? you go, you Cho. Cho. No. Oh, you, you see? I saw, see? <laughs> we said everything and they said, they said this no. Is, this is one of the more normal drafts for them. Yeah, we're trying to expect like, oh, it's going to be crazy. Oh, Mincid. Oh, that's a good pick. Cho Mincid got lost Lance. yesterday, right? It did, but that's Cho, Lance, Yu, Zong, Claude? Wait, everybody, what? everybody is gonna get canceled under this dash if they're able to find a good king's calling. I mean, that's what we thought yesterday. Was it the Evos match? It was Evos Phoenix. Evos Phoenix, but the Mincitar didn't really do well. Nope, because it was in a losing matchup against Yu Zong. And uh -oh. Right now, and now it's Yu Zong and Mincitar again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And right now we're going into the game because what we saw just now. Wait, no, it's. Minsita Rome. Yeah, it's Minsita Rome. So I'm, no, yeah. yeah I, 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 I wasn't gonna, gonna interrupt you guys because yeah, the Uranus is get, is there. But either way, going into this game, what I learned looking at the draft, mm -hmm. sometimes you can't call it. Nothing is absolute. A lot of things can happen because even if you have a great draft, if you keep on making mistakes, then you're just gonna give the game over to your opponent. Well, here we go. We expected Todak to go for the crazy, and they showed us the most normal draft that we've ever seen from Todak. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number two, where Todak has the chance to take it 2-0, and Occupy will have to force this one out to force a third game in the series. Yeah, one more life that they have to be able to win out the series. So a lot of pressure on Occupy in a particular, and these are the lanes that they have actually oh. opted for, and Smile already there in the top side. For now, it looks like so that they're not using the uh, the mid going to EXP rotation. Looks like in this kind of game, they just want to make sure that everything is going well. And you guys had to use the purify level one. Mm -hmm. So level one purify. That's a kick though. Jikundo, Maro. Not gonna use the flicker. Actually going to try to turn it around and actually wins out of the trade right now. Speedy is taking Yums very low. A few more shots should do it, but Yums just backs off. Chico with the battle mirror image is trying to go for the cannon mini right now, but he has to be very careful not to get chunked down too low. Meanwhile, up top, Alpha is winning this. It's like M2 or Uranus use out. Yeah. It's been such a long time, but you know, nostalgia, man. <laughs> uh, we're gonna take a look at the in-game equipment real soon, but before that, I just wanted to explain that Maro now is on a pick-off hero, so yeah, maybe yeah. this suits him better, maybe this is exactly what it takes for him to, you know, pop off here in this game, and we'll see if Mincitar is a Maro style or not. Right now, you guys, Wait. again, he's just getting pressured quite a lot here in the gold lane, and Speedy goes in for Chico, guys. Oh, well played, stun though, gonna come in very, very soon, he gets stunned, and Speedy finds first blood! Chiku too greedy to go for some minions there and ends up getting punished heavily. He's going to lose a whole cannon in Morrow. Finds another hook. Okay, I want to ask another question. I know I'm asking a lot of questions, but it's because you're LaFell. We love questions. And you love Todak, right? Okay, but I think sure. I can't. I can't right now because Momo here. 
Getting good, caught. Good dodge on the Phaser's Wrath. For the Petrify as well. Leo just zoned away instantly. Rival. Oh, still going for the turtle right now. Alpha, if he steals this, he is a god, but he doesn't get it right there. Speedy, good rotation in the mid lane. That's a King's Calling as well. And the turtle part memory. Alpha, that was cheeky, man. He tried to steal it away from his gold lane. That's another kill here for the side of Occupy 2 0 here in the first two minutes. But back to my point there. Chiku, that's how he plays though, right? There's yeah. a lot of ways, yeah. there's a lot of times where Todak just completely ignores Chiku, and this is Todak playstyle, right? Here's the thing, when he sees a minion, he forgot he has a HP bar. <laughs> that's, that's kind of the way that he plays. He, he really prioritizes the farm over his own health. Sounds like me. Yeah, Aww. yeah, he does. Yeah, that's why before this he had to use the the white oh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. He prides everything else, but right now, look at this. Maru gets caught. Yep, picked off by the way of the dragon, and Moon is gonna be the one who Tonak give the kill onto, giving him a bit more resources to play with. But isn't the saying like Chiku's not afraid of death? Death is afraid of Chiku. Yep, that is the case, and that's why he doesn't look at his HP bar that much. Speedy is <laughs> down here. Yums, looking at this, he does not have. Uh, he's all just yet. Momo up top alone. Is this a good die? Four, three man Petrify able to lock him down. Okay, but Momo's still alive right now, and it's actually a no play. Momo's still just waiting there. He finally falls, but I think it's worth it. No, no he loses a whole wave, but and some gold. Moon is here and Yums as well, though. I don't know about this. They stayed a bit too long. Oh, that's a flicker. Good black dragon wow. form from Smile Clutch there. But yeah, it wasn't worth it. Yeah, but, but that's why I asked the question, was that a good die? Because the minions weren't there. They're going to take the, the full shot of the turret. So I was like, okay, I mean, like, I see what you're trying to do. But even if Momo misses the wave, it also kind of doesn't matter. Yeah, they're putting a lot of emphasis there in that top lane. Very interesting here from Occupy, but look at this. Rival already going to steal that out. Does he get it? Wait, he retreated that. Both of them retreated that. Wait, 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 what? Now King's Calling, locking Yums down. And that's a turn of our memory to pick up the kill. It's a killing spree for Speedy. And Alpha in the top lane is doing pretty well on this Uranus. A good pickup against the Yud Song. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised that both of these junglers actually used their retribution no, I, there. I think, I think Rival got it. I think Rival got it, yeah. Yeah, they both used retribution though. So they, they really didn't prior the turtle. At all. At all, no. but Occupy still were able to get it because of the pick. Okay, 1,000 gold lead now for Occupy. They are leading quite a bit, but I gotta say, I mean, that's the beauty of having a Brody on your team, right? Earlier on, you already have that much base of damage. A little bit way more than Chiku does in that early game, but look at that hook. Oh, this lockdown is disgusting. Torn apart memory to the back. Oh, you just still able to survive. Smile's actually gonna be picked off. Torn up play with their limits, literally. Here's, here's the thing, man, because Yums, I know he's trying to bait it out, and he really believes in Moon being able to deal that damage, and now Momo gets caught as well. I'm gonna have to say, Maro is is on point right now. Momo jumping back in, turn apart memory, should be able to lock him down, but it does not lock him down oh. fast enough. They get chunked so low, the shutdown comes through. Now it's for Rival, with the dragon, bring Maro back. The taunt doesn't save him. Leo needs to get out, and Toda are punishing Occupy for going for these picks. I got it stopping. Wait, they're not stopping. They want to go for more. That's the Thorn Rose. Leo's one. Smile's coming back in. Has away the dragon. That's the Jiku. No, and it's the Phantom execution to the back. Smile has nothing to say. Oh, he's going in? No way. No way. All right. That's where no, he's. No, no, no. Look at this. This is Longar style. Ooh. Away the dragon. Rival still wants it. Thorn Rose. Oh, he's oh, oh, with the flicker, but you can't flicker two times. Moon shuts him down. All for Momo. All for Momo. This is why Momo is like, I can sacrifice myself. You guys got this, right? I mean, my HP is not that important. So this is the way of, of, of Toda as well. They're, they're willing to sacrifice a lot just to get something a little bit more. Yeah, that was so flex though by Todak, right? Now they're going to pick up another objective. That top side is going to fall. And this is a little bit different to what we saw in game number one, right? It was Occupy who was leading in terms of those objectives, those side lane turrets that were already taken down. But now Todak, even though they're going very aggressively in that type, kind of style, they are still keeping their eyes on the objective. That was really cool, by the way. Yeah. The turtles what happened that? But the stage was like rumbling and stuff. But anyways, Leo is already ready for that. No, he's not ready for the turtle. They're ready for a trade, but Speedy again gets knocked back into the team. Leo here just taking everything. Maro's next on the chopping block. Has to use the KCD. King's calling defensively. Great, but... <laughs> In that fight, 
honestly, Momo did great. He went straight on to Speedy, making sure that no damage can be dealt to the team. And they're like, yeah, we can we can 1v4 Leo, but Leo's the one and they're the four. Making sure that they win all of the trades. Right now, Toda, they have a gold advantage. For now, look like Alpha getting caught, but does it really matter? This is a Uranus. Uranus can take a lot of beating. Yeah, now Chiku as well can finally start to go online, right? He already has that item, the Golden Staff. Should it be able to have more impact in those team fights? And this is when things go a little bit differently. Occupy oh. now, I think they're starting to reach that point where... Oh, wait a minute. Is Rival going to go for it again? Yeah, I mean, he's already three levels ahead. Why not? Oh, Leo! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Leo won Leo, that? Leo gets it. Leo won the retreat battle. Three levels up. All right, Maro's forced to flicker out. I guess they get what they wanted here. Uh, a battle spell? But they didn't, they didn't get the purple buff. I kind of feel like there's one of those situations where you try your luck. If it doesn't work out, it's okay because they got a lot still from there. Rival trying to get the orange buff as well, unsuccessful. But so far, I kind of feel like this is just one of those mental things where they're just like, we're going to make sure you're always careful. You're always pressured. I kind of feel like that's what they're going for. This is the problem with Brody as well. In my opinion, I um, mean, looking at this matchup, you're up against a Claude, sure, bullying him is great, but you need to get these objectives down fast. And the fact that in eight minutes, that's the time where they got the bottom side turret, it's way too long. They need to start to transition and use that Brody snowball. And they are, oh, wow, good hold on to Moon. Out of everyone, it's one of our memory, we'll be able to find him. And just like that, the shutdown. And another goes down a smile. Occupy, two kills right as the Lord spawns. This might be enough to get them back on track. That's what happens when Maro gets a pick off hero. Dude, like that hook, that was mystical. That how was. did the heck, how, how did it hit onto Moon? And right now, Momo is trying to zone everyone away. Okay, Speedy able to escape, and this is it. Torn apart memory, all the way to the back. Momo gets sniped down from downtown. Chiku's next, Alpha is just running wild on him, spinning around. And now, even rivals zoned away. Uh -oh. Yomes has spawned back in with Moon. Maro's trying to zone them away with this Minsatar. He's gonna be kicked back to the team with the way of the Dragon. And the real world of Blade is gonna be baited out right now. Only one kill. If it's just the Roamer, it's still gonna be worth it. A smile walks back in. I'm not too sure about this play right now. They should just back away as they got the Lord with the way of the Dragon. Flicker is on to Moon to get him back to the turret here as Occupy just want to disengage. That was very bad for Tora, but it is still the first Lord of the game, so it's still okay. But now. What Occupy is saying to them, Speedy is saying to Momo, is like, you can try, man, you can try, but if you let me live, if I just have one HP, I'll make you regret it. Yeah. And Momo, I think he did regret it. He did, he did. Like, before everything even begun, he was already gone out of the Land of Dawn, and that, that's, the pro that's the problem, right, with Occupy right now. I don't know how long they can do this, though, right? Speedy, Brody against Chiku, guys, in the long run. Oh, wait a minute. Going for Flash. A fight. Oh, Maro actually hooked over to Speedy there. I think it might have been a little bit of a miss mechanic, but Occupy are not really using the Lord at all. They actually got it cleared out. Todok doing it super well. I guess they equalized the gold lead, so the playing field is a bit more even now. I kind of feel like what Maro was doing, he thinks that Rival oh. will be dashing there. Rival finds Smile. Smile has the Phantom Execution being able to run away. And Tora, they're just trying to clear all, all of the outer turrets. Rival's just so scary. Wait, Alpha. You can never say it here. But Alpha on the this. top side. Wait, I don't know about this, man. I don't think you do that much damage to the turret right now. Alpha, able to escape, though. This is... Oh, 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 look at him. He's waiting there. I don't know if that was a mistake by him, though, because... Bottom side? He's got locked down. Bottom lane. They're doing the same thing onto Rival, who's still going to be able to dash Phantom Execution. Turn up our memory. Oh, it's not <laughs> reach! It's it's hit. Rival got out. Oh, it's no. a bait. Yums is here. The cavalry's here. Oh, the Black miss. Dragon forms to the back. Is that the flicker? Good King's Calling. Lock him oh, down. Beautiful. But look at that beautiful real-world inflation. Maru's able to save his gold laner, but Occupy. Smile's going to fall. Not just yet, but in the end, it is inevitable. Speedy is able to recall. That's a flicker by Maro. And it's a 3 for 1. Three, wait, 4 for 0, actually. Might have. Yeah, Maro's dead here. There's no way he can go, even with the flicker burnt. Massive value for Todok. A disaster for Occupy. Dude, like, thought I just turned it around, but I gotta say, don't know what happened there. Like, a lot of, I would say, mechanical mistakes coming in from Occupy. And now, Alpha, he has to run away. He has to give. The, the purple buff over to Rival because it's not just that Speedy. Everyone was out of range of his of his ult, but the same Leo tried to dash away from the from the buff pit. 
and and he just couldn't get out. Yeah, he couldn't, and that gives Todak just that much more of an edge here in the 12th minute of the game. 3,000 gold lead as we take a look at the in-game equipment for both of these teams. And I gotta say, right, Chico guys looking scary with all three items up already. Yeah, and Rival looks like he is valuing a little bit in terms of damage. I think he feels like in this game, he's not really that threatened. And now, you guys want to deal a bit of damage to Alpha, but you got to be careful, man. Everyone for Occupy is here. Uh-oh, now is the bait back from Occupy. Torn apart memory, takes him down. Yub is going to fall as well. The Lord hasn't even been started by right. Todop. It's back and forth, bro. It's back and forth. I'm sorry, Lapel. Yeah. No, I'm no, sorry. it's, it's sorry. okay. It's okay. This I'm sorry, I did it again. Yeah, you know what? It's you know CC, what? Caster Curse. Yeah. That's the kind of CC that you can't purify out of. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Could you stop? But with two members down now, they have definitely the man advantage to go for this with Rival and Leo's track record. Leo's been really doing really good with the retributions. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to go for the retribution. They want to go for a fight, and Rival's still able to survive with the Torn Rose. Alpha is trying to zone them away, and it is going to be a free Lord over to Occupy with the Wind of Nature built as well from Speedy. It's going to give him so much more survivability, and this time, I don't think Occupy are going to let Todok just clear out their Lord. I'm just giving Eterna the side eye, <laughs> but now they want to clear the minions. Is it safe for them to do so? Let's see. Maro is going for the stun. Yum's not able to pop him in that way. The dragon, the taunt actually stops him from doing so. But it's still going to be Maro who gets taken off. Chiku is doing so much damage. Oh. Speedy's going to be targeted in the back. He has the flicker to get out. Leo now with the Apprentice's Grasp, unable to find it to sustain back up and occupy. They have lost two right as they got the Enhanced Lord. Yeah. I think they overcommitted onto that decision, right? They should have just waited. They should have just been disciplined with this. But instead, now they have to lose two members and cannot fully get the benefit of having that Lord with them. Right now, looking at the situation, Occupy, we can definitely see that they are starting to know the movements of Toda because they're starting to catch all of these cheeky movements coming in, trying to trying to go for the side limb pushes and such. So Chiku guys, as well as you, they got to be a little bit more careful because now it looks like Occupy, they're, they're starting to know what they're going to do before they even do it. But the same thing can be said about Toda. Once Occupy gets some kind of victory, gets some kind of advantage, they seem to know, it's like, okay, they're going to push their luck and then we're just going to bite them back. Hmm, we'll see what they do here, right? Occupy now back on the defense once again. Rival here trying to look for a steal. I like how Leo puts it. Grand Theft buff. Grand Theft Orange Grand Theft or Grand Theft Orange. Purple. Yeah. I love it. But that's what they're trying to do so Oh, the far. caster Leo. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. You confused Leo me. Leo cast Do I have to say Leo? Leo? Looking at the items now, <laughs> I'm just going to move on. Where now that Chiku guys has the Malefic Roar, I would say everyone here is more or less fully built. Everyone has the damage. Everyone has a way to save themselves from trouble. The Lord is gonna gonna spawn in over a minute. I kind of feel like this is the moment where both teams trying to establish some kind of map control because since both Maro as well as Yumes, they can catch someone off. Moon has to be careful. Uh -oh. Maro is there. Oh. Moon learns his lesson. He does. He really does. Oh, Rival. Oh, oh, that's a very aggressive pass. Oh, look at this. It's almost just a distract, though. Look at Yums in the back. Jeet Kune Do. And as the King's calling a bit late to the party. And that's Speedy. Caught all the way in the middle. He's still able to survive there. But he will fall to Rival right now. And Occupy have lost two of their best. Oh, Rhino! Fight the three man hook under the turret to bring it back again. It's giving another trade here. Only immortalities down for the side of Todok. Rival and Yum super low. Alpha trying to run him down right now as he keeps on going at it. Smiles doing some damage as well. Oh, that's another kill. But Tiku comes back at it, finds a shutdown, and goes straight for the base. Alpha, I don't think he's going to be Can able to survive. End? I don't think I he's going to be able to defend this one. The minions are going to be able to Chiku? crash down. Tiku is right there, and it is going to be GG as the way the dragon locks him down. Todok to the zero. Starting off well here, Toda in the group stages gets a 2-0. Even though for both games, Occupy really made them sweat. Making sure that if you make a mistake, we're going to capitalize on it. But still, Toda comes up on top. Yeah, Toda just lungers through the group stage as they usually do. 2-0 clean against the representatives from MENA. Now, with this result, 2-0. Occupy next against Blacklist. Oof. It's not looking too good for them here challenging. in it's MSC 2023. It's definitely going to be challenging here, right? I mean, especially after looking at the way they play. They're a very systematic team. They usually want to go for a clean front to back. Against Blacklist, you really want to wow. front to back, front to back. 
Dota got fans. Dota does have fans. They have a lot of fans in the building right now. Yeah. Everybody just cheering for Toda. And so far, the headline's still going to be Supremacy. The C teams have yet to fall to a region outside of C. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. We haven't seen we any play. OP, OP, bra. TK. <laughs> Turkey. Oh, TK. What's, why do you have to show yeah. for everything? Because Come he on. did it in game. No, no, no. What did you say? CCD? Uh, no, what did you say? King KCD. KCD. King's calling the Yeah, so yeah. we're abbreviating things now. That's why the is everyone meta, being guys. creative? Everyone's being so creative. Because of Todak. They, because they of forced Todak. us. Yeah. They're like, Arlet Gold? All right, we got to top that somehow. <laughs> and then second game, fully normal. Yeah. Completely normal, and yet they were still able to win. Oh, same wow. outcome, same outcome, and the same way they took fight, still chaotic. Even with a standard, proper composition, they still took that way, that route of being just chaotic in these team fights, and sometimes it didn't really work too well for them. Here's the thing, right? It's why it's entertaining to watch Malaysia play, uh -huh. because even when we're winning, we have to have at least one moment where we kind of got a throw. Just to make it more interesting, you know, a little, a little bit more dramatic, because if it's so one-sided, man, it's kind of like, why, why are even people watching? So they're like, okay, guys, we're winning a little bit too much. Chiku, could you like, uh, you know, you know, try to get a 1v1, and then it turns out to be a 1v4 and a 2v4, so... So what happens when they lose? The opposing side has to throw one time. Oh, okay. <laughs> the opposing side, say, say going up against, against Echo or Blacklist or, or anyone, right. if they're winning hard, let Toda win one team fight and then just just <laughs> just move like normal. Okay. At okay. Least one, Thank at you least for one that. Throw. Thank you for that. But I really want to know what happened in that particular game, right? How is it that they, you know, like, because I would say draft wise, Occupy didn't really have a bad draft. I would say neither had a had a bad draft. I would say in this game, it's just that. The thing about the the good thing having Chiku in your team is he gives you that confidence to move forward because he always reminds the team whether they have enough damage or not. So whenever they go for those skirmishes, it's most probably that Chiku gave the green light. It's like, guys, why do you, why are you guys acting scared? Right. Scared. Scared. All right, all right. Why are you acting scared? Scared. You know, scared. Just, just go for it, man. This, this is why. This Chiku again This or is why they are acting scared. There you go. Rival. Man, I wanted to highlight this player like ever since game one, right? He has been such an amazing jungler. MVP, definitely well-deserved. If he's on the Ling, he's on the land, so I'm excited to see what else he has in his Look arsenal. His because he's so humble, he's so cute, he's so down-to-earth. He gives that vibe. You want to know why? Uh-huh. Now, he's getting back to his roots. Because Rival is an assassin player. Ah. But because of the meta, Everyone keeps forcing him to use the tank junglers, the Minotaur, the Kaja, the Akais, the Fredrin. And he's like, it's a good hero. We want to win. But even look at his itemization. If he has an opportunity, if he has the green light from his team, guys, can I go damage? Please, just let me go damage. Half. Half. You know, it's enough. This is like a 50-50 kind of thing. Compromise. And here we're going to also take a look at the heat map, right? The way he was able to just rotate across the map. It does seem like, you know, again, he's just pretty standard, but there's a lot of invades going yeah. on here. With zero deaths. With zero deaths. He kept on invading with the Lancelot, and that's why I think, you know, Ghani and Shamilo Milo said oh, it's you. broken. Thank you for saying his name correctly. Yes. I appreciate that. That's how you say his name? Shamilo, Shamilo Milo. Milo. It's not M Milo? I mean, yeah, it's just that, but meaning like, uh, you know, like like the full full name. Oh, the full full name. Like like Shamilo is the professional name. If you want to okay. be cute, Shamilo Milo. For me, if you want to be cute, it's not Lafel, it's Pel Pel. I think highlights are cuter, Lafel. All right, so let's look at the highlights. Where in this game, again, we gotta highlight both Rival as well as Moon because they've been doing a lot for the team. Because the moment where Moon got hooked, the moment that Moon was not in play, we can definitely see Occupy really heavily punishing uh, Toda because there's not much that they can do. But again, Rival, the way that he's been playing, he's not only getting those kills, he's not only getting those farms, but the thing is, he's applying pressure non-stop. And being, like playing in tournaments, right, you have a lot to think about. And when you have someone in your face all the time with a sword, and you have a cape, and you're, you're sometimes yellow, sometimes white, it gets to your head. Wait, we're talking about Mobile Legends, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I lost, I lost. I'm, I'm talking about Rival, yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, I wanted to give an honorable mention to Yums, right? I think there are a lot of moments where he created it. Uh, Moon was really good at the follow-up afterwards, but that first initiation, that pick-off, 
it was created by Yums. I don't think we've mentioned his name enough. And there you go. That was one of the moments that really changed the game. He was able to get to the back line. And this is the, the, the crazy amount of communication coming in from Dota. The moment someone says goes in, they don't say no. They don't say why. They just say, how fast you want me to get there? They don't even say then. anything. They just go in, right? <laughs> Whenever someone makes a call, especially Chiku. Talking is overrated. Talking is overrated. And Toda, they have that telepathy. Yeah, telepathy. Yes. We will with Malaysian slang. But either way, looking at the itemization over here. Really, the one to highlight is both Chiku guys as well as Rival. Chiku guys actually farmed out very, very fast, but still, Rival, because of his constant pressure in the jungle, and this does show the changes in the jungle. Mm -hmm. Because looking at the goal here, 14,000 over to 13,000, because usually Chiku guys will always have the gold advantage throughout the game, but here, Rival is making a case for himself. Hmm. I found that interesting. Sorry, because I, I I I like I was thinking about it, and then I was like, oh wait, that makes sense. There was only one dominance for Uranus, and then Moon had to build Nod for the Uranus. And I really want to talk about just Speedy here. His build in this game, he actually usually for a lot of Brodies, they want to go for the Blade of Hepatitis. Sometimes you go for Fury Hammer Bod. Yeah. Uh, I think he was in a position where he was super ahead that he could have gone for the Fury Hammer into the Bod to get that snowball going a bit faster. Uh, because the Claude is just really hard to go for, uh, for a catch, I think the BOD would have served him better to take turrets down in the early game. He instead went for the uh, Blade of the, uh, sorry, Hepatitis first into a Melfic Roar. So he was really just banking on fights. I feel like maybe that's Occupy style, but Brody again, in the early game, how you snowball isn't really just through team fights. Team fights help, but the turrets, that map pressure. Yeah, getting that very early lead for your team, making sure that they have enough defensive items to, to deal any kind of uh, damage coming in from Tora and have enough damage to actually take down Yumes before he can actually kick you away. Looking at looking at the ace, it's Jiku looking at the the one that has the most gold. It is rival. The rich guy. The rich guy. Looking You're at this game, guy. I kind of feel like Toda is looking very good, but we can't just sh put Occupy to the side. Because after looking at that game, I kind of feel like Blacklist, looking at both teams, they're like, okay, this might be a pretty tough group from us. Unless if they if they just 2-0 both of them, then ugh. Not even, know. not even sweating. I don't know. Honestly, for Occupy, I just don't see the edge that they have, right? Because when I saw game number one, it didn't feel like they had, they they actually like knew what they wanted yeah, to do, what yeah. they wanted to go for. They didn't know their strengths in particular. And so in coming to game two, it was great. I loved that Mara was finally on a hero that is more towards his playstyle, mm -hmm. having mm -hmm. that Minsetar, that pickoff. But afterwards, if Maru gets shut down, if he doesn't get the pick, if there's no follow-up afterwards, it didn't seem like they had much to do around it as well. So I want to see this team. I already think that this team has the potential. I want to see them grow a little bit more, right? So, ladies and gentlemen, we do still have another, no, not one two more. more. We have two, two more. more matches ahead of us. We are going to go for a short break before we go for that, though. So we'll see you in five.
boundary and chain Ain't nothing can stop or restrain We are a force to be reckoned with Destiny, kingdom, and match Sounding like Atlas, winning with madness Count us the practice, that is his match Just we are the heroes here to slay Never back down, under a strength Six years, Southeast Asia have been the conquerors of the land of dawn. But now, new competitors have arisen, hungry to vanquish C's dominance. Twelve teams will come to battle. Only one can be champion. In this MSC, the 12 qualified teams compete in two stages. First, the group stage, and then the knockout stage. The group stage starts with a draw. The champions of MPL Indonesia, MPL Philippines, MPL Malaysia, and MSC 2023 Myanmar Qualifier are placed in Pool 1. All other competing teams are placed in Pool 2. Pool 1 teams will be distributed across four groups. A, B, C, and D. The other eight teams will be drawn randomly into the other groups. Teams from MPL Indonesia and MPL Philippines will not be drawn into the same group making sure things stay challenging. Each team will fight each other once, with the winner of each match decided in a best of three. Only the top two teams of each group will advance to the knockout stages. As for the knockout stage format, it will be a single elimination bracket, with each team fighting in a best of five series. Teams from the same group won't be drawn into the same knockout matchup. There is no second chance. Losing teams are eliminated from the tournament until it comes to the semifinals, where losing teams fight for a chance at third place. But after the semifinals, we come to the grand final in a best of seven matchup. The knockout stages will take place over four days, from June 15th to 18th. No matter which side you stand for, let your voices roar and carry your team as they fight for honor, glory, and victory. Witness history in the making as we see the world this MSC in Cambodia. They flew out hot after their grand finals performance in MPL Philippine Season 10. And here we're seeing the rivalry of a century. The age of the Orcas is now. Echo are your ever four world champions. Echo books their ticket to MST. And the grand finals, a rematch against Blacklist International. A rematch. Blacklist International and Echo taking the rivalry form from Season 10. Taking the rivalry continued in M4. Now here we are in the Grand Finals of Season 11. This is destiny moving in a way na parang kailangan pa nila mag-meet. Yung M4 World Championship, nakita natin kung ano yung naging resulta doon, nanalo yung Echo. And parang binigyan ng tadhana ng panahon na makabawi yung blacklist or yung echo para ma-insure na sila talaga ang pinakamalakas na Filipino team. Stay now. 
Masasabi natin medyo yung display cam para sa Valentina. Hindi sila kumuha ng rules ah. na ganun kaganda yung ultimate. Yep. And at the same time, parang ma-force yung Valentina na real-world manipulation lagi yung opponent ko. Can Blacklist International do the reverse? Pero ngayon, siya atay na pasobra na ito. Ngayon siya, ni Edward Tito, a beautiful switch onto the mid lane. Pero si Cortez, hindi ata papayag na walang kabalit. Pero napihitin ng bahagya, lumaari ng tawiran doon sa mga minions mula sa mid lane. Nakuntod ba siya? Makikita ba siya ni Carl? Nakuntod ba? King Wise? Walang retry. Nakawan sila dito ng orange buff. Kaso nga lang siya ay may hitin sa tatlo. Wise dito, may pagsalba nga ba si Omoy Pino sa Pacers Wrath? Sakto yung pitaw! Kaso nga lang hindi umabot yung altar! Oh my Venus trying to zone everyone. Pero look at Sanji! No maram! Ito na nga pasok! King Wise ulit si Yawi! O si Yawi nga talaga maging target nila. Hindi na nga ito makaatakas pa. Tungkol sa real world manipulation. Kaso nga lang natuhog sila dito. Napan execution! Owl and Oh my Venus will go down! Pero si Edward naman nagalap na pwedeng ulihin. Nagalap siya na pwedeng sa punutan. Pero pwede naman silang umuli pa ng isa. At baka maukuha nga talaga. Kaso nga lang si Carl. Sobrang kunat. Sobrang sakit, sobrang dulas, lahat na ibigay mo sa kanya! And sasabayan pa! Saban force na force, Uy, pero ang dunding na kanya. Yung pagtulang ni Yawi, upang mapigilan niya yung pagtakas ni The Queen. Sinabi na ni Wool, every time na may dragon, may follow up na dalawa na hindi mo alam on skill. Ganon din naman yung Eve Ultimate! Diyan na naman yung dragon ni Sanford. Talagang magpupush away dito sa members sa Blackest International. Edward. Pero si Edward na nakapwesto, so meron silang info. Maari silang umabol, kaso nga lang sobrang top ni Carl. Aray, alam niya wala talaga magpa-burst down sa kanya, kaya sobrang top ang nila kung pumasok. Wise goes down. Nagkaroon na magandang pwesto si Sanji, pati na rin yung si Yawi. Subok na mama ng Blackest International, pero ito yung dragon ni Sanford. Mahabulit talaga yung mga backlight, pero masyado at maagot na pop yung altar. Kaya naman sila ay magpapanish bigla. Wise is down. Wala na yung red ni Holder, pero ma-release na naman yung Lord. International Day 1. Day 1, the retaliation play. Dito na nagalit ang mga agents ni Glam. May mission accomplished. Pasok si Carl this time. Nais nila dumipensa dito mula sa push na nais gawin ng Blackness International. May ipin nga lang dito si Uwe, pero ako yung tara naman talaga nila. Pagkis na nga lang ang dun, yung altar. Pero hindi nagiginang para i-save si Uwe. Mahihin na nga ang members ng Blackness International. Hindi nga 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 wala yung mga spells, wala yung mga skills, maaari tayo umarangkada. Oh, man, it's just a snap. What's it play, though? Wala ka lang ito dito. Si Aul! Si, si Aul nga talaga ang bibigyan nila, at dito na rin naman yung dragon. Wala na si Aul. Wala na yung damage na asahan ng Blackness International. Yung Echo, sila na ngayon na mag-de-decide. Correcta tayo sa Lord. Na sila sa Medellin. Sakto lang din yung pagbitaw noong dragon. Tapos yung altar, binitawan na rin. At si Carl Tizi, tatahi pa. May pirma pa sa base ng Blackness International. Sakto yung mga tusok. Kaso nga lang, low na rin sila. Pero nakuha nila si Wise. Pero mga pag-regent din naman agad yung members ng Blackness International. Madedepensahan nila yung Lord. Kaso nga lang, may parating pang minions. Medyo makamal mula doon sa bottom lane. At meron pang kasabay sa mid lane. Will this be it? Will Blackness International manage to defend this? Dahil yung Echo, ayaw na naman papigil. Okay, tingnan natin. Then, pasok ngayon. Oh, my Venus. Sabay sa akin po sa mga Nibere Cute. Hahabol na naman sila sa kita. Ito ang maulit na decent queen. Pero mabilis pa naman yung death timer. Seymour Tani pa nga lang para kay Edward. Nakamang nila. Tapos may inward manipulation pa. And yung minions na sa atin. Sapat ata. Hahabolin na sila ng mga Olga. Pero ngayon, tuloy pa rin ang Tripesa. Pero ang coach ng Echo ay yung face. Ay ang Sion ng LPLPA. I came this far, nothing can stop me now. They knock me down, but they can't count me out. I can't. 
si Tristan Cabrera ang role ko ay tank from Echo Philippines ang favorite MLB hero ay si Chu ginagamit ko siya kasi sobrang ligalig niya sa mapa tapos ang dami niyang skill tapos nakamicro siya tapos ang dami niyang pwedeng gawin sa mga bow siya mga hero tapos yun uh, magagamit ko siya sa MSC basta hindi siya maban yes may possible na gamitin ko siya lalo na favorite hero ko siya so wait nyo na lang favorite hero ko si Chu kasi ang dami niyang nagagawa lalo na yung first skill niya nakaka-micro tapos yung madali siya maka-pick up yung sipa niya lalo na pag hindi naka-purify so pag na sipa auto huli tapos pag may backup pa ng kakambe yun sure patay yung real life hero ko siguro yung mother ko si mama kasi simula pa lang dati sobrang supportive niya na simula pa nung nag-basketball pa lang ako lagi siyang nanonood ng mga games ko ganun tapos nung nag-ML ako nung una syempre again sila tapos nung naging supportive na siya Pupunta rin siya doon kahit di niya naiintindihan yung game. Tapos nanonood lang siya. Tapos ayun, ang dami niya rin. Dahil kayo pag-interact din siya sa mga fans namin yun. Hello. <laughs> uh, mensahe ko kay mama. Thank you so much sa pagiging supportive simula sa pag-basketball ko pa sa ML. Love you. Walang anong anak. Uh, I am Marily Cabrera. I'm Yawi's mom. And uh, what you don't know about Yawi is that 
He is a very generous person, uh, loyal sa friend, at mapagmahal siyempre na anak at kapatid. Pinaka-proud ako sa kanya, sa mga nangyari sa kanya, yung recently na naabot nila. M4 and itong MPL PH Championship na nakuha nila this season 11. This is one of his dreams talaga and I am so proud of him kasi pinanindigan niya yung, yung dream niya na yun at pinaglaban niya sa amin actually. Yung hindi ko makalimutan na saya na naramdaman was when nung nanado sila versus RSG na secured na sila for M4. So, I'm not sure kung na ano nyo pa yun. Bumaba pa siya sa, sa, sa stage. Niyakap niya talaga ako. That's when I was so proud of him. Kasi, ayun na, isa sa mga dreams niya yun eh, yung maka, makatungtong sa world stage. Hmm. Basta, lak, lagi ko lang, lagi naman namin sinasabi sa'yo na proud kami sa'yo sa mga na nangyayari sa'yo sa buhay. Sa success na nakukuha mo. Basta lang, anak, just be humble. Diba? Lagi mong uh, isipin yung mga taong nakatulong sa'yo and always pray na lahat ng, lahat ng gusto mo, daan mo lang sa lasa. Lahat ng challenges mo sa buhay, may it be personal or sa profession mo ngayon sa pagiging pro, pro player mo, lahat ibigay mo lang sa taas. And always believe in yourself, sa teammates mo, and for sure marami pa kayong championship na makukuha, makakamtan. And good luck sa MSC anak. Kaya nyo yan. Yan. Uh, support, salamat sa pag-supporta kahit simula nung unang talo, natatalo ko talo kami. Tapos, yun, supporta ko lang ako hanggang sa makakuha pa ng maraming championships and more tournaments pa na mapanood mo. Yes, anak. Siyempre. And manalo matalo, nandito kami sa likod mo. Mahal ka namin. <laughs> It's Mirko from Indonesia. Good morning, I'm Nikki. Mabi Pudeh Kampuchi. Here from California. It's North America's favorite caster here. It's Allah Ta'ala. Wa Barakatuh. Ma'akum Mulaad Minal Maghrib. Bahadhanu Shahadin Ma'akum Yaktaf Minal Araq. San Diablo from IGSG. Ikhoi Siu Echi. Ma'chak Patiet Lao. Sikal TV from Echo Philippines. I'm Yawi from Echo Philippines. I am Raime from Pinay Expo. I am from Myanmar. I'm Chma. One of the junglers in Cambodia. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جمهور موبايل ليجند الكريم منورين أحلى عيلة وأحلى جمهور في الدنيا. And I just want to tell you guys all to get hype and to get excited for MSC 2023. All the underdogs are coming from across the world to go and compete against the pros, against the favorite. With that being said, hashtag see the world and hashtag roar for MSC. Roar for MSC. Hashtag Raw for MSC, hashtag see the world. Hashtag Raw for MSC and see the world. And Shark, I know you're hungry for first place. Outplay them, outclass them, outstyle them. Let's go get them, boys. See the world, roll for MSC. Don't forget to watch us in MSC. I hope you support us on MSC. See the world and roar for MSC. It's time to roar for MSC and hashtag see the world.
every boundary and chain Ain't nothing can stop our restraint We are a force to be reckoned with Destiny, kingdom, and match Battle like Atlas, winning with madness Count us for practice, that is his match Just be the heroes here to slay Never back down, never restrain Pabigo and also known as Sanji. May support ng Echo Page. Ang favorite ko pong hero sa MLBB ay si Selena. Kasi po siya po talaga yung nagustuhan ko nung pagkapasok ko nung ML. Parang pinanood ko lang yung mga highlights na gumagamit sa kanya. Kasi yung, yung first skill po niya sobrang daya kasi yung vision niya sa mapa, ganun. Tapos parang support role po talaga siya dati. Tapos yung second skill niya, ano, sobrang daya din kasi pag tinamaan, ganun, pwede ka pa magkimpla ng kape. Tapos kung ano na gawin po kasi Sure din ka talaga kay Selena dati, sobrang OP niya. Tapos, yun, dun, dun sa hero na yun sa Selena na yun, dun ako na-discover ng mga coach sa MPL. Tapos, kaya ako siya laging gamit kasi yun yung meta talaga dati. Uh, siguro po, magagamit ko siya kung papagamitin po ng coach namin. Ang real life hero ko po ay si, si Papa. Kasi ano, palag, palagi ako nakikinig sa kwento niya sa mga advice-advice. Ad, 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 Tapos, yun, parang... Nahiligan ko rin, nahiligan ko na rin mag, ano, maglaro ng games, ng ano. Tapos yun, sinusuporta niya ako palagi. Tapos ano, pagpasok ko nung, ano, sa ML, amateur pa lang ako. Yung cellphone ko, ano, basag-basag. Tapos yun, binila, binila, binila nila ako ng, ano, binila nila ako ng medyo maganda-gandang phone din. Tapos, at kaso, yun, lag pa din. Pero yun, kakayanin para sa, ano, para sa pangarap. Hi, I'm Aaron Ram, uh, tatay ni Sanji. Sanji, ano, hindi siya madamot na pagbigay sa mga kapatid niya, uh, lalo sa mga pamilya niya. Si Sanji nagturo sa akin mag-ML. Uh, Niyaya niya ako maglaro. Sanggang sa nagusto ko rin. Uh, tuwing hapon, pagka uwi ako, hihintay niya muna ako. Pakauwi ng bahay bago maglaro ng ML. Hanggang sa sumali kami ng mga tour na, may pagpustahan. Tapos yung gamit ng cellphone nun, ano, basag. Uh, iniikot niya po yung cellphone para lang uh, magamit na maayos. Nung napunta siya ng PPG, tang tinagaan niya talaga yung, ano, yung pag-grind sa ML. Uh, toy na, sali talaga ng door namin, practice araw-araw. Hindi siya madali, pero ano, yun nga, sa pagsisikap niya, nagawa niya mag, ano, maging pro player. Uh, sa darating na MSC, uh, gawin lang nila yung pinapakalat sila sa screen nila makinig sa coaches, tsaka sa management, tsaka ano, uh, yun, good luck. Kano makuha niyo yung championship? Uh, ang message ko lang sa, ay, kay papa ko, ano, thank you kasi nabuhay ako sa mundo doon. Tsaka binuhay, binuhay niya ako, tapos, ano, sobrang na-inspire talaga ako sa mga kwento niya. Uh, sa mga lahat ng fans namin dyan, uh, mahal na mahal namin kayo, and tanamat sa pag-support pa sa amin sa ako, tapos, hindi-imbita ako rin kayo manood sa MSC 2023. Uh, good luck sa amin sa mga mga kalaban namin sa MSC at ipapatunayan namin na pinas pa rin talaga malakas.
boundary, boundary and chain Ain't nothing can stop or restrain We are a force to be reckoned with Destiny, kingdom and love Battle like Atlas, winning with madness Count us a practice, that is his match Let's be the heroes here to slay Never back down, never a strength ការរៀបចំទៅខាងស្រាវនេះពិតជាមានក្រៈសំខាន់ <coughs> 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 ກະຕ້ອຍຈັ່ງບ່ງລືໃສ່ໄດ້ໄຕລິງເກມຈັ່ງ <coughs> Hi, ako nga po pala si Sanford Marin Binuya, also known as Sanford. Naglalaro sa Echo bilang ex -Pilain. Ang favorite kong Evil Baby Hero ay si Yuzong kasi ilang best ko na rin siya nagamit sa mga tournaments tulad sa M4, sa MPL kasi parang isa siya sa mga hero na doon ako sobrang komportable dahil ano, lakas niya sa lane, kaya niya sumustain and then kaya niya din pumatay sa likod ng mag-isa. And ilang best ilang best na kami nanalo sa hero na to and nung season 11 parang wala wala po ata kami talo sa paggamit ng Yuzo kaya siya po talaga yung pinaka gusto kong gamit ako po 100% gagamitin ko po talaga siya sa MC kahit anong kalaban para po sa akin real life hero ko po is yung parents ko kasi sila po yung ano sumuporta po sa akin nung upisa pa and hanggang ngayon ano sila po yung dahilan kaya ginagalingan ko po Hi ako po si Juliet Marin Binuya uh, mami po ako ni Sanford Binuya. Hello, uh, ako si Jeb Binuya, father ni Sanford. Proud po ako sa kanya dahil uh, mabait na bata, masunog rin. Lahat ng, lahat ng uh, advice namin sa kanya, sinusunod niya. Si Sanford kasi di, di adam ng karamihan ay may yain. Tulad uh, nung tuwing nasa last kami, uh, like, siya nagtatago sa mga pads na. Uh, nung una, si Sanford, uh, nag a lang yan na sa bahay dahil nga pandemic. Akala ko kung ano yung ginagawa niya. And then, uh, nakiki, nakikipaglaro sa mga pro player. Tapos, nung isang araw, uh, uh, nag, nag-top global nga siya. Tinawagan ako ni Dogi. Nakukunin nga siya ng, sa NXP. Ayaw man namin, pero nakita ko siya, gusto niya talagang makapasok sa ano, larangan NL. Actually, yung sa akin naman, talagang tutol na tutol ako sa kanya. Dahil unang una, magpapabayaan niya yung pag-aaral. Very important kasi sa akin yung studies. Other than magdalo siya. Bale, par parang nag nagamali ko ng inala dahil 
pinag-ito niya sa akin kung paano siya mag- magdaro sa FPL. And dahil doon, nagkaroon na ako ng kumpiyasa na ayaan na lang siya. Uh, Sabot, uh, ang unang-una yung Panginoon. Huwag uh, mong kalimutang magano. Ano sa akin? At the same time, uh, yung ano mo, yung galing mo, but, uh, mag-umpiyat sa kalam. Dahil dyan ka, dahil yan ang magdala sa'yo sa tagumpay. San Ford, good luck ha. Uh, galingan mo. Sana huwag kang magbago. Mahal na mahal ka namin ang papa mo. Nandito lang kami parate, laging nakasuporta sa'yo. Ah, uh, pa, thank you so much. Kasi kahit hindi ka naniwala noong una, sinuportahan mo pa rin ako. And, ano, laging matatandaan lahat, lahat ng, ano, laro ko para sa'yo. Ah, uh, ma, thank you din kasi ikaw yung number one supporter ko. And kahit through ups and down, uh, andyan ko pa rin. And then, para sa'yo nyo ni Papa yung mga laro ko kaya ginagalikan mo. Thank you po pala sa mga sumuporta sa akin simula noong umpisa. And... Mas lalo ko pang gagalingan sa paparating na MSC para makuha namin yung kampiyonato para sa inyo. Selamat datang ang Toto dan Kuat Patik Jora Dunia ko kali Jens Van Beck M4. Big difference. So, uh, the M4 and Pamachan during the identity crisis, they're not sure how they want to play the game. They're not sure who's going to be the carry, what kind of rotation that we're going to use. Contohnya macam Momo cover lebih daripada satu role, Chiku juga lebih daripada dua role sekalipun di cover. Jadi ini membuatkan pasukan tu terlalu boleh saya katakan uh, sedikit berselaru, hilang identity. Lapor digugurkan ketika ini sedih, ya, kecewa, ya. Tapi apa lagi yang perlukan? Apa lagi yang kita kurang sebenarnya untuk membawa jalur gemilang ke Grand Final di peringkat yang lebih tinggi? But for this season, like you said, they're very focused. Chiku, you only play gold lane. Chiku, you only think about how we're going to win. And everyone else is going to provide the, the coverage for Chiku guys. So for this season, it's definitely different where they're very focused on their own style of play which is the langa playstyle, but now it's almost like the lawan balik kind of langa where you're trying to make the opponent fight you and then you win the, the, the fight eventually. Bila uh, player dengan coach Filipino masuk ni, dia lain sikit daripada kebiasaan kita orang buat lah. Selalu dia lebih kepada lebih de, uh, disiplin. At first, it's hard uh, because of the language. Uh, there are those times that I cannot understand them and they cannot understand me. But me and a gym figured it out like, okay, gym, I will tell you the instructions, then you translate it to them. So that's what happened. That's why our work get easier because of it. Kemasukan Coach BF saya rasa dia lebih ke arah disiplin lah. Sebab kita orang ni tak ada disiplin sangat. So bila dah ada dia ni, kita orang lebih ke arah disiplin and ingatlah motif kita nak main dan tujuan kita main sebab So I've known Chiku before he entered Doda. So I've known him for a while now and I feel like he really did not change much. And yes, he is comfortable on camera but he's more comfortable in stream. So maybe the viewers online are not as intimidating as the viewers in person. Perbezaan yang telah dapat di TV ini sendiri. Perbezaan 
Dulu saya single, sekarang saya dah kahwin. Kalau Ciku ni sebelum kahwin ni dia jenis kaki langgar. Tak kisah lah kalau sebelum ni punis kan, uh, girlfriend dia kan. Dia langgar je punis tu. Ha, sekarang ni dah kahwin tu dia macam, okey ni wife aku, aku kena jaga dia, dia tak boleh langgar lah. Ha, itu lah, itu Ciku lah. I think he's an absolute legend. I think that he really pushes the agenda and he really knows how to test the limits or at the very least very situationally aware of what he's capable of on a particular marksman. Although the meta has shifted and Chiku has definitely changed roles, he's you know, he has to evolve with the times. I feel that Chiku is still at an age where he's adaptable, but age is eventually going to catch up to him at some point. We just don't know when. Kalau bagi saya selagi saya rasa saya boleh main walaupun tak macam orang lain kan macam kalau main macam fasen lain tapi bagi saya uh, benda itu tak penting dia lebih ke arah on point lah so selagi saya boleh on point kan benda-benda yang penting lagi tu saya akan main lah kalau dah sampai masa yang tak boleh stop lah ramai orang yang yang uh, toksik, ramai orang yang maki kata suruh keluar Toda, Moon dengan Ciku suruh keluar Toda apa semua. But in the end of the day, kita orang sendiri dapat buatlah. So bersyukur saya sangat kepada Allah SWT yang memberi kita orang kawan-kawan yang macam family macam ni. So Alhamdulillah sangat-sangat lah. Ready for the better cry with a mighty try. 
Change the heavens, set the fire to the sky Woo. Keep burning bright, kill the allies And the enemies smash my eyes Strive for domination hey. Hey. Feel the pressure rising The fight with your life and with your nation With your devotion and emotion Lay it on the line, the choice is yours Offense or defense, let the courage war Reaching for the heart
boundary and chain Ain't nothing can stop our restraint We are a force to be reckoned with Destiny, kingdom, and lead Battle like Atlas, winning with madness Count us to practice, that is his match As we are the heroes here to slay Never back down, never uh, astray Yo, yo, fatal length Yo, yo, single swim Match by match, day by day Determination ain't one at a time And gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another action-packed series here at MSC 2023. For match number two, we are going to have the Burmese Phoenix going against the Kings of SG MLBV. But back on the caster desk, it's me, Eterna, Mirko, and look. Wait, you're not LaFell. No, this time a new Malaysian has come to take the stage. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody, my name is Gideon Q, replacing LaFell this time around. He'll be back later on, but we have an exciting match here. We Definitely. do. I mean, looking at the match, we saw Phoenix already. So we kind of already have an understanding as to how they like to tackle the game. They like to actually bring it to the later stage, which is quite similar because their opponents today, RSG SG, likes to do the same. They're a mid to late game team. But since the two new players have joined their team, 
it seems like they can actually get a good early game lead too. Yeah, let's hope that they do, right? Because they need a little bit more, maybe, creativity to be able to spearhead against the Burmese Phoenix. But of course, MSC 2023 is powered by Moonton, supported by ROG, the official gaming phone, and Secret Lab, our official chair partner. Thank you to our lovely sponsors because MSC wouldn't be possible without your support. And of course, there is a special shout out to Secret Lab, our official gaming chair partner, where it comes with built-in lumbar support system that you guys can adjust to your spine with incredible magnetic memory foam head pillow and brand new fabrics to enhance the perfect designs. So enjoy the same performance advantage trusted by the world's biggest esports tournaments at secretlab.co. Mm -hmm. From June 5th all the way to June 18th, the MSC Pass will be available for only 719 diamonds down what? from 899 diamonds. There's a bit of a discount if nobody has realized it yet. So purchase the pass and you can get the Atlas, Rune Sentinel, and 3,500 MSC coins immediately Wait. on top huh? of that. Yep. You can also enjoy a bonus of a double task rewards. MSC double? Return, Skin Drawhead, Space Explorer, Claude, Earth's Mightiest, and other rich rewards await you to redeem too. Aside from that, if you complete all MSC pass tasks and make all guesses correct, you can redeem the Atlas Rune Sentinel in the MSC event shop for free. So get ready to enjoy the fight and explore the MSC pass with the hashtag MLBB or Mobile Legends Bang Bang, hashtag see the world and hashtag MSC 2023. Don't forget the hashtags once again, guys, because I just posted a photo and I used the hashtags. Which one? If you guys want to do that, what? Which, Which one? one? All of them. Oh. That's good. Uh, that's, yeah. that's what we're just checking you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh? We're just checking you. We're making sure. All in right. case, right? Just in case. Of course, of course, of course. But coming back into match numero dos of today, this is going to be the highlight, the theme of the match, right? Resurgence of the rulers and, of course, the rise of the phoenix. Unfortunately, yesterday, they had to suffer a loss mm -hmm. to EVO's Legends from Indonesia, but they didn't go down without a fight. That was a two to one miracle. You casted that, right? Yeah, it was an intense two to one very close to the one all the way to the end there were a few very creative uh, decisions i would say from phoenix trying to go for the backdoor play even and you know ever since falcon no you know what let's go even further back ever since the burmese ghoul showed up in m2 the burmese uh, teams have always been able to show us the surprises here in the international stage and it didn't stop with burmese ghouls we got falcon who was absolutely amazing and we kept on going but we're going to talk first about RSGSG because they're going to be making their debut here with their new roster internationally. Now, RSG, people are wondering, man, wh wh what's all this research about? No, R, resilience, S for strength, and G for greatness. This team has come up with some of the weirdest picks, and I'm a Malaysian, by the way. MPL, MY is crazy, but these guys take it to a whole new level. But dunk a dunk. That's what Diablo played in the grand finals, right? We crazy. see random stuff sometimes like a Layla in the compositions for Todok but that's in the regular season the fact that he made Badang work the fact that they're able to I would say find a lot more creativity than they used to shows you that this team has grown yeah it really has but we're used to RSG that's very used to Bray as well as Diablo so let's hear what Bray has to say about this next upcoming match I think that our opponents in our group would be definitely beatable because uh, now that Myanmar, because usually Myanmar is Falcon, right? So now that change to Phoenix, right? It will be, I would say, easier, but not not too cocky, but a bit easier than usual. And for Evos, will be a bit tougher because they are also top two in. In Indonesia NPL, so it will be a bit tough, but I'm definitely sure that we can beat them. Uh. Yeah. Wow, all right, already some spicy statements coming in from Bray. He said that Phoenix should be easier. He also said he doesn't RSG. want to be too cocky, which is like 
a double meaning. <laughs> Look, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty sure this interview happened before yesterday's game. Right. Like, come on. After yesterday's game, I think everybody can agree that maybe there's a good reason why Phoenix is here. Maybe we misjudge which group was the group of death, right? Because group B right now is shaping up to be really spicy, especially considering we still don't have a taste of what RSG SG can bring to the table. We've seen good SG teams in the past, but RSG SG, unfortunately, in the last few international tournaments, just hasn't been able to pull off a, you know, a, a good performance at all. And we're seeing it now. We heard a lot of people say Occupy has improved a lot. I've also been hearing that RSG SG have been improving a lot. Mm, we'll see, we'll see. We haven't seen them play just yet, but this is gonna be the debut for them on the stage this season here at MSC 2023. And with that in mind, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome them on. Well, here it is, ladies and gentlemen, first onto the stage. We're going to be welcoming our marshals to officiate this match. They're here to ensure fair play and esports integrity. Rith, Shadow, John, and Alex will ensure that fair play will continue on the stage. But, ladies and gentlemen, it's time. Give it up for the first team walking up on the stage, consisting of a super dynamic roster. The new face of Myanmar MLBB is here to slay. Phoenix Esports! Phoenix Esports, known as the Burmese Phoenix. They are coming down, they are coming to the stage with much more hunger as they try to continue their legacy. Oh, hold up, hold up. The champions of Singapore are making their way up on the stage. The rulers that just completed their 3 P. Here comes RSG Slate! Singapore! Will three nationalities in RSGSG create a unique synergy with Coach Kuja as Singaporean players and Indonesian imports? This team has it all. This team surely has it all, but of course, Mirko. We're also going to be welcoming the coaches from both of these lineups. Phoenix and also RSGSG. We have Coach Nyo Chao and Hatet Luin U and also Coach Kuja here for RSGSG. We'll see if their dynamic drafts can be implemented in this matchup. It's super impressive with how they've been performing overall, both teams at the top of their game here. And hopefully, we're going to see a full best of three. Remember, this is Phoenix's last chance to make it to the knockout rounds. Now, that's why I find this very interesting. You mentioned the group stages. You mentioned these particular groups. And I feel like this group is the most balanced, the one that has the most possibility of ending in a three-way tie. But this is the official team lineup here from Phoenix. Benny, Fayan, Royal Milk, Mock, and Jack. So, still the same mid-Roamer duo. Simple and PX7 still unheard of. Well, unfortunately, we are not seeing some of the side players coming out from Phoenix. They are sticking with the main lineup here. It's going to be Bay, uh, Benny, Feyan, Royal Milk, Mock, and as well as Jex. We saw this yesterday, and I think, you know, this might be one of the rosters that are feeling a little bit more consistent. I don't know how their scrims have been going, but we got to talk about Feyan. What a Lance got against Kyrie yesterday. Oh boy! Yeah, Feyan definitely had a solid performance up against Taz yesterday, but Jex, I want to actually highlight Jex. His Edith, something that's out of the norm. We haven't seen Edith roam in such a long Long time and to make it work on the stage against Ace, the second place team from MPL Indo is definitely impressive. But we're gonna welcome as well the main lineup. This is the lineup they're gonna bring it up onto the stage. It is their main five that played in the grand finals. Oki, Bray, Diablo, Roy, and Lucian QT. Now the two players that I'd really like to highlight from this lineup, like I mentioned before, it's gotta be Bray and it's gotta be Diablo as well because they have the most, I would say, experience in this lineup. They have most to say, and it's going to anchor around these two players. And with that in mind, I'm wondering how Phoenix, they're going to try and shut them down when it comes down to the in-game. Personally, for me, I do believe that Diablo is an in incredibly versatile player, right? But how do you really abuse that? You need a strong side and a weak side. And in this particular case, Oki is going to be the consistent side, allowing people like Diablo to come up with the high volatile picks. The Paquitos going into the EXP like we saw li literally in the previous best of three of Occupy versus Tora. We might even see, well, hopefully the signature Badang first pick, first ban in MPL SG. How much of a statement is that? It's a, it's a big one. I mean, I've never seen a Badang in MPL Indonesia, literally never since I started casting, obviously, because we have mm -hmm. seen it before. The fact of the matter is the Badang is a very 
Well, I wouldn't even say situational. It's just not a good hero right now. It's the a do or die. It's a do or die, and he makes it work. Diablo, it shows how much confidence he has in his team now. They have reformed, and they even changed their coaching staff, right? It was Coach St. Lucas for the most part for RSG SG in the last two international tournaments. Mm -hmm. So with that coaching staff change, with a few player changes as well, I'm looking at a very different RSG SG. Now mm -hmm. this time, I don't know, okay? Yesterday was a full mirror curse. Uh -huh. Now, so far, it's a full mirror bless. I don't know if this is going to continue. It's a coin flip. Every single time when we look at miracles specifically <laughs> on these predictions, you never know what you're going to get. But Eterna, walk me through, Phoenix. What turned you around? Because you've talked so much about these handsome boys, even at the gala for RSG Slate. Wait, before we get into that topic, right? I just mm -hmm. want to say my prediction is still sitting at 100%. Oh, okay. Even for the matches that I didn't cast. Oh, so, okay. oh no. Okay. Eterna bless? A turn bless. A turn bless. Play turn? No, no, no. That's bless right, no. turn. Bless turn. All right. I mean, anyway, coming back into your question, Phoenix, I have been surprised, and I usually am, and I always am, from regions, from teams that come from this particular region. I felt the same way about uh, Falcon, Falcon at MSC last year, and this year I'm feeling the same. They have something strong in them. They have that determination that even though when things don't turn out the way that they plan from that draft pick, somehow, some way, they're still able to make it work. They have that hunger, that determination, and yeah, they really do. I actually got in the call with Ken, Falcon Ooh. player, yesterday to talk about Phoenix because he wanted to get on and just talk about how Phoenix performed. He said that, man, this team, he didn't expect much from them because it's their first ever international performance offline on a stage, but he was really impressed mainly by Jax and Benny. These two are not playing the way they usually play because they are actually outshining the rest of the members that he thinks were supposed to be the star players. That's exactly what I wanted to actually bring up here because a lot of teams, and especially newer teams who come to the international stage, definitely have this pressure that's building up. As soon as you get to these lands, with a crowd of this size, with the level of gameplay, there's such high expectations that people don't really feel. Yeah, confidence, right? And there's the confidence coming from Oki as well, right? In my opinion, in the past, RSGSG has always finished top eight. But with the addition of me and Lucian Cutie, we always can finish top five or even top three. I didn't even put them in my top eight. So if they can shock the world here and make it to top three, that'll be a treat. Mm. I don't know. I definitely was a little uh, skeptical when I saw your predictions of who was going to be in that top eight. And the fact that you weren't supporting your boys, the two imports, by the way, coming in from <laughs> Indonesia, that's why I'm like, this got to be a mirror curse. There's got to be a mirror curse somewhere in here. <laughs> It has to be, right? Is I there? don't know. I don't know. I don't know. At this point, I, d I can't control my powers, a turn. I can't. I can't. Okay, we'll, we'll see. We'll see in this next match, right? How the predictions pan out. But yes, between both of these teams, we actually mentioned about playstyle, right? Coming into the late game, what do you think that RSG Slate can actually do? to be aggressive from even that early point. I think it relies heavily on mid control, right? Because Bray and their trio mid in general has been absolutely amazing in MPL SG. How they get the ball moving is through that mid trio snowball. They are the ones who actually dictate where to go. They don't have a particular, like, unique style of play where they only go to goal, only go to XP. It's very dynamic in that sense, so it really is reliant on that trio mid getting ahead. Well, here's the thing. When we look at MPL SG, and honestly, the region of Singapore in general, they like to play standard games. They like to play a little slow. They follow protocols. They know the movements, the motions in a game like MLBB. As we get into the draft, hopefully we get to see some of these interesting picks. But I think the scariest part is when they were faced off with their opponents in MPL SG, the grand finals, the only team who could challenge them is a team that got creative, a team that got hyper aggressive. Oh, and that's exactly what Phoenix can do. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the drafting phase of game number one between Singapore representative RSG and from the Burmese Phoenix Esports. You can see RSG with the first pick, Phoenix with the second, and already the Yeeve and the Wan Wan has been taken out of the Land of Dawn. Mm, it's a good start from both of these bands so far. I can't wait for these very first picks. RSG is going to be on the first pick with 
Phoenix as second. And I think we need to start talking about a couple of things. Number one, Atlas Pick Race. We haven't seen him pop up too often. Same goes with the Farmers. I was expecting to see more Glue Farmers relationships happening down in the band section. It's always like this, man. Whenever they release a skin for a certain hero, we don't get to see the hero. Because we didn't get to see Farsa a lot in MSC 2022. And now we're not seeing a lot of Atlas in MSC 2023. I like that you mentioned the Farsa, right? Because uh -huh. Farsa is actually one of the comfort heroes and the power picks for Roy. And throughout the entirety of MSC, we haven't seen Farsa being played, right? So not I'm yet. wondering why that's the case. Because she has and an MSC skin. I didn't cure the you oh. know what? That's a good point. Oh, I didn't think that true. far ahead, and I was about to come up with a counter statement about, you know, Roger and M3. But <laughs> hey, look, I think that's a pretty good <laughs> argument here. Now, looking at the bands once again, we see the glue, we also see the Valentina, and I think I'm I'm just as surprised as a turner, right? Knowing that Grok is going to be generally the exactly. go-to, like a go-to counter for the Farsa, and the fact that it's been globally banned exactly. here, why isn't Farsa seeing more play? And my logic is because the EXP lane has now become a lot more volatile with many more options and especially with teams with both Phoenix and as well as RSG. Roamers and EXP laners must work together in these artillery mage battles. Mm, we'll see, we'll see. The joy here going to be the choice of ban from RSG Singapore and now Phoenix, they're in a tough position right now, right? The Novaria is still open for grabs for them to take as I well as something like, your I would say, the Lancelot, but they are going to go for the Arlet ban this time around. Okay, Novaria still up for grabs like you mentioned. Thing is, 50% win rate up on stage in MSC 2023, so maybe not as broken as we uh, had previously expected it to be in the pro play. Um, thing is, do RSG really want to go for the Novaria here? It fits their play, it fits the way they, you know, ta tackle games, so it makes sense to go for it, but it might be a bit too risky knowing Phoenix have a pretty good jungler who can go and dive into that back with Royal Milk. It's a, it's a good starter. I, I think when, when, I, when I look at this and I look at the different openings that we've seen so far in the past couple of tournaments, most teams are going to be like, ah, yes, we need to go for the Valentina. But when you start taking out those starters, now you really have to think a little bit ahead. Novaria has been picked up for the side of RSG, and this gives us a little bit of an idea of where their head is at. They're looking to play for vision. They're looking to play for in Information. And I'm curious to see who the Novaria ah. is going to be played by, right? Because so far, Novaria has been in mid, it has been in Rome, it really depends on the team. But for RSG, it does look like it's more, I would say, Roy's style, right? But there you go, the Farsa shows up finally here at MSC. And it's going to be paired up with the Lancelot. But now, my problem is, I really love the Farsa. I really love the damage output that she can have. I really love her high ground as well. But I think she is super vulnerable to heroes like the Yuzong that can dive into the backline. And even something like the Ling, which I'm pretty sure that they can play. Absolutely. I think Bray, he is a great assassin player. He's good at general tank junglers. He's all he's quite the all-rounded jungler, right? The mm -hmm. all-in-one package that's really propelled RSG forward. I think the Yuzong is definitely a very good shout here, especially for the side of RSG. It's a very clear counter. Makaja is open and it will get locked wow. in, plus the Beatrix. So not only does RSG not really too bothered about the options, unless Phoenix hard bans EXP laners, which I don't see happening just yet. It's a good, it's a good uh, takeaway as well, honestly. If you look at RSG SG, you know, knowing Phoenix and how they played yesterday against Evo's Legends, they heavily prioritize this Beatrix pick in the first phase. They always want to go for the Beatrix pick. Right now, the perfect instigator, Lucian QD has a 100% win rate with Kaja, seven games, Lolita and Kufra. So this man is an absolute unit once he gets those comfort heroes. And with the Kaja paired up with the Beatrix, there's some good burst damage. You can pick off anyone and get them out of there quick. It all relies on the Beatrix having a good time though, so I can, you can expect RSG SG to maybe go for some gold lane bans. Mm -hmm. I definitely think gold lane bans are probably going to be the way to go for RSG. We do see the Yuzong get banned out for the side of Phoenix, but even if they do ban out the Lapu Lapu, there's still quite a number of weird options to expect from Diablo. Paquito, uh, probably not going to be the best against the Farsa, but definitely has a couple of moments, especially with Flicker. Maybe I would also argue Oh man, I, I hopefully don't jinx this because the Castle Curse has been quite oh strong God, throughout the tournament say? so far. I do hope to see the Badong here. It doesn't seem that bad. Maybe not just for the iframes from the Lancelot, but at the very least, you have a hard target. Why are they banning it for the side from RSG? Why are they banning Lapu for themselves? All right, here's another crazy option, right? Mm -hmm. Sure, he's great at the Badang. He's known for the Badang, mm -hmm. but there's one more hero that he's also known for, Khalid. 
Good point. It's insane, right? He isn't the best of heroes. We see it work sometimes in MPL ID, but that was like three seasons ago. Not really sure if that can pop up here in this meta, but that is something that Diablo has in his arsenal, seeing as the Akai now is also off the board here, coming in from Phoenix. I think it's a solid choice, right? Going for Khalid, but it only depends on the matchup. It really does. You need to pick Khalid as a strong lane. You want to get him in a good matchup. And I think we have seen it in uh, MPO Indonesia. I think it was Cerezo who brought it up against a Joy, and it worked really well. And now with the Joy band, we have to see what Phoenix goes for because they can very well just leave that XP lane as the final pick to stop RSG from having Diablo pick up any crazy, you know, hero that can go to the XP lane. But uh, you're right, they are really setting up for that, you know, unique XP pick. Yeah, I love it. I love it a lot because RSG, they're thinking ahead of time. They know for a fact that if they're going to deal with Royal Myth, let's take out a couple of options that he has and force him onto this Uranus, which is perfect if we do see this setup coming in from Khalid, right? You have the Raging Sandstorm that can e almost immediately force the reposition from that Farsa. But the jungle. There you go. See, yeah, there we go. You called it, Eterna, right off the bat. Man, I did not Amazing expect this. So they're going to go for the Fredrin, the Khalid, and now Phoenix, they're going to hit it off with a carry. What do we think about this, Gideon? I think carry's going to be a little short range. I do think that she's going to struggle a little bit overall, especially when it's going to be up against a Beatrix. The siege composition coming in from the side of RSG looks kind of good. I'm siding a little bit more towards Whoa. RSG, but I will say, Phoenix, they've got a lot of outplay potential. Yeah. I don't know what's up in Singapore, but yeah. it's 49% to RSG, so more Singaporeans voted for Phoenix. Yeah, it's not even a 50-50. It's I a 49 to their own team. What's going on here? Know, Singaporeans, man. where the support? What's the what's their hashtag? Is it where? hashtag Spore Pride? No? Oh, no, that's Indo Pride. No. <laughs> there's, there's no equivalent from like Indo Pride? I know Malaysia Bole. Okay, what's Singapore's? SG loud, SG proud. <laughs> All right, that could work. <laughs> could definitely work. But it, I guess it shows that they're very realistic, right? They understand that the performances from the SG teams haven't been too convincing in the previous international tournaments. But it's time right now for RSG SG to turn the tide and to answer to the doubters. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Land of Dawn for game number one of match number two. Ah, oh, interesting series that we're going to have here, ladies and gentlemen. And face value right now, we see that the Diablo, that the Diablo, nice, that Diablo has opted for the Master of Assassin emblem. Yep, he needs to be able to move out of this lane first. He needs to be able to dominate this lane. Again, Festival of Blood probably would have been ideal just to kind of sustain a little bit longer. But keep in mind, if Diablo catches literally anybody, it's do or die. It's either he dies or you die. No in between. All right. We do have a few moments here earlier on. Nothing too fancy just yet in terms of that items, but even here you can see that both of these junglers are very aggressive here in that mid side. Both want the lethal wanderer, but it's gonna go to RSG. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look around the, the map, right, we have to keep in mind that in these early stages, Diablo just needs to be isolated. Even Roy is coming in to make his job even harder. Notice on the opposite side of the map, the coverage that RSG have right now is making keeping Phoenix in check. Okay, Benny needs to be very careful though. Oh, that's a good trade. Oh, he's gonna be able to flick around. That's one more hit! Lucian Cutie, the double duo mid combo, able to roam around the map. And like we mentioned, actually foreshadowed it a bit, that trio mid really is shining here. Wowie, Benny goes down there earlier on, and that's going to hurt him in the long run, right? The carry and the Beatrix matchup is already mm -hmm. so difficult for the carry. And now he has one kill point on to Oki. It's not the most ideal here for Phoenix in the early stage of the game. Mm -hmm. It really is it. But on the opposite side, at least Diablo recognizes that this could be potentially dangerous. So he's just waiting to get near level four. Okay, he's waiting for it. But the oh. airstrike does come down. But Diablo is able to just surf out of there right now as Feyan is on the turtle. Diablo's going to be first to help him out. Jumping in now on the damage and Ray with a brilliant retribution secures it for his team. The taunt coming down and also the raging sandstorm. Say goodbye to Jax, he's going to be out as well. RSG, complete control. Well played, you know, they're counting the resources that Phoenix actually dedicate. The fact that the Feather Airstrike was actually used on that top side rather than just controlling the area of the turtle, making it a little difficult for them for the reclamation. Oh, Feyan still got that in the end, but look at bot side, the amount of pressure, just farming this gold plating. Man, RSG, they're being very aggressive here in the early game, and wow. that's... Incredible.
that, that development in their gameplay that we're seeing, and it's giving Phoenix a little bit of a hard time. However, they still need to be careful because we saw Phoenix struggle in the early game to that mid game, and they know they can stay patient. They can still stay disciplined enough to come back in the game. So RSG, they really need to think about this as well. Yeah, the next interaction here, we're expecting, we know for a fact that Phoenix can scale, right? With the farce and the carry, that's going to be more than enough. Royal Milk, right now, he's not going to have a fun time. But no. later on, it's going to be quite the struggle, right? Because the only people who can really deal with him is literally just Oki. Everybody else has to hit him multiple times, and half the time, it's just wasted damage. Mm -hmm. And if we take a look at the winning lanes, right? The way RSG and SG have drafted for themselves, it makes sense uh, as to why they actually have this early game lead. Mm -hmm. It's all about how they use utilize his early game lead to snowball and to take control of the mid game. Because Phoenix can very well just come back with one good team fight. Uh, I think one of their strengths right now is they're able to open up the map really well. So they're kind of already neutralizing that pickoff threat that Jax can put on them. Mm -hmm. that, that's why I'm thinking, wait, wait, hold on. Just as I say, man, the caster curse absolutely on par. Wow. But RGSG, man, I don't know what to say. They're just clean with it. That response was almost instantaneous. and. Guess what? The only one at threat was the Roamer, so it was all good. Yeah, I mean, RSG's timings right now are so very good. Instantly, they try to capitalize on that top no side. Retry. No retry, even better. This is so cold, so calculated from RSG. It's beautiful, and now they're actually at a disadvantage here. Will they be able to get something out of it, though? Ricky Storm coming down. Retribution, free for Bray. Royal Milk getting chunked low. But yes, wow. it's just efficiency. It's Singaporean efficiency. The timing, the timing, it's been insane. They're able to just time it so perfectly. They get another objective there in the bottom side, and they're just winning it out all, all on all fronts. Mm, it's crazy to think that Singapore, a small island on the south side of Malaysia, thinking that like, wow, these they're a small region, there's nothing to worry about. But give them space, give them a lot of land to work with, and they'll control the entire map and turn it into their own. It's it's super dangerous in Phoenix right now. If they're looking for a way to kind of spearhead and trying to push them back, I think they have to look at Bray. Okay, well, Bray is getting looked at right now, getting targeted down, but he's able to actually escape in the Divine Judgment. Locks checks down for a bit. Oki unable to take him out. Brilliant. Abstroke fear, sphere there coming down, but it's not enough to take Jax down just yet. Quite uh, curious the rotations right here, mm -hmm. Gideon, because I feel like being on the Farsa, you have that extra mobility with his wings by wings, but they haven't been able to translate that through the mid and through their rotations to be able to dominate and you know, just be able to set the tempo, and it's actually RSG doing that. I mean, let's not forget that even though Wings by Wings can fly over walls, and yes, it's a relatively short cooldown, Roy basically has the same thing with the Astral Recall, and even better, he can look to start opening the map and trading while they're in the middle of that rotation. So there is a slight advantage, assuming that Roy is able to hit those skill shots, but let's keep in mind, at the end of the day, this is a siege composition. It's a composition designed to take down structures as best they can. And with Roy opening up the map without putting anybody at risk, it becomes an even uh, better decision, efficient decision. There's no better word than efficient. There really is no better word than efficient right now to put uh, into words how RG is taking or tackling this game. They've actually been able to take down the bottom lane turret as well. And like I said earlier, that range advantage oh. is really giving them such a good time to prevent Jax from doing anything on the map. They've neutralized what made Phoenix such a threat yesterday. And now with the Flicker Divine Judgment, he also in the Emperor's Passion onto Royal Milk. It should still be fine. Oki's now caught though. He flickers out of there. That's giving the puncture and the Thorn Rose. Dealing out some bit of damage. Oki's gonna fall, but Diablo now comes down with a flicker to find the kill back onto Fei Yan. One for one. They don't have a jungler. Phoenix, what do they do? It seems like they still want to stay along the side of the turtle, but they will be forced out of it right now. With no retreat, they will not be able to contest. The oh. setup from RSG just has been so impeccable, right? Mm -hmm. Oki going in for that snipe, trying to uh, just force Jex to recall in the moment where they're going for a 5v5, trying to make things a little bit more unbalanced for Phoenix. It, it was timed perfectly, and you can feel Phoenix getting a little bit, maybe, maybe they're getting a little bit, how, what do you say, heated about it. And so they go in, they lose Feyan in the process, and all that is just once again in favor of RSG. I mean, they're starting to get desperate, right? Because it feels like, man, everything we do, we get punished for it. So we gotta figure out a way to force a mistake Whoa. out of RSG. Oh, Jax. They're going in again. Jax not given the time at all. For the airstrike where the pop, but Bray just takes everything in. Divine Judgment locks him down, and Bray picks up the kill. Wow, this is just 
Again, cool, calm, and calculated, but all battle spells are on cooldown as of yet for the side of RSG. But without but without big ultimates coming out from Phoenix, we see a lot of the issues start to show, and especially coming in from Jax, it's really hard for him to open up the map. Royal Milk, I would assume, is going to be okay, but when that wave starts crashing down, I don't see any support. Good luck, Royal Milk. It's either you give this up or try your best. Uh, try your best. That's that's the route he's <laughs> taking right now, right? I mean, he's not even going to try to actually defend that turret. He knows it's a lost cause, and he knows that the single target damage coming from RSG is a bit too much to deal with. Diablo. Such a menace on this Khalid, that oppressiveness in lane and all the way here as well. And this is just unfair, right? Phoenix are severely outranged. You gotta give props to the draft from RSG. Yeah, just look at where Roy is just launching these projectiles from the Astral Recall, right? The way that he's checking these brushes are very, it's its very methodical, oh. right? One by one. Check the river brush, next stop, you go deeper into the enemy jungle. Wow, but look at this, Bray. Abracer, the flawless Abracer. Shout out to our script writers, man. Wow, 100% win rate on the Fredra, and he's played it. What was that? 11 times? 10 times? 11 times. I mean, That's they're a champions. Lot. These guys are champions. Everybody's going to have some hero that has 100% win rate. I'm just surprised that there's so many. It's not just one unique pick. It's usually three. I would argue some oh. even have four. Yeah, and right now, they're certainly utilizing these picks really well. Oh my god. That ultimate actually got everyone. Five man and oh! Diablo on the back with the Raging Storm finds Benny. It didn't take him down, but that's all they need to get them out of there. Phoenix can no longer contest for the turtle or a lord right now. Diablo gonna be caught in the onward. I is able to flick around with a Brazen's Wrath and a snipe from downtown from Oki. Takes Jax down. That's another Astral Sphere placed down by Roy. They're really just zoning Phoenix away. Fayan looking for it, but it's not going to be able to find it. Punctures in, but it's forced back instantaneously. Oh my goodness. A beautiful save coming in from Jax. He saves Benny's life, gives his life, but unfortunately, the rest of the members, they immediately lose confidence in this. You can definitely tell that Fayan is struggling to find the space, the little cracks in between the defense of RSG, especially during these Lord fights to get in on the Lord. I just love the combo coming in from Roy and Diablo, right? And maybe that's why Diablo went for the Master of Assassin emblem. He's trying to utilize that to be able to get into the back line, take Benny down, and it's working so well because of the vision that is being provided by Roy and her ultimate. So it's working really well with one another. They're coinciding perfectly as he tries to go in once again, but I don't think this is a fight that he should take so far. And another thing is that Phoenix, I don't think that they have quote unquote reach their power spike as fast as RSG just yet, but they're still committing onto these fights. Mm, Jax again is gonna be targeted down. Lucian Cutie is able to find the fine judgment and that's a trade one for one. Roamer for Roamer. Fayan with a puncture, dealing a lot of damage. Phantom execution. Oh, he's gonna be trapped here, but he's gonna be able to find the kill with Grace Taunt. Well played the spacing and the coordination between the two. Not just Roy and Diablo, it's Oki and Bray. Now Royal Milk's gonna be stunned up by the Raging Storm. And you can say goodbye to Royal Milk now with a snipe. Oh! oh! Clean movement, but unfortunately, yeah, Roy skill one. I don't think you can da dodge that one. No, no, no. There's just too many. There's too many projectiles coming at him. And this is why Edith is really struggling right now. Because she can't be the one opening up the map. And when Royal Milk decides, you know what? I got to do this job. The rest of the team starts a fight without him. So out of position. No way to front line for the team. It's a struggle because RSG has so many different angles to hit the back line with. Oh, oh good Earth Shadow with a flicker combo. And oh, that's okay who's going to be taken down. The shutdown goes to the hands of the Farsa. Mok's going to have a good time now to try to scale up because he's the only member right now who has zero deaths on Phoenix. And yet still, RSG has a 4,000 gold lead. And one of the main things that I saw earlier on before Oki went down is the fact that Diablo went for the Malefic Roar. So, so much damage already on the Khalid. Mm -hmm. He also went for the Dominance Ice just to make sure that he's doing his job as an EXP laner, but this could be a potential play. Uh, they're airstrike, they're committing a lot in the back line though. What's wow. going on, Ray? All alone, this might just be bad here. But Lucian Cutie finds no. Benny! And the Raging Storm follows through. Diablo is massive. That's a double kill. Buck is going to be caught low by the Astral Sphere. Now, Royal Milk is completely isolated from the team. He has the Consecration. He has the Immortality. But what's that going to do? It's only going to buy time. Phoenix lose three. 
for nothing. And Damn. 10 seconds to the Lord. Yeah, I, I don't know about Roy, but it feels like with the new ROG, he's got a lot more vision than normal, right? Other it's phones are not going to give you that level of depth. My God, how did he notice it all the way on the opposite side, especially when Mock was about to basically walk out of vision? Oh, so good. Perfectly timed right now. They're going to get the Lord uncontested here, taking it away from Phoenix in the 12th minute of the game. And once again, Bray gonna do the Grand Theft Orange. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a purple, but... Oh, man. Okay, I'll do it again. <laughs> Let me do it again. All okay, right, okay. we redo, we do. Grand Theft Purple. She did it! She did it! First take. Awesome. Nobody, nobody realized the previous <laughs> one. Let's all forget about that to collectively, collectively. Now, from this point onwards, right, I'm expecting to see at least some form of scaling from Phoenix, right? I'm expecting Benny to be, well, currently it's 36k, uh, 36k uh, gold in total, so that means about two and a half items in comparison to RSG, who's hit their next item power spike. Expect to see one of these inhibitor fall, but if this fight goes badly, it could be over. Oh, it finds oh Mok again! God. Roy has a magnet placed on Mok right now. He is a sitting duck. Okay, also doing some damage now, trying to siege down this bottom lane. Prey is doing a good job at zoning them away as Diablo does the same thing. Now the airstrike comes down, hits three of them, but the damage is certainly just not enough right now to be anything that they can really... Oh, that was so close. I thought <laughs> Benny... Oh, if they hit Benny, I think he might actually... Yeah, he's, I think he might be a... He's done. I don't think he'll die. I think he'll get put to about 10% after uh, after the burn, but we'll no, see. He hits look two at of Monk. them. He hits two of them. Oh, God. Oh, God. We need to get another stat of how many times these players from Phoenix, especially when they're up against a Novaria, takes an early recall. Because, my goodness, they've seen the <laughs> fountain so many oh, times. Oh. Good dodge. Very good dodge from Fei Yan. Oh, Jax with oh Flicker as well on the on word, but that's only on to Lucian QT. Oh, he's going to be able to free hit right now with the debut is passion. But Bray is there. He's standing in the front, acting in the front liner. Stun coming in with the Raging Storm. Oh, my goodness, Roy. Almost found a massive Astro Spear in the back. Now Fei Yan trying to do some damage with Thorn Rose, but Oki has the Hot Claws. He's healing back up. Roy is massive, and he finds another hit onto Mok, forcing him back and giving RSG such an open space to siege the space to it down. Admittedly, I will say that Roy is just completely ignoring the frontliners, right? Even though it is lined up, even the frontliners don't want to take it. They're moving out of the way. I don't know, but Mok is uh, he's having it rough. He hasn't died a single time, but at the very least, he's going back to base consistently. Let's take a look at the player heads ahead here from Oki and Benny. Oh, oh, Oki! Wow. <laughs> oh my god! They're playing oh. Speed Shooter right now! Oh! Oh my goodness gracious! Wow. Oh my lord! Oh, that was beautiful. Oh my god, that was the combo we were waiting for since Novaria got released and we got to see it here, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> right as we were you know, talking about the head-to-head, -head, Oki responds, he's like, no need. Take that off the screen. Oh, replay, replay. We got to see that Give again, Give us a replay. Right? Give us a replay. Meteor and Snipe coincidingly going head-to-head -head with one another. Okay, That ball. was so much damage and we're going to get it here in slow-mo. Look at them time it together. They open it oh. up, open up the map, and instantly, pop, pow! Oh my god, that was perfect! Oh, they literally released it at the same time. It's just projectile speed, but now, Lord. Well, I don't know if Phoenix can even contest for this. They're getting poked down from so far away, and guess what? Lucian Cutie is doing such a good job at zoning Feyyan away. Had the execution still coming down. Bray! Oh, he loses it! Feyyan! We'll be able to find it. Diablo forced to regen, but the team fight goes to RSG for now. Jax is caught all alone, isolated from his team. Diablo is looking for the Raging Storm, but can't just find it! No way. Okay, Benny just respected that. He flickered mm -hmm. out. He knows something was coming. Yep. And notice how everyone's just stacking behind him, making sure that no other skill shots get hit. What? How? That's on Royal Melt, Gideon. Yeah, I thought he had items. He's level 15 as well. What is he building? What's going on? That's Navaria, bro. No. I, I, there, he's got to have some kind of MR here. Never mind, never mind. Oh. An upcoming fight. Oh, okay, Royal Milk. Oh, he flickers up, but he's going to fall due to the mural. Look at Roy on the back, finding the angles as Oki just deals with the front. Feyan is down. Benny is next. Raging Storm. Benny's able to escape. What is free? Oh, my goodness, Roy. Once again with a snipe from downtown. RSG, they are not just winning. They are making a statement with game number one.
Now it's gonna be the mini waves. They're waiting for it. Phoenix are desperately trying to cling on to just the clear that they have, but Mock is continuously just getting bursted down. 20 seconds on Fei Yen. Will they be able to do it? Royal Milk trying to do what he can right now. Defendant's Rage will lock him down with Divine Judgment. Mock in the back. Gonna be targeted down by Diablo, who is ultimately gonna fall, but with three mini waves crashing down. Singapore have risen. Kings of SG MLB be strike first in this best of three against their Burmese respectives. But wow, what a game by RSG Slate. Even from that early game, they were already very oppressive when it came down to those rotations. They hit their power spike and things just went so badly for Phoenix after. That was a disgusting game. I know we were like, okay, some of these matches are gonna be a wash, Echo versus Evo, but this one I think takes the cake. Not even an opportunity to come back. And when you think, when Feiyan takes that Lord, yes, this could be it. No, RSG do not let them escape freely. They take heads on spikes before they get back to their base. If we're judging it just based on game number one, RSG, is the best team in this group. Evo struggled against Phoenix. This was a one-sided stomp. This is, I, I don't know what to say anymore, right? Like, I'm trying to figure out a way, how do you analyze that? Maybe just don't get hit by a skill shot, right? <laughs> like, what can I say about this? Just dodge, bro. Just and dodge, like, bro. And like, again, those, those, those spheres, they don't hit easily. No. It's not an easy skill to hit, and yet, I want to know like his percentage rate on how many times he got that compared and plus in combo with those snipes that landed as well from the Beatrix. That was a sight to behold and that is damage. A new combo perhaps coming forward in MSC. It's one of those I things. I think it's time to just give it time to rest, right? It's like, oh yeah. my god. I, I'm just thinking about that play again. It's just like, that was beautiful. That was absolutely a beautiful play. Roy with the snipe and the combo in together. I think that's the best Navaria we've seen so far, right? I really, and that's what I was waiting for, mm -hmm. really. Especially on a pro player's hands, that performance, that sold me on it. Navari's broken, you just need to be good enough. <laughs> you just need to hit it at max range all the time, and that's something that Roy was able to consistently do. But you know, speaking of which, I saw Navari get put in ever since it became legal for tournament rooms through SPS, and I thought maybe one day somebody's gonna land this combo. We saw many different variations, but unfortunately, I think this has to be one of the cleanest ones we've seen so far, and I think it's only gonna get better from here on out. What I will say though, is that not only were the skill shots utilized very, very well, and they hit the right places at the right time, but the fact that it opens up the map, and especially when you're double checking those buffs, double checking two bushes at once, depending on your position, then you have more than enough information to make the smarter choices in your own macro gameplay. And it's interesting, right? Because once again, Novaria is, there's two ways to play it. We've seen it as Rome, we've seen it full damage in that mid side, but either way for this game, it is going to receive the MVP in the hands of Roy. And this is a full damage build. Earlier on, we saw some steel leg plates. Earlier on, there was uh, even Rome built in as well, but going full damage, I think that's the way to go. And going Mystery Shop, we usually see mm -hmm. some more like Magic Worship or even Impure Rage on this hero. The fact that he was able to hit this Power Spike this early, I think that really sold the, the game. I, I totally agree with you, and especially when you're up against someone like Farsa, I think mm -hmm. it's great when you're thinking about scaling faster than her rather than trying to compete with her damage. And considering how oppressive this matchup was, and the fact that they were utilizing the Astro Recalls, and especially her ultimate as well, to double check certain areas to not second guess the call, I think, you know, St. Lucas, he did a good job with the team kind of maneuvering them in this particular position and setting the protocols uh, very, very nicely. And this helps when Kuja steps in, he doesn't have to do too much work. It's all about the fine tuning. Again, I just really, I'm waiting for that moment again. I just right. really want to watch it again. We already got a slow-mo clip of it, but oh. Oh, here it is. Ooh. Oh, uh. you know what? It was the ultimate as well. That mm -hmm. bigger yeah. hitbox, that... Oh, it was amazing. It's it's a, it's a oh sight to behold, God. right? Oh, oh my God, Roy, stop, Roy! No, one yeah. more time, one more time. Just 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 one more for, <laughs> for the crowd. All right, there you go. Oh, hit jacks. <laughs> oh, but it's nasty, right? Like I, I feel like if we had to calculate the number of times Mock got hit by the Astro Recall and he had to recall uh, on top of that man, then I'm realizing the names now is very coinciding. Astro Recall forcing you to recall. recall yeah. 
Mobile Legends, Munton, we see what you did there. And it also stops recall. It also does as well. I mean, there's too many things to really they keep hate recalls. in mind. They really do hate <laughs> recalls, but the draft was great from the side of RSG. Coach Kuja did a great job here. Phoenix, you can definitely see the bigger picture not actually coming together, especially with the Edith pick. If you look at the items, nothing too out of the ordinary. And even when we look at Lucian QT, he's greening out. He's like, okay, I just have to worry about Farsa. I'm going to get a fleeting time as early as I possibly can and continue the oppression. I don't know why, but I feel like Phoenix Esports, I think they underestimated the backline of RSG, right? I mean, from their draft, there was only... Okay, you could say Lancelot, but Edith was the one who should have been able to do that. But I don't know, going Edith, it feels 50-50. Are you going for damage or are you going for CC? If CC, maybe not Edith. Yeah, I think also to add on to that, I really feel like Phoenix uh, didn't really care too much about those winning lanes because they picked up the Uranus first. I thought it's to set up Benny for a proper winning matchup, mm -hmm. but they picked up Carry into a Beatrix as a last pick. Mm -hmm. Yep, I totally agree with you there. I think when it comes down to identifying what is your strong and weak side, it became very difficult considering that RSG was kind of splitting up their forces and making sure that all the movements were either known or were stopped before it even began. And I think that's the great thing about Novaria, right? Getting that information allows you to do that, but also Diablo on this collision pick, wins out his lane no problem, makes it not only difficult for Mox to actually pop that Feathered Airstrike comfortably, but more importantly, just the quick follow-up of people who've been caught. Benny, for an example, Jex, even if he gets hit by the Divine Judgment, at least you don't have to just rely on Oki to finish off the kill. Three winning lanes, essentially, is what mm -hmm. they had to play with. And Again, it just shows 20 to 5. They were able to completely snowball. We were concerned a bit, right? Late game, Phoenix, or not even late game, mid game is where Phoenix actually find their uh, power spike, that mid game power spike. The fact that that mid game never hit for them is just such a massive blow because from the items, they actually got, well, for especially Benny, he got most of his items already and he actually chose to go for the attack speed boots here. So, also, just no respect from the for the Novaria. Mm, well, I mean, we did see the Athena shields, right? But when you see Novaria already at six items at that point, and on top of the fact that it's consistent damage that comes out, every six seconds, expect to get hit by it from far away, you lose out on the value of the continuous magic damage. In those situations, you might even consider that a Twilight Armor might be more cost efficient than the Athena shield in these certain positions. Because again, let's keep in mind, it's not just the magic damage you have to worry about, it's mm. even Oki Sniper as well, yeah. which was doubling up the damage. Okay, okay, okay. With that in mind, right, we are going to take two he Mickey right now. So in a moment, we're going to take to the interview. So ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you after the interview. Welcome back, guys. So now we have an interview with the students. So please introduce yourself. My name is Cloan. I'm Sorry? I'm Okay. I'm uh, so Niran. Niran, okay. I'm Wow. So your name is Niran and your name is Seoul. Yes. It's like Seoul in Korean, right? Yes, it is. Oh. <laughs> okay. So I might have some questions to you guys. I might have some questions to you okay? Okay. okay, so the first one, which school do you go to? What course are you studying right now? Uh, okay. So you study at NTTI and Electric, right? Wow, cool. Nice. How about you? Uh, so I'm studying at NTTI and Electric, right? Wow, cool. Nice. How about so young, right? Yeah. Like me, okay. But uh, okay. Some naughty B. How did you find out um LBB workshop that happened on May twenty seven? Uh, I found out it on uh Nick Level Entertainment. Nick Level Entertainment. How about you? Me too. Him too. Yeah. Also, like, like, too right. Oh, okay. So you find out on the next level pick, right? Yes. Okay. So the next question: Why do you like um LBB esports so much? Uh, because it is famous in Cambodia and I like to play it too. Oh, so you like to play it too, right? Yeah. Okay, how about you? Uh, so you like to play it too, right? Oh, so you have a lot of friends playing Mobile Legends, right? Yes. Okay, so you have a lot of friends playing Mobile Legends, right? Yes. Okay, so the last question, who is your favorite eSports player? 
Uh, my favorite e sport player is Lemon. Why? In our show. Uh, because I like his play style. His play midland is as well like Kagura. I like his Kagura play very much. Wow, nice. Okay, how about you? For me, my favorite player is Seon. Yeah, why? Like, actually, he is from Cambodia, right? Yes. Okay, why? Can you explain? Um, I don't know. Uh, I. Like you just like like he also drive he can play he can drive yes, something yes, yes. like that right yes okay thank you so that's all guys so thank you for the question thank, thank you sure. for the answer okay okay so now all done thank you you guys so let's pass back to the caster can we rewind to what Gideon said before we threw it to her other Mickey our host mm-hmm mm-hmm. Would you like to address it? Would you like to replay the no, clip no, no. one more time? <laughs> I'm going to allow you to, you know, repeat it. Oh, I love Mickey as our host. She's great. She's really, really great. And obviously there are times where it's like, ah, you know, a little low energy, but behind the scenes, great person and taught me a lot of Khmer as well at the same time. So I'm very thankful for that. John Ripsur. John. <laughs> what does that mean? Hello. 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 Yes. Or you could say Sus Day. That's the casual way of saying it. Man, how does Miracle pick up the language so fast? Yeah, I know. Is it because he's young? It's I mean, I am young, but the, most of the words I learn, I can't say here. <laughs> <laughs> let's right. not do that. So. Let's, let's not hurt ourselves yeah, let's any not. further. Now, let's talk about the important things. Top three cutest boys right now. <sighs> let's go. <laughs> well, well, I think for, uh, for us, mm -hmm. there's going to be like a... There's a longer list because for Eterna, I think it's she's tunnel visioning on a lot of players recently. I, like, I mean, we don't even need to talk about number one. I mm -hmm. think everybody knows who's number one in her books. Oh yeah. But last game, I we we kind of uh, connected the dots here. She was only it's talking about true. two players. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. I just want to say that that's not true. The, well, I mean, would you like to come up with a f okay. full statement here? Look, look, the <laughs> background story of RSG. You can you can you can ask our production team. Mm -hmm. They highlighted Diablo and Bray, which is why I highlighted Diablo and Bray. Okay, okay. it's in the sheets. Stop. Okay. Read okay. the sheets. All right, no worries. Okay. okay, we'll leave we'll leave it to that for now until we see Bray or maybe Diablo make some kind of sick play and maybe just maybe we might hear. I have the, to throw uh, it to her for the play by play if one of them makes the play. Uh, who guys. knows? She might just take it from you. Yeah. You know, let's focus on the second game, shall we? <laughs> Remember that Phoenix needs this, okay? They need this series, yeah. or they might just be eliminated from the tournament. You it's know, done. Like, if they get, if they lose here, 2-0 or 2-1, it's done, right? The stakes are extremely high, in a matter of fact. And the thing is, we haven't seen the substitutes actually come in. They are still sticking with the main lineup, but I think they recognize that, yes, the draft was a big problem. It looks like RSG was hyper-prepared for us this time round. We need to start changing it up. Where is Simple? Where is PX7? The, the, uh, one of the reasons as to why they were so strong, how they were able to beat Falcon, was because of this full seven active roster. Mm -hmm. We rarely see a seven active roster, right? I Usually agree. there's a main five. Here, there's three main, the uh, main three, and then two people just swap. So I'm I'm really curious as to know why Simple and PX7 haven't been given the chance to play at MSC here. That's the thing, right? Uh, like Leo mentioned, I think he put it perfectly, where it's different variations of the Phoenix lineup that uh, it unlocks different play styles. And I think that's what we're, we should expect against RSG. Like, they've already lost the first game. This is the best of three. This is their last chance. If they can even out one-to-one, -one, then maybe there's another opportunity. But even then, it's still a very tight road. Look, do they even want to risk it at this point, right? They've already stuck with this main five. If they swap it once again, it could cause issues. It could be great, but it could cause issues. And they are in a corner right now. They can't lose another game. Otherwise, once again, that's their tournament lives. That's a good point. It is a good point. I don't know, but let's say, Miracle, that you were in the position of Phoenix, right? And especially when you have an amazing player like Benny having only picked Beatrix Almost three games. QT. Um, Almost QT, but with a killer instinct with a total of 12 total kills in three games. This man is a KDA monster. How do you unlock him now? You got to get him into a winning matchup. I think that's one of the key... Elements? Elements, as mm. to how you make this work, right? Benny, I think was a standout for me in the game against EVOS Legends yesterday. His spacing, his positioning was always on point, even when he was in a losing matchup. And even here, I would say it's mostly true. In this game, he was caught off because of uh, Roy and uh, 
We don't need to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. we've mentioned yeah, yeah, that yeah, way yeah. too many times. But yeah, he was in the right position. He was just getting shot by uh, from different angles that mm -hmm. you know he didn't even know where it came from. I wouldn't know. So again, set him up for greatness. Put him in a winning matchup. You have the last pick in the second phase for a reason. I thought that was what they were going for. Play for whoever is doing the best. And for Phoenix, I think it's undeniable that it's it was Jax and Benny. Now it's Benny. Okay, and to be honest, Beatrix and Carrie are his signature picks, are mm -hmm. his power picks, but he's also good at APC. So being last pick, it should have given you the flexibility. Exactly. And you should use that as a potential to get that winning lane, like you mentioned, instead of being strict mm. to one particular hero. And it's confusing as to why they went for the carry, seeing as he does have the hero pull to explore different heroes. In that game particularly, I don't think uh, it was viable to go for another magic damage because they already had a Farsa, Uranus, and Edith, right? It was just the Lancelot and it wasn't building full damage, uh, full physical damage, so it wouldn't have been really balanced there. Easy to counter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I do agree, a lot, big hero pull. He could have just chosen one other hero, maybe even a Brody. Heck, a Brody would have been yeah. better. Here's the thing, here's the thing. When all else fails, what do you fall back to in terms of a marksman? You always fall back onto the Claude because he is going to be the Swiss Army Knife. And I think as of right now, with the way that the draft is working, and especially with you know everybody's guns pointed in many different directions, nobody is really letting these picks through. So I think even if he did have the Brody, would that have made enough of a difference here? I personally don't think so in comparison to something like Claude, where it doesn't matter necessarily. You could look to play on multiple sides of the map, and the very least with Claude, you can get in and out of these fights whether it's a weak or strong lane. And I think that's what they need right now, right? They need some level of consistency. They can't just put all their eggs in one basket. And you know, technically the Claude can also deal damage to the backline that was annoying from the side of RSG. Like can running down it. Novaria. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously Beatrice, it can be a little bit tough. Tricky. You will need to have that winds of nature, but at the very least, you can have that option. A lot of solutions to the problem, right? I mean, a lot of opinions, potentially. But the thing is, I think RSG just played way better. Mm -hmm. Now, Singapore hasn't really been a powerhouse in terms of, you know, power rankings in the last few international tournaments, but I think now that was a statement. That was a cold statement from RSG SG. They're here not to just participate. They're here for the trophy. They're here to be contenders because Phoenix, number one, Myanmar. Myanmar is considered to be the third, fourth best region in the world right now after mm -hmm. M4. Yeah. Yep. It's it's interesting to see how things are shaking up here at the Land of Dawn, especially with the evolutions of these teams. I'm more surprised. Well, I want to hold my statement back just a little bit because number one, RSG in particular, it could be a Malaysia situation where we're good in groups, uh -huh. we're terrible in knockouts. It might be the same case here because let, let, let's keep in mind, how many times are you going to be able to be hyper prepared for a draft? This was cold and calculated from Coach Kuja. Props off to him, but how many times do you think it's really going to work in these best of three scenarios? This is going to be the limit test here in game number two for RSG. And if they go further than that, if they even make it to a best of five, how much do they have in their arsenal to really take it away? And we'll see what exactly are the changes coming in from Phoenix here for the next upcoming battle against RSG. One more life to go until their tournament lives are at risk. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome you to the drafting phase of game number two between Phoenix as well as RSG SG. Seems like there's going to be a swap here as Phoenix with the first pick, RSG with the second, and they go for the Valentina and the Wan Wan. This is a great idea. I mean, starting things off to make sure to change it up, just go on to the opposite side, get that first pick I in as soon as possible, right and at least we get to identify what RSG has prepared for uh, second pick. Man, I wish I could say colors, but I have to say first and second because the color coordination is just not there today. I'm trying to think again of like a solution here. What do they want to go for? They tr they swapped sides, but again, their first pick, it's been Lancelot. Even yesterday against Evo's Legends, it was the Eve actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was Lancelot or Eve. Now, RGSG banned the Eve in the first phase last game. 
I think they should just do the same thing again. I think the Yeeve gave uh, Mox so much stability in the... Oh, it's PX7 and Simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. what? Yeah. There you go. They Produ swapped. Production didn't give us a heads up. They wanted to surprise us right here, right no, now. They were like waiting. Let's let's wait till the casters notice. Let's They'll see how long it takes. <laughs> They'll never see this one coming. <laughs> the fact that they're banning out Navarro, there is going to be a lot of respect. But let's keep in mind, the Valentina is gone. So banning out the Yeeve is going to jump up in priority. The Farmers has been kind of left out out of the pool for a majority of these games because artillery may just absolutely shred through that temp HP and also because of the buff, uh, buffs and nerfs, mainly nerfs for the farmers. Unfortunately, Among we come the to the last couple of seconds. There we go. The Eve gets banned out. Phoenix, let's see this start. Are you going to give Fei'an the Lancelot once again? I think they might want to do that again, no? What Lancelot. other options do they have? They can go for the Fredrin right now. Fredrin? I mean, the Fredrin works here. I would say it works because RSG SG play a very mean Fredrin, and they can actually flex it to both sides as well. Uh, very good flex pick. So with Phoenix here, I think the you know main win condition has to be around PX7 and Simple. Again, it comes down to the main trio mid now because. Okay, well, Arlet, something that I completely forgot about here in game number two because it was banned out in game number one. Yep, but difference here for Phoenix. When they played with uh, Mock and also with Jax, they go for duo mage. Kind of like the Edith and yes. the Yeeve. Now Agreed. with Simple, he's more of that standard roamer. He goes for the initiator picks, goes for the uh, pickoff picks as well, but mainly initiators. Mainly initiators, and this is why Arlet's a little scary, right? We have seen a couple of teams actually do this, putting him in the EXP or even switching up and throwing him into the roam. And yes, he is a okay, I would say he was an okay roam. He's basically a stun bot and sticks on you quite easily, especially with the Demon Marks. But then we come back to RSG side. How do they think about the situation? I'm guessing that Fredrin Ooh. might come into play here, but instead it's going to be the Lancelot as well as the Kadida. They're expecting Phoenix to try and go bold. Oh, I like this too. The instant, the instant choice here coming from Phoenix is going to be the Faramis, right? So even if they want to go for the Wombo combos, this Faramis can cause a lot of miscalculations coming in from RSG depending on how their compositions ban out. But look at this, Bray does have a comment. I feel like bringing the championship to MSC means a lot to the local people because now MSC for Singapore has only one spot and it's quite pressuring to play because people from the local scene expect better from us and we don't want to disappoint them. Can relate, can relate. <laughs> As Malaysian, you know, our brothers over there, we salute you guys. Well, with the Beatrix pick here, it certainly is still RSG SG with a better side matchup in the gold lane. Yeah. The Fairness is a very interesting pick with the Arlen as well, because the Arlen is still a good flex pick, but so is the Fairness technically. I haven't seen Simple play this Fairness role, mm -hmm. but it is still a possibility that they might want to go and try. Here's the thing, I don't mind the fact that Faramis is available considering that Kadita is around, right? Now you can't get one shot, you can walk away with at least a majority of your HP. It's all fun and games, right? But the real question is whether or not it's going into the support. With double flex picks from the side of Phoenix, it's going to be a little difficult to predict what the draft is going to be. Hopefully Kudra has done his research well enough and they're immediately going to start banning out uh, banning out the Fredrin as a starter because that's something that Phoenix is lacking right now. A hard front line. As much as you want to make sure that, yes, Arlet can technically built into that tank segment, you won't be able to cover every single angle. I don't know, for me personally, I do agree with you. I think they do need a front line, but I think they need more engaged, to be honest. Sure, they have the R line with the final slash, but I just really like more engage. I think that's what they were lacking from game number one, mm -hmm. to be able to have a say in how those team fights went down against RSG. But now we do see the Alice being banned out as well as the Joy. That is a super good choice by yep. RSG. Actually, they have done their homework, and you can see it on, on Phoenix. They're, they're like, oh my god, they know that Alice would have been perfect here, I would actually think. Alice or Fredrin, some sort of utility jungler that, uh, that Feyan is comfortable with. And with Lancelot now already taken away, with the Fredrin band down and the Alice, those are his three main heroes. Mm -hmm. And they're also making sure they're locking in the Kufra, expecting that possibly we might see a Fanny from the side of Phoenix as well. They are covering every single angle here. You can tell on the players' faces and even the coaches that, wow, they have done their homework. There's a very different air around RSG side compared to Phoenix. Oh my god, what is he going to play? At this point, what yep. can you play in the is jungle, Bauman right? Is Bauman okay? Is the Bauman? Okay, Kai. Kai. Oh. Minotaur. 
Okay, okay. I mean, I, I said engage, but mm -hmm. I didn't really think Minotaur. I mean, this is now from a composition of let's pick people off, let's look for opportunities. No, we're going to team fight. We're going to go all or nothing here. RSG, on the other hand, when we're looking at that team fight, they are a little ultimate dependent. And if we compare the alts, stack these five alts against the four alts that we see here from RSG, I think Phoenix should technically come up on top, with the only exception that the majority of their damage is coming from Benny. So that's a lot of eggs in one basket. And we might even see something crazy come out from the side of RSG. I'm looking at Badang. If they one-shot carry, that's a huge problem. You can also go Minsethar. Oh my god, it's the Badang! Diablo! A mad lad! He's a demon for a reason. You called it, Gideon, but... Badang on the MSC stage. This is a first. This is a first in a long time. Badang rarely ever sees international play. It is a local hot pick for RSG, and it is respected amongst the Singaporean and professional league. But now, coming into the international stage, and especially with the perfect situation where all the eggs are on Benny's shoulders, he is the sole damage dealer for the side of Phoenix. And if he dies to a one-shot Badang, which is very likely to happen, this game is going to end fast. How does it do against the Arlet in that lane, though? Oh, it does terribly. <laughs> yeah, that's why I was like, you know, maybe, maybe we, we might not see that. But, ladies and gentlemen, the Badang might just be what they need to send Phoenix home all the way. But for Phoenix, it's now or never. Everything relies on game number two. Phoenix versus RSG. SG. All right, let's jump right into it, right? Instantly, we're seeing some early trades in that mid lane, but Royal Milk has a lot of work ahead of him. Half the time, he has been playing the weak side of the map. Now, he must play strong side. He must dominate this lane and make sure that this Badang is unable to hit his two-item power spike before Carry is able to achieve a Winds of Nature. Yeah, otherwise, it's going to be disaster, right, for Phoenix. And this is, this is good. This is good. They do have a lane to work with. Quite different to what we saw in game number one, but this mid lane is what I'm a little bit curious about, right? I don't think that the Kadita has the best oh, clear. Early rotation, Diablo already forcing the Purify, that's Ooh. first blood for the Badang. He doesn't do good in the 1v1 duel in lane, but it certainly does do good in ganks. Perfect execution so far of this early game. We should QD though, gonna be targeted down by Phoenix. Oki's forced to try to help, but Feiyan was really holding on to that ultimate. Now that's what I wanted to say, right? I don't think the Kadita has good clear compared to the Faramis, so that's why the Badang went up, but look at this. There you go, the heavy spin, it was saved, and it was saved for this. Oh, okay, I was holding my breath there for a second. But no, I totally agree with you, right? Again, you need an enabler for this Badang. You can't expect Badang to just show up and do the job, and especially Especially since his battle spell is far more valuable than any of his abilities in his kit. Besides his ultimate, of course, but let's keep in mind, right? I was expecting to see Phoenix to instantly try to go for maybe something a little funky, right? Throw their support into the mid lane with uh, their mage to come walk up through their side and get an early kill, or maybe at least put Arlen in a, uh, sorry, put Badang in a life deficit against the Arlen. See here, already some emphasis here in the bottom lane. It feels like once again they are trying to play through that EXP lane, but they have to be careful as Bray already on the next objective. <sighs> oh, Royal Milk with the final slash is able to deal some damage right now. That's gonna be the minion Fury, but oh, it's Fayette who wins it out. Bray's gonna be slain. Roy now looking for the breath of the ocean. The rough waves as well. The heavy spin does not connect onto him just yet, but it's still gonna be pinned down. And that's Royal Milk with some damage with the vengeance. One more hit, but Roy is able to escape just barely here. They will convert this though. We will expect to see Phoenix. Oh wow, trying to turn it around here. No kill should technically go through, but you can see that Royal Milk, he's hungry for it. He wants somebody to make that first mistake. Okay, well they're going at it again. Tower Revenge and the Rage. Simple is down and Diablo picks his second kill up. Now that's disrespect. That one is 100% disrespect. You shouldn't be walking up that close, especially against a Badang. And like, you don't have the information whether or not he's actually used his ultimate, so Clearly, there's a little bit of uh, maybe misplays kind of happening right now here in the early game, but it's still too early to tell. Three minutes in, Benny already with a Corrosion Scythe. Is that a good thing or a bad thing for the Beatrix right now? Hmm. I think for now, Beatrix should be fine, right? She's not going to participate in a majority of these fights. It's just how we see 
Ray. Ooh. Okay, he's fine. He's fine. We're not going to see it escalate further than this, right? Now, coming back to it, Benny, he's going to be stuck in his lane for a very long time. And as long as this Beatrix is stuck with him, that's great for Phoenix. That is the main idea. If they're looking for ways to punish, they might be able to look for potential invades. But generally, th these neutral objectives are going to be extremely important for Simple. Okay. Well, for both of these teams, again, they're just playing it really passively with no neutral objective. Mm -hmm. Bottom lane, there's a little bit of a dive or a gank attempt, but Diablo's playing this really well. He plays this a lot in ranked. So, and again, he went for Master of Assassin's Emblem. This is crazy. He really likes damage. He wants to, he wants to greed out, right? This team enables him to greed out. His job isn't simple, though, right? Let's keep in mind that PX7 does have that call altar, and it's the one countering it. Well, well, secondary ability to kind of keep his team alive in these tough situations, in these tough spots. Okay, there's a fist crack coming down, down from Diablo. That's a rough wave as well. Royal Milk very low has the final slash. Is oh. able to escape, and that's gonna be the outplay. Roy falls. Royal Milk with the sustain, surviving, and that's going to be more from Phoenix. They want to push this pace even further onto the turtle. That's going to be reset for now. RSG, SG, they have what it takes to keep on going right now. Diablo is going to be able to lock Simple out, but Simple is still able to flicker out of that one with a minion fury already used up. Ray still wants to go for the 50-50 play. That's the retry, and Ray wins what? it out. Heavy spin doesn't pin him down. Ray with the fast hands gets out with a puncture. Dang, I can't tell if he hit level 7 first and then Retribution, or he hit level 7 after he got it pre-7. Uh, pre really nicely done coming in from RSG. Now, let's keep in mind that Phoenix, they want RSG to make that first move. They want to look for the counter engage. That's why the uh, Minoan Fury and as well as that final slash are such high priority ultimates to have on top of the call altar, but that's more of an insurance policy more than anything else. Potential dive on top side. Good revenge and the range. Lock and simple down. Thorn Rose doesn't need it. This is the Biru who picks up the kill. Roy now just buying some time, distracting the back as RSG SG trying their best to again just siege down this turret. It's a 1v1, Fayan and Branch just a little bit there, but Oki will be able to complete that BOD, a power spike for this Beatrix. Lucian QD forced to use that flicker already because of PX7 bringing it back. Mm -hmm. RSG are just playing to their game plan, right? Unlock this Beatrix, start taking down these tier one turrets, and then repeat of game number one. That is their general idea. That's how the siege works. Yeah, with how both of these teams have kind of, you know, comprised themselves, have drafted themselves, I feel like RSG, they want to step on the paddle with the reason be being that if they clump in 5v5, I do think Phoenix has a upper edge and an advantage when it comes down to those team fights because of the resources that they have and the amount of damage that they're able to output when there's not really much of a front line coming in from RSG, which is why you can see here Roy Diablo always very active, looking for ganks, looking to create the 5v5 to be uneven so they can actually win something on the map. Another thing to keep in mind here is the secondary objectives that these teams can actually start playing for, right? I'm expect. Oh no. Wow. Good okay. read from Lucian QD, yeah, forcing pure. the Purify. Yeah, he gets the Purify out of him, so that that's going to hurt for this upcoming turtle. Let, let, let's see, right? Again, RSG, again, mo a majority of them don't have their ultimates, and we can expect that Diablo doesn't want to rotate as early as possible because Arlet, he's got first move, and now this is going to be a full 5v5 in just a little bit. Oh, we used the rough waves already now. Oh, that's going to be the re-engage from Royal Milk. Roy, oh, oh flicker no. burn from Diablo. Well played to Royal Milk there, and even the Retribution goes to Fei Yan with a 50-50 play. Bray isn't able to win that out. Now with Puncture, brought back by the Shadow Stampede. Both teams just engage, and RSG are only sitting at a very, very slight gold lead. That was a good, that was an interesting play coming out from RSG's side. They knew Arlet was moving out. They wanted to try and punish him off that rotation, and now Lucian QT has been sitting on this top side to ensure that this Beatrix isn't going to get dive. Royal Milk starting to scale up fast, but remember the secondary objectives, right? It's about the junglers who can fight for these neutral objectives, because eventually the Lord is going to be the main win condition for both Phoenix as well as RSG. If they can get that level lead on their jungler, therefore, they should have an easier time to actually secure these neutrals. That's revenge and the rage. Once again, Lucian just really hates simple there. With the minute, they're able to pick him off. Oh. And now with retribution as well, Roy's going to be pinned down, and it's going to be a trade. One for one. Romer for a mid laner. Hmm. Or both mid laners, actually. No, Romer mid, yeah. Yeah. Right now, okay, he's doing... Again, this is the same motions again and again and again. And I think, you know, Phoenix, they need to recognize this. There is some mythology to RSG's madness. Yeah. Royal Milk getting engaged on Diablo. I don't think he's going to be in range to actually do some more. But this dynamic duo is in the bottom lane right now. And 
Honestly, RSGSG still have more map pressure. I mean, it's, it's been eight minutes of the game. Mm -hmm. So much has happened already, so much action, but it's still 3-4 and no turrets have been taken down just yet. So I think there needs to be a little bit more emphasis when it comes down to these objectives. Sure, turtles have been taken, but what can they do with it, right? The Beatrix has yet to find a turret either in the top or in the bottom side. And with a 400 gold lead, which is little to nothing, what differences can we see? Well, here's the difference right here. As you mentioned it, they do a quick cheeky lane swap, making sure that Badang is left alone on that top side. So regardless of who decides to show up there, at least they have an opportunity. Look, bottom tier one instantly down. Good siege for the side of Orange GSG. Still taking it slow. Oh, simple. Jumping in Roy. Oh, he actually went in with the rough waves there. He's going to be slain, but Bandit's Rage will collide onto them right now as Diablo's going to be taken oh. down. Three man Tyrus Revenge, but it only connects onto one with the Rage. Phantom Execution on the back. Ray looking oh. for diving all the way with the Puncture right now. He's going to be knocked up by Simple, and the healing really uh -oh. saved Phoenix. Feiyan coming down with a heavy spin. The Thorn Rose isn't enough to take him out. But Bray will certainly fall. Oki is not able to help his jungler. Mm -hmm. Beautiful play coming in from Phoenix. They timed oh. it well. Okay, PX7, he's still alive. He's still alive. But it looks like RSG, even though they did lose a majority of their members, they're still going to press the agenda. They're trying to slow down this lore take as much as possible. Yeah, I don't think they played that right, right? I don't know what RSG was thinking. They were going in one by one. They were losing bodies left and right. And yet they still tried to commit onto something. But here we go. Oh, that was ah. a close one. Fist crack and rough waves. Good red tree by Feiyan. Timing it well, timing it well, but look at the top side, right? While all this is happening, that slow, just slowing them down for a couple of seconds is more than enough for Oki to actually get the tier one on that top side. Now, the next problem that they're going to deal with is the upcoming Lord push. Once that is done, they go back to their old antiques all over again, and then they repeat the process once more. Phoenix is going to wait for RSG to attack, and then RSG will have to try and bait something out from Phoenix. Okay, Lucian QT is already targeting out. Oh, beautiful Minion Fury to cancel it out right now. But they are going to engage with the Breath of the Ocean. Finds two. Heavy spin instantly with the Call Alter as well, providing the disengage that they need. But Bray, oh, he's dodging away. Oh, the final slash brings him back. Last second. Oh, the Ocean QT comes down with rage. And it's a fist crack. The combo wombo from RSG SG to turn the tides. Oki has the Renner now going for the snipe. All the simple finds it. Roy just needs to look for one. One more shot, but Simple gets out. That was close. That was very, very close. But you have to admit, both sides played that as good as possible. Phoenix, especially with the Call Altar, has an insurance policy. But RSG, even they recognize, OK, yeah. we got to figure out a different way to hurt them, right? What does their insurance policy not cover? I love this. I love that we get an instant replay, right? Because that disengage coming in from Fayan was so well-timed to cancel out that coming in oh, from Roy. Wow. But that wombo combo coming in from Diablo as well as the Kufra, that was what I was looking at, right? Because I saw Diablo's positioning. He was waiting in that bush, and it was just timed so well. They were able to execute it on top of one another. And, oh man, that was just really cool to see. Mm -hmm. And RSG, despite being a little bit shaky there, they have taken back that gold lead. My personal favorite is the adjustment here. Lucian QD decided to actually flicker forward to give them no time to react rather than let it go up full animation because at any point in time, Simple could have just jumped in mm -hmm. front and tanked the full damage or just knock him right up and then waste their time so he doesn't get the maximum potential of the Tyrant's revenge. Uh oh, real-time victory rate doesn't look too good for Phoenix, only standing at a 34% here. As the game goes towards the later stage, do they have a better chance? I think as of right now, Phoenix, they've got the tools and resources to do so, right? The question is, how do they layer it? How do they get it out of RSG? And we, we have to look for these specific conditions. So far, Oki, he doesn't really have to move from his position half the time. So somehow, they're going to need Feiyan to break up the composition of RSG. And then afterwards, layer it with Simple to get his Minoan Fury. And just in case, PX7, he's got the call Altar. Right at the last second, especially if Roy's looking for the one shot. Oh, Diablo's scary. No, Look at that. He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Roy's in the back. Okay. Oh, Lucian QT is giving car. Oh, he still finds the rage. The Venice rage oh! comes down. But Benny is able to flicker out. Sublime reaction time. And just like that, they might have just gotten a little bit of a lead to go for this Lord. It just spawned in the game. Simple helping his team clear out that mid lane. Bray still standing around with Diablo. 
to try to prevent this Lord from being taken away. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be an easy task to do as well, seeing as Roy is still forced to clear that bottom side. And now, this is even more of a disadvantage for RSG. Do you think Bray can pull it off? I mean, they're both level 15. They both have exact same odds. Wait. Final Slash now locking him down. Red Streak wants Bray! No, the snipe. Go on to the back. Royal Milk very low. Alki is waiting in the midst right now. Looking for the render shot right now. The Heavy's busy to be able to lock Diablo down. Taking him oh. down. Alki's still free in the back. Oh Alki! my god. With a flicker forward, finds a triple. Benny's looking for the recall. Feiyan is running to the wrong right. side of the map. Roy tried to open it up, but Lucian QT is walking Feiyan down. He wants to go for it. He wants even a solo kill at this point, and Feiyan will just uh, come to his demise. Take me. I can. I my team can hold out for 40 seconds. Just take me. Don't waste my time. We did this once before. We are not gonna do it again. RSG bringing up Singapore, making the fans believe in something once again. I love when I ask a question, they just instantly answered it. I was wondering if Bray could pull it off with a man at disadvantage, and he was. And look at that Lord marching down in that top side. Benu and Fury, final slash used up, big seven. Okay, was able to thread the needle right now with the cult ultra placed down. Lucia QT still gonna be able to launch the timer's revenge. Good defense from Phoenix right now, able to clear out that enhanced Lord. But RSG are still knocking on the base, looking for more turrets as they go through one by one into these lanes. Finally, we see the winds of nature being purchased by Benny. Now, this could be the time that Phoenix finally claps back against RSG. They've got the utility that they've been looking for, and especially when you are playing attack damage. This could be extremely dangerous for Diablo if he tries to go for the one shot. Oh, oh my god! Right. He's been coming down. Hey, Diablo able to flick around. Will he be able to thread the needle? Answers no. Roy, way too aggressive. Instantly punished for it. Simple. Zoned away with the mirror's passion. Bray still able to escape with the Thorn Rose. PX7. Bring him back. Royal Milk with the stun, with the resets, with the vengeance. Still going at it. Wants to stick on Bray. Phantom execution now by Bray. A clean disengage by RSG, but they do lose their mid lane. Beautiful reaction time coming out from Milk, right? Especially when Royal Milk is able to get the final slash on top of following up with a stun. Lucian QT, do they see him? They do. The Tyrant's Rage, even no heavy spin on Feiyan, but the Call Ultra is ready. Oh. Okay, beautiful position. He's still able to space out oh. the final slash by Royal Milk. Breaks them back. It's a shutdown at Benny. Flickers forward to claim another double. What are we witnessing? We're witnessing a turnaround here. Benny is feeling confident. Royal Milk finally gets to play the game. He's no longer playing the weak side. He is the strong side. Oh my God, 8-1-4 already onto Benny when initially he wasn't online. And like you mentioned, he was waiting for that item coming in through. And Bray Ooh. here might be caught. Roy able to find the angle onto Benny, but no. he locks him in place. Roy gets the pass and back up. He finds a oh kill God, somehow. Benny. But Benny is godlike. This is a problem for RSG. Slate. At least they didn't lose an inhibitor. I think that would have been the worst possible outcome for RSG Slate. Ray is able to clear up the waves. Kadita is able to pull attention away by threatening Benny. Feiyan is dead, by the way. He's got 23 more seconds, and that's the exact amount of time that Phoenix need to buy for him to get back up and make it to the Lord, because RSG, they're gonna look to rush this. Yeah, they're gonna try and capitalize over this, but remember, Benny, they don't have an answer to him because Roy is down. Let's see the creativity they have. Razor getting chunked low, has the Phantom Execution, is able to escape for now, but that's a resource burnt out. Phoenix have used the final slash. Feyan's back up now. Roy's also back up. Lucian QT finds a massive pick. Only on the simple now. It's giving him a fury forward on to the flicker oh! as well. Benny! Oh! It's a 1v1 one one of the gold laners when the Phantom execution comes down. Now it's Royal Milk jumping back and forth with the reset. It's gonna be Feyan with a knock-up as well. Oki gonna be chain CC all the way, but he's still gonna be able to sustain with the house claws. Life stealing all the way. Bray now in the midst of it all, jumping back and forth onto PX7. One more hit. We'll do it! RSG. No way! Slate Singapore! They don't need the Lord! They have wiped Phoenix out! PX7 all alone, buying the immortality, a miraculous play. That's the only thing they can bank on, but it will not happen! The Burmese have fallen! RSG have knocked them out! Respect all and fear none! That is the motto of RSG Slate. And they have proven against all odds that they are able to win against
Phoenix Esports. They have the makings of a champion. They have the building blocks of a true Singaporean. They stand tall knowing that they are above everybody else. They know it and they believe it this time. They're walking out of there knowing that they have made history one step at a time. I love it. I love seeing the development coming in from Singapore because we've witnessed so many international tournaments where RSG have actually participated in and we see the development that we see today. Maybe yesterday you ask us, Singapore is not as competitive perhaps as these other big Titan regions, definitely behind Myanmar, but today they prove us wrong. With that being said, we will be saying farewell to Phoenix Esports from Myanmar, our shining stars after a quite a performance. And more importantly, bringing it almost all the way against a team like Onyx. But it was RSG that puts them out. What a performance once again. RSG SG have placed themselves back on the map. They are finally back. Singapore is back. So wow. excited. You guys are so excited. We've been taking this damage for a very long time <laughs> when we were together as one. So it's good to see them coming back to form. And I, we've been waiting for this. We've been waiting for RSG specifically. They've been a very young team. And now that they're growing and more, more importantly, they are maturing. They are hitting a different level, a different echelon. Wait, so this, like you mentioned before, so this officially means that Phoenix is out. They're out. They're out. They've two got losses. Two losses. All round Robin, two losses. Wow, I did not expect that coming into MSC. I thought at least I'd make it top four. RSGSG or Evos Legends, they can both lose their next match and they can still go through to the next stage. It all just depends on the seeding now. Mm -hmm. That's the battle for number one. RSGSG versus Evos Legends. But again, what a stellar performance from RSGSG. They 2 owed Phoenix. And, and this is a Phoenix who tried to use their seven-man roster. It was PX7 and simple. It wasn't, they answered everything. We were we were mm -hmm. throwing questions at them. Is PX7 simple better? Do they need to play right now? Here, have at it. Nope. Still nothing. Nothing. And it, you know what's cool? Bray said it in the interview, man. Easier than Falcon, he easier says. Easier than But Falcon? he doesn't want to be cocky. I mean, 2-0? I mean, yeah, you know. He talks I mean, the he talk and he walks stuff, the walk. Right? I don't know about you guys, but I think that personally, Bray is going up in my cutest boy list here <laughs> at MLBB. <laughs> but let's look at our MVP, Oki, here coming oh, yeah. up. Big oh, time yeah. on this Beatrix. We were questioning, how are they going to get through the insurance policies of the call altar? And the answer, just have more ultimates, you know? Making sure that you have both Bennett's Rage as well as the Biru's Passion, both AOE high damage abilities can force out each and every one of them. You got to save your Minotaur, no problem, Bennett's Rage. But the rest of your team will fall down person, man by man, person by person to Nibiru's passion. It was literally, in the end, right, it was literally just a battle of Benny and Oki. Mm -hmm. Oki gets a triple kill, Benny gets a triple kill, Benny goes legendary, Oki says, no, shut up, I'll kill you. <laughs> he does. <laughs> yeah, he they does. go in for that 1v1 yeah. and then, you know, the Beatrix came out on top. Yeah. So. This emblem right here, Woo. I don't think it's correct, but it's fine. It's fine. Well, let, we, we'd like to believe that that's what he like to uh, that he took average. Just you know, he was that confident in lane. That's why he got a <laughs> 871 GPM. Yeah, man. Again, it's crazy to imagine that RSG not only had to adapt on the fly, right? They they understood. Yes, there is an insurance policy. We don't know when they're going exactly, how they're going to use it, and more importantly, we are the ones that need to set the tempo, not Phoenix. And that's the hardest part. Teams that play defensively usually get on, go on top. But when you have a draft that's already been planned out, let's look at the highlights here. You can see that. It's very, very clear that some of these motions just happen to repeat itself time and time again. Looking to kill that Minotaur, take away their engagement, though, take away their free team fight capabilities, and then immediately start forcing out the other abilities, right? Bennett's Rage already came out here. Oki is like, I'm totally fine with that. I still have more than enough damage. Switch on over to Nibiru, and now I can start flicking for it. I can start getting really aggressive. You know, I know that, you know, Beatrix was insane, right? Oh but my that God. synergy between the Kufra and How? Diablo, look at that. How do they always find these moments? It's RSG beautiful. are like a walking highlight machine right now. Exactly. 
What the heck, man? Maybe they should consider going into content creation because <laughs> all five of them are just like making highlights here, continuous highlight. YouTube shorts, TikTok, oh, TikTok yeah. reels. Like, just, oh. oh, look at that, oh, look at that. Oh my god. Uh, they don't stop. And I can see where the confidence from Oki is coming from. It's not just him. It's the fact that he's got Lucian QT to back him up. The fact that he's got Diablo as a secondary uh, engager. The fact that he has Ray, a consistent jungler, and one of the cuter boys on the team, definitely bringing him to another level. For sure, for sure. You don't want to counter that statement? No, wait, what? She what statement? No, he, he, I thought you were Diablo. What? I thought you were Diablo what fan What do you girl. mean? They're both, you know, both of them are like kind of the same echelon at this point. No Obviously. comment. Let's focus, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, to the post-game items, maybe. All right. Let's have a look at the post-game items here. And almost immediately, um, it's so disappointing because Royal Milk was in a position where he could finally, finally mm -hmm. play this game. And then he realizes, I don't have the damage. I took tenacity. I didn't bother taking anything else. I'm pretty sure he had the Thunderbell at one point and had to sell it off just to make sure that he survives longer. He is going to be a CC bot, and that's all he is going to achieve because the main damage was coming from Benny, and he had to pray and hope that Benny was going to be enough. And unfortunately, at the end, for every time that Benny was either isolated or taken down this, these two times, it was very difficult for him himself to be that sole source of damage. I think he was very, to be honest, I think he was really comfortable with it. The fact that he only died twice, considering that it's a 70 to 20 kill game, that's pretty nuts. Benny is insane, I'm telling you, right? I mean, give him a good matchup and even a bad matchup here in lane, he's still able to perform, but Man, Oki, not just Oki, the whole team, they made, oh my god, it, they, they were all performing so well, especially Lucian, QD, and Oki, that I completely forgot that they had a Badang. <laughs> like, like, bro, how do you outshine a Badang? Like, that's a Badang pick in MSC, and I, I completely forgot about it because of the plays they were making. To be fair, we did see Diablo make that early first play. First two that, kills. Yeah, the first two kills, but then after that, I think immediately you saw the adjustment uh -huh. from Phoenix. They're like, okay, we need to show some respect. I know we haven't fought against Badang in a very long time, so we're not sure his cooldowns for his ultimate, but we take a step back. If we don't get hit by him, if we don't enable him, we're not going to die. That's the bottom line. Diablo's a Chad, by the way. He doesn't <laughs> care. He's like, Master Assassin, sure, I'll go for full damage too. How about that? Oh, so again, again, taking two categories, mm -hmm. two times in a row, Oki, gold per minute, as well as a damage dealt. I'm looking over at Miracle, top, uh, not top eight yet, uh, does this not qualify for it? Not yet. Ooh, oh, not yet, okay. High standards, Miracle. I like that, because that does mean that RSG still has a mountain to climb even after this, right? Let's remember who else is in their group, okay? That's going to be the big test at the end of the day. But if you look at the overall stats, I think, you know, Phoenix, they played it as good as they could possibly get. And I think the only thing that could have been adjusted is the way the abilities kind of layered upon each other. That final slash was very, very important, but Roy kept forcing it out of him. Well, actually, technically, they've, they've already they already secured top eight. Oh, you're right. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I'm never too mind. used to having yeah. four P teams in a group. Exactly. You're, so, you're correct. No, they are top eight. There you go. It's not even a... No, it's not a... Not a so you're wrong. <laughs> I am wrong. Uh, at the end of the day, I'm very happy that our Singaporean brethren are going to be able to make it a little bit further into MSC, but they still have a mountain to climb. And at least I know they're not going to get knocked out. So the litmus test against Onik is going to be super exciting. I Evos. finally got it. Oh, yes, Evos. Mm -hmm. Yes, my I bad. I finally my understood bad. why you said top eight. Why? No, 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 because I minus 12 with four. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, that's why. It, yeah, uh, I, I had to make little squiggly lines here to minus it because, like, I can't count and listen to them at the same time. Do you? Wait, hold on. Those aren't even numbers. You're, you're no, counting them in sticks. Yeah, it's sticks. <laughs> the camera doesn't even want to zoom in for me. They're you like, this is embarrassing. It, <laughs> <laughs> she's a caster. That's why she's a caster. <laughs> that's, that's why we're ca we don't do math. <laughs> we don't do math. <laughs> but yeah, it's very, very unfortunate for, you know, Phoenix, right? It this is, is the really first is, time. Man. Like, usually we're seeing, they've, oh, they've been runner up to Falcon for so long. They finally made it into the international stage and unfortunately their journey ends here but 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 there's always next year there's always next year yes. and for msc it doesn't end here it so doesn't it do doesn't no there's one more match one more match mm -hmm. all right ladies and gentlemen let's get into the match right now i'm kidding no, we're no, going no. to the break so me eterna mirko as well as gideon we're signing out for a bit see you later
and chain Ain't nothing can stop our restraint We are a force to be reckoned with Destiny, kingdom, and land Battle like Atlas, winning with madness Count us to practice, that is his match As we are the heroes here to slay Never back down, under restraint Southeast Asia have been the conquerors of the land of dawn. But now, new competitors have arisen, hungry to vanquish sea's dominance. Twelve teams will come to battle. Only one can be champion. In this MSC, the 12 qualified teams compete in two stages. First, the group stage, and then the knockout stage. The group stage starts with a draw. The champions of MPL Indonesia, MPL Philippines, MPL Malaysia, and MSC 2023 Myanmar qualifier are placed in Pool 1. All other competing teams are placed in Pool 2. Pool 1 teams will be distributed across four groups. A, B, C, and D. The other eight teams will be drawn randomly into the other groups. Teams from MPL Indonesia and MPL Philippines will not be drawn into the same group, making sure things stay challenging. Each team will fight each other once, with the winner of each match decided in a best of three. Only the top two teams of each group will advance to the knockout stages. As for the knockout stage format, it will be a single elimination bracket with each team fighting in a best of five series. Teams from the same group won't be drawn into the same knockout matchup. There is no second chance. Losing teams are eliminated from the tournament until it comes to the semifinals, where losing teams fight for a chance at third place. But after the semifinals, we come to the grand final in a best of seven matchup. The knockout stages will take place over four days, from June 15th to 18th. No matter which side you stand for, let your voices roar and carry your team as they fight for honor, glory, and victory. Witness history in the making as we see the world this MSC in Cambodia. They flew out hot after their grand finals performance in MPL Philippine Season 10. And here we're seeing the rivalry of a century. The age of the Orcas is now. Echo are your ad for world champions. Echo books their ticket to MST. And the grand finals, a rematch against Blacklist International. A rematch, Blacklist International and Echo taking the rivalry form from season 10. Taking the rivalry continued in M4. Now here we are, the grand finals of season 11. This is destiny moving in a way na parang kailangan pa nila mag-meet. Yung M4 World Championship, nakita natin kung ano yung naging resulta doon, nanalo yung echo, and parang binigyan ng tadhana ng panahon na makabawi yung blacklist or yung echo para ma-insure na sila talaga ang pinakamalakas na Filipino team. Pwede po kami ngayon sa 
alas day na ako kaya po po sa grad file. Ibigay niyo po kami ng clear na pag-iisip and discipline po yun sa gaming sa so, magandang mga kalabas ng pro. Blacklist International will now respect back the Franco and the Kaja. Hanap nila ko eh, no? Hindi ibigay ko ako na Dragon ni Sanford. For the third pick, after kasi nung season 10 Grand Finals, marami ang nagsabi na kaya din na nalo ang Blacklist kasi parang nakubusan ang echo sa kanilang mga pinaong strat. Ngayon parang ang dami! Parang uh, malulunod siya tayo eh. Oh. It's going to be Harry. Okay. Balir. Boss 5. Uh, hindi ganun yung ganda ang ultimate ng isang Balir. So, masasabi natin may chill to play para sa Valentina. Hindi sila kumuha ng ultimate ah. na ganun kaganda yung ultimate. Yep. And at the same time, parang ma-force yung Valentina na real-world manipulation lagi kong kunin ko. Can Blacklist International do the reverse? Pero ngayon, siya atay na masobra na ito. Siya, ni Edward dito, a beautiful switch onto the mid lane. Pero si Cortese hindi ata papayag na walang kabalit. Pero nabitin ang bahagya ng mga ari niyang tawiran doon sa mga minions mula sa mid lane. Nakuntun ba siya? Makikina ba siya ni Carl? Kapun ata. King Wise? Walang retry. Nakawan sila dito ng orange buff. Kaso nga lang siya ay may ipin sa tatlo. Wise dito, may pansalba nga ba si Omoy Pino sa Blazer's Wrath? Sakto yung pitaw! Kaso nga lang hindi umabot yung altar! Oh my Venus trying to zone everyone. Pero look at Sanji! No marap! Ito na nga pasok! King Wise ulit si Yawi! Oh, si Yawi nga talaga maging target nila. Hindi na nga ito makakatakas pa. Tungkol sa real world manipulation. Kaso nga lang natuhog sila dito. Oh my God! Execution! Owl and Oh my Venus will go down! Pero si Edward naman nagahanap na pwedeng ulihin. Nagahanap siya na pwede sa punungan. Pero pwede naman silang umulit pa ng isa. At mukha pa umuha nga talaga. Kaso nga lang si Carl. Sobrang unak. Sobrang sakit, sobrang dulas, lahat na ibigay mo sa kanya! And sasabayan pa! Summon Force the Force, pero ang dunding na sa kanya. Yung pagtulak ni Yawi upang mapigilan niya yung pagtakas ni The Queen. Sinabi na ni Wool, every time na may Dragon, may follow-up na dalawa na hindi mo alam kung skill. Ganon din naman yung Evo Ultimate! Diyan na naman yung Dragon ni Sanford. Talagang mag-push away dito sa members sa Blackest International. Pero si Edward na nakapwesto. So meron silang info. Maaaring silang umabol. Kaso nga lang sobrang top of the card. Aray! Alam niyang wala talaga magpa-burst down sa kanya. Kaya sobrang top of the card kung pumasok. Wise goes down. Nagkakaroon na magandang pwesto si Sanji. Pati na rin ito si Yawi. Subok lumama ng Blackest International. Pero ito yung Dragon ni Sanford. Hahabulin talaga yung mga backline. Pero masyado atang maagang na-pop yung altar. Kaya naman sila ay mapapanish bigla. Wise is down. Wala na yung retry holder. Pero marireset na naman yung Lord. Owl! Ang pasok dito. Kaso ka naman ito lang ngayon si Yawi. Tapos may paamoy-amoy pa. May palagkit-lagkit pa. Pero si The Queen ang magsisave sa kanya. My goodness, go easy. The young gold. Blackest International Day 1. They want the retaliation play. Dito na nagalit ang mga agents. Niglang may mission accomplished. Pasok si Carl this time. Nais nilang dumipensa dito mula sa push na nais gawin ang Blackest International. May ipin nga lang dito si Yue, pero hapulit pa rin naman talaga nila. Paris ang nag-andun yung altar. Pero hindi magiginang para i-save si Yue. Mahiinit ata ang members ng Blackest International. Dito sa mga nagkita, nag-shoot na rin yung mga spells na pwede na sa gabitin sana. So yung echo, may echo sila. Wala yung mga spells, wala yung mga skills. Maaari tayong umarangkada. Okay, and just a snap. What's the play though? Wala ka na may ganito. Si Aul! Si Aul nga talaga ang bibigyan nila. At dito na rin naman yung Dragon. Wala na si Aul. Wala na yung damage na asahan ng Blackness International. Yung echo, sila na ngayon na mag-decide. Direkta tayo sa Lord. Nakapulis na sila sa mid lane. Sakto lang din yung pagpitawa noong Dragon. Tapos yung altar, binitawan na rin. At si Cold Easy, tatagi pa. Paper mapa sa base ng Blackness International. Sakto yung mga tusok. Kaso nga lang, low na rin sila. Pero nakuha nila si Wise. Pero mga pag-region din naman agad. Yung members ng Blackness International. Madedepensahan nila yung Lord. Kaso nga lang, may parating pang minions. Medyo makamal mula doon sa bottom lane. At meron pang kasabay sa mid lane. Will this be it? Will Blackness International manage to defend this? Dahil yung echo, ayaw na naman papigil. Okay, tingnan natin. Then, pasok ngayon. Oh, my Venus. Sabay sa akin, Force naman ni Benicute. Eh. Hahabol na naman sila sa kitain. Mukha mahuling lang din si The Queen. Oh. Pero mabilis pa naman yung Death Timer. Si Immortal, yung pangkala para kay Edward. Nakabangan nila naman kay Inward Manipulation pa. And yung minions sa mga sa pag-ata. Hahabolin na sila ng mga Omga. Pero ngayon, tuloy pa rin ang defensa. Pero ang coach ng Echo ay yung face. Ay, ang iyon ng LPLPA. I came this far, nothing can stop me now. They knock me down, but they can't count me out. 
Ay, ako nga po pala si Sanford Marin Vinoya, also known as Sanford, naglalaro sa Echo bilang explain. Ang favorite kong Evil Baby Hero ay si Yuzong kasi ilang best ko na rin siya nagamit sa mga tournaments tulad sa M4, sa MPL kasi parang isa siya sa mga hero na doon ako sobrang comfortable dahil ano, lakas niya sa lane, kaya niya sumustain and then kaya niya din pumatay sa likod ng mag-isa and ilang best ilang beses na kami nanalo sa hero na to and nung season 11 parang wala wala po ata kami talo sa paggamit ng Yuzo kaya siya po talaga yung pinaka gusto kong gamit oh po 100% gagamitin ko po talaga siya sa MC kahit anong kalaban para po sa akin real life hero ko po is yung parents ko kasi sila po yung ano sumuporta po sa akin nung umpisa pa and hanggang ngayon ano sila po yung dahilan kaya ginagalingan ko ay ako po si Juliet Marin Benuya Uh, mami po ako ni Sanford Binuya. Hello, uh, ako si Jeb Binuya, father ni Sanford. Proud po ako sa kanya dahil uh, mabait na bata, masunod rin. Lahat ng, lahat ng uh, advice namin sa kanya, sinusunod niya. Si Sanford kasi di, di adam ng karamihan na may yain. Tulad uh, nung tuwing nasa last kami, Uh, lay- siya nagtatago sa mga fans na. Uh, nung una, si Sanford, uh, nag-aarchie lang yan nasa bahay dahil nga pandemic. 
akala ko kung ano yung ginagawa niya. And then, uh, nakiki, nakikipaglaro sa mga pro player. Tapos, nung isang araw, uh, Uh, nag nagtap global nga siya tinawagan ako ni Dogi nakukunin nga siya ng sa NXP ayaw man namin pero nakita ko siya gusto niya talagang makapasok sa ano ang larangan NL actually yung sa akin naman talagang tutol na tutol ako sa kanya dahil unang una mababayaan niya yung pag-aaral very important kasi sa akin yung studies other than magdalo siya. Ba- bali, par- parang nag- nagamali ko ng inala dahil pinagkita niya sa akin kung paano siya mag- magdalo sa FPL. And dahil doon, nagkaroon na ako ng kumpiyasa na ayaan na lang siya. Uh, Sampod, uh, ang unang-una yung Panginoon. Uh, huwag mong kalimutang magano. Ano na dangin? Kasi hip time, uh, yung ano mo, yung galing mo, uh, mag-umpiyat sa kalam. Dahil dyan ka, dahil yan ang magdala sa'yo sa tagumpay. Sanford, good luck ah. Uh, galingan mo. Sana huwag kang magbago. Mahal na mahal ka namin ang papa mo. Nandito lang kami parate, laging nakasuporta sa iyo. Ah, uh, pa thank you so much kasi kahit hindi ka naniwala nung una, sinuportahan mo pa rin ako and ano, laging matatandaan lahat lahat ng ano, laro ko para sa iyo. Ah, uh, ma thank you din kasi ikaw yung number one supporter ko and kahit through ups and down, uh, andiyan ka pa rin and then para sa inyo ni papa yung mga laro ko kaya ginagalingan ko. Thank you po pala sa mga sumuporta sa akin simula nung umpisa and mas lalo ko pang gagalingan sa paparating na MSC para makuha namin yung kampiyonato para sa inyo. Hey guys, Rose here from MPL Malaysia. Ako po Sam, the most successful restore. It's Mirko from Indonesia. Good morning, I'm Mickey. Mabibigay ka po siya. Here from California. It's North America's favorite caster here. Salamat sa ala o barakas. Ma kung mula ayon ng magrep. Bahagyan sa hadin ng atubiyak sa mga araw. Sandiablo from IGSG. Ako si Eti. Matag pa tayo talo. Sky TV from Echo Philippines. I'm Yawi from Echo Philippines. I am Raime from Pine Esports. I am from Myanmar. I'm Chma, one of the junglers in Cambodia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Gumbur Mobile Legend El Kareem Manawarin Ahla Ailo Ahla Gumbur Fid Dunia And I just want to tell you guys all to get hype and to get excited for MSC 2023 All the underdogs are coming from across the world to go and compete against the pros, against the favorite Jangan nak aplik untuk taruh jam karena kita nak aplik jam di TikTok Hai mi kenal orang hai TikTok With that being said, hashtag see the world and hashtag roar for MSC Roar for MSC Dan kotor dah buat betul-betul dan langgar semua tiba-tiba betul-betul, alright? Hashtag Rauf MSC Hashtag See The World Kau kamu cakap di sini Roar for MSC and See The World Hashtag Roar for MSC Hashtag See The World GG RG Roar for MSC and See The World And Shark, I know you're hungry for first place Outplay them, outclass them, outstyle them Let's go get them boys Fikir champion asal kita akan kita kezal ni Umur MSC dia kita akan kezal ni See the world roll for MSC. Don't forget to watch us in MSC. I hope you support us on MSC. See the world and roar for MSC. It's time to roar for MSC and hashtag see the world.
boundary and chain Ain't nothing can stop or restrain We are a force to be reckoned with Destiny, kingdom, and land Battle like Atlas, winning with madness Count us to practice, that is his match Just we are the heroes here to slay Never back down, never astray si Tristan Cabrera ang role ko ay tank from Echo Philippines ang favorite MLB hero ay si Chu ginagamit ko siya kasi sobrang ligalig niya sa mapa tapos ang dami niyang skill tapos nakamicro siya tapos ang dami niyang pwedeng gawin sa mga bow siya mga hero tapos yun uh, magagamit ko siya sa MSC basta hindi siya maban yes may possible na gamitin ko siya lalo na favorite hero ko siya so wait nyo na lang favorite hero ko si Chu kasi ang dami niyang nagagawa lalo na yung First skill niya, nakaka-micro, tapos yung madali siya maka-pick up yung sipa niya, lalo na pag hindi naka-purify, so pag na sipa, auto huli, tapos pag may backup pa ng kakambe yun, sure patay. Yung real life hero ko siguro yung mother ko, si mama, kasi simula pa lang dati, sobrang supportive niya na simula pa nung nag-basketball pa lang ako, lagi siya nanonood ng mga games ko, ganun. Tapos nung nag-ML ako, nung una, syempre, again sila, tapos nung naging supportive na siya, Pupunta rin siya doon kahit di niya naiintindihan yung game. Tapos nanonood lang siya. Tapos ayun, ang dami niya rin. Dahil kayo pag-interact din siya sa mga fans namin yun. Hello. Ang <laughs> uh, mensahe ko kay mama, thank you so much sa pagiging supportive simula sa pagbabasketball ko para tapos ngayon sa ML. Love you. Walang anong anak. Uh, I am Marily Cabrera. I'm Yawi's mom. And uh, what you don't know about Yawi is that he is a very generous person, uh, loyal sa friend, at mapagmahal siyempre na anak at kapatid. Pinaka-proud ako sa kanya, sa mga nangyari sa kanya, yung recently na naabot nila. M4, and itong MPL PH Championship na nakuha nila this season 11. This is one of his dreams talaga. And I am so proud of him kasi pinanindigan niya yung, yung dream niya na yun. At pinaglaban niya sa amin actually. Yung hindi ko makalimutan na saya na naramdaman was when nung nanalo sila versus RSG na secured na sila for M4. So, I'm not sure kung na ano nyo pa yun, gumaba pa siya sa, sa, sa stage. Niyakap niya talaga ako. That's when I was so proud of him. Kasi, ayun na, isa sa mga dreams niya yun eh, yung maka, makatungtong sa world stage. Hmm. Basta, lak, lagi ko lang, lagi naman namin sinasabi sa'yo na proud kami sa'yo sa mga na nangyayari sa'yo sa buhay, sa success na nakukuha mo. Basta lang anak, just be humble. Diba? Lagi mong uh, isipin yung mga taong nakatulong sa'yo and always pray na lahat ng, lahat ng gusto mo, daan mo lang sa lasa. Lahat ng challenges mo sa buhay, may it be personal or sa profession mo ngayon sa pagiging pro, pro player mo, lahat ibigay mo lang sa taas. And always believe in yourself, sa teammates mo, and for sure marami pa kayong championship na makukuha, makakamtan. And good luck sa MSC anak. Kaya nyo yan. Yan. Uh, support, salamat sa pag-support na kahit simula nung unang natalo, natatalo, natalo kami. Tapos yun, support na lang ako ako hanggang sa makakuha pa ng maraming championships and more tournaments pa na mapanood mo. Yes, anak. Siyempre. And manalo matalo, nandito kami sa likod mo. Mahal ka na may <laughs>
we bound to enchain Ain't nothing can stop our restraint We are a force to be reckoned with Destiny, kingdom, and lane Battle like Atlas, winning is madness Count us to practice, that is his match As we are the heroes here to slay Never back down, never uh. astray ការរៀបចំទៅខាងស្រាវនេះពិតជាមានក្រៈសំខាន់ថ្ងៃក៏ដូចជាខាង Sama Bigo and also known as Sanji. May support na ang Echo PH. Ang favorite ko pong hero sa MLBB ay si Selena. Kasi po siya po talaga yung nagustuhan ko nung pagkapasok ko nung ML. Parang pinanood ko lang yung mga highlights na gumagamit sa kanya. Tapos yung, yung first skill po niya kasi sobrang daya kasi yung vision niya sa mapa, ganun. Tapos parang support role po talaga siya dati. Tapos yung second skill niya, ano, sobrang daya din kasi pag tinamaan ganun, pwede ka pa magkimpla ng kape. Tapos kung ano na gawin kasi Sure din ka talaga kay Selena dati, sobrang OP niya. Tapos, yun, dun, dun sa hero na yun sa Selena na yun, dun ako na-discover ng mga coach sa MPL. Tapos, kaya ako siya laging gamit kasi yun yung meta talaga dati. Uh, siguro po, magagamit ko siya kung papagamitin po ng coach namin. Ang real life hero ko po ay si, si Papa. Kasi ano, palag, palagi ako nakikinig sa kwento niya sa mga advice-advice. Adv- adv- Tapos, yun, parang... Nahiligan ko rin, nahiligan ko na rin mag, ano, maglaro ng games ng ano. Tapos yun, sinusuporta niya ako palagi. Tapos ano, pagpasok ko nung, ano, sa ML, amateur pa lang ako. Yung cellphone ko, ano, basag-basag. Tapos yun, binila, binila, binila nila ako ng, ano, binila nila ako ng medyo maganda-gandang phone din. Tapos, at kaso, yun, lag pa din. Pero yun, kakayanin para sa, ano, para sa pangarap. Hi, I'm Aaron Ram, uh, tatay ni Sanji. Sanji, ano, hindi siya madamot. Na pagbigay sa mga kapatid niya, uh, lalo sa mga pamilya niya. Si Sanji yung nagturo sa akin mag-ML eh. Uh, Niyaya niya ako maglaro. So, hanggang sa nagustuhan ko rin. Uh, tuwing hapon, pagka uwi ako, hihintay na muna ako. Pakauwi ng bahay bago maglaro ng ML. Hanggang sa sumali kami ng mga tour na may pagpustahan. Tapos yung gamit ng cellphone nun, ano, basag. Uh, iniikot niya yung cellphone para lang uh, magamit na maayos. Nung napunta siya ng PPG, tang tinagaan niya talaga yung, ano, yung pag-grind sa ML. Uh, Toy na, sali talaga ng door namin, practice araw-araw. Hindi siya madali, pero ano, yun nga, sa pagsisikap niya, na gawa niya mag, ano, maging pro player. Uh, sa darating na MSC, uh, gawin lang nila yung pinapakit sila sa scrim nila. Makinig sa coaches, tsaka sa management, tsaka ano, uh, yun, good luck. Sana makuha niyo yung championship. 
Ah, uh, may message ko lang sa ay kay papa ko ano. Thank you kasi nabuhay ako sa London at binuhay, binuhay niya ako tapos ano, sobrang na-inspire talaga ako sa mga kwento niya. Uh, sa mga lahat ng fans namin dyan, uh, mahal na mahal namin kayo and salamat sa pag-support pa sa amin sa ikaw tapos iniimbita ako rin kayo manood sa MSC 2023. Uh, good luck sa amin sa mga mga kalaban namin sa MSC at ipapatunayan namin na pinas pa rin talaga malakas. Big difference. So, uh, the M4 and Pak Machan during the identity crisis, they're not sure how they want to play the game. They're not sure who's going to be the carry, what kind of rotation that we're going to use. Contohnya macam Momo cover lebih daripada satu role, Chiku juga lebih daripada dua role sekalipun di cover. Jadi ini membuatkan pasukan tu terlalu boleh saya katakan uh, sedikit bercelaru, hilang identiti. Lapun digugurkan ketika ini sedih, ya, kecewa, ya. Tapi apa lagi yang perlukan? Apa lagi yang kita kurang sebenarnya untuk membawa jalur gemilang ke Grand Final di peringkat yang lebih tinggi? But for this season, like you said, they're very focused. Chiku, you only play gold lane. Chiku, you only think about how we're going to win. And everyone else is going to provide the, the coverage for Chiku guys. So for this season, it's definitely different where they're very focused on their own style of play which is the langa playstyle but now it's almost like the lawan balik kind of langa where you're trying to make the opponent fight you and then you win the, the, the fight eventually. Bila uh, player dengan coach Filipino masuk ni, dia lain sikit daripada kebiasaan kita orang buatlah selalu. Dia lebih kepada lebih de, uh, disiplin. At first, it's hard uh, because of the language. Uh, there are those times that I cannot understand them and they cannot understand me. But me and Jim figured it out like, okay Jim, I will tell you the instructions, then you translate it to them. So that's what happened. That's why our work get easier because of it. Kemasukan Coach BF saya rasa dia lebih ke arah disiplin lah. Sebab kita orang ni tak ada disiplin sangat. So bila dah ada dia ni, kita orang lebih ke arah disiplin and ingatlah motif kita nak main dan tujuan kita main sebab So I've known Chiku before he entered Dota. So I've known him for a while now, and I feel like he really did not change much. And yes, he is comfortable on camera, but he's more comfortable in stream. So maybe the viewers online are not as intimidating as the viewers in person. Perbezaan dulu saya single, sekarang saya dah kahwin. Kalau Chiku ni sebelum kahwin ni dia jenis kaki langgar Tak kisah lah kalau sebelum ni Putnis kan uh, girlfriend dia kan Dia langgar je Putnis tu ha, Sekarang ni dah kahwin tu dia macam Okay ni wife aku aku kena jaga dia Dia tak langgar lah ha, Itu lah itu Chiku lah I think he's an absolute legend I think that he really pushes the agenda And he really knows how to test the limits Or at the very least very situationally aware of what he's capable of on a particular marksman. Although the meta has shifted and Chiku has definitely changed roles, he's, you know, he has to evolve with the times. I feel that Chiku is still at an age where he's adaptable, but age is eventually going to catch up to him at some point. We just don't know when. Kalau bagi saya, selagi saya rasa saya boleh main, 
walaupun tak macam orang lain kan macam kalau main macam fasen lagi tapi bagi saya uh, benda itu tak penting dia lebih ke arah on point lah. so selagi saya boleh on point kan benda-benda yang penting lagi tu saya akan main lah. kalau dah sampai masa memang tak boleh stop lah. ramai orang yang yang uh, toksik, ramai orang yang maki kata suruh keluar toda, moon dengan ciku suruh keluar toda apa semua. But in the end of the day, kita orang sendiri dapat buatlah. So bersyukur saya sangat kepada Allah SWT yang memberi kita orang kawan-kawan yang macam family macam ni. So alhamdulillah sangat-sangat lah.
chain Ain't nothing can stop our restraint We are a force to be reckoned with Destiny, kingdom, and land Battle like Atlas, winning with madness Count us to practice, that is his match As we are the heroes here to slay Never back down, never oh. restrain
heavens, set the fire to the sky. Woo. Keep burning bright, kill the allies, and let the mist mesmerize. Strive for domination.
and chain Ain't nothing can stop our restraint We are a force to be reckoned with Destiny, kingdom, and land Battle like Atlas, winning with madness Count us for practice, that is his match As we are the heroes here to slay Never back down, never uh, astray Yo, yo, fatal links Yo, yo, single swim <laughs> Match by match, day by day Determination and one at a time
Welcome everyone all around the world watching here MSC 2023 where we will have our final series of the day Echo going up against Five Bucks Impunity here on the desk is me LaFell alongside with me is Leo from Malaysia as well as Gideon Q who is also from Malaysia how are you feeling Leo? Apa kabar? Come on right he nailed it. He nailed, nailed it. it. Yeah. Now, obviously, <laughs> I am from the Philippines and it's great to be here. The champion of MPL Philippines will be facing off against Turkey's best, fresh out of their MTC sweeping victory. It's Fireflux Impunity, formerly known as Incendio Supremacy. Now, honestly, eh the more that I think about this Turkish team, the more I get nervous because the last time we saw them, they knocked the Malaysians out from M4 itself. Oh. So if they can take at least a game off of Echo, that's already a step forward. If they take an entire series against Echo, that is a new statement to be behold. A lot of things are going on here, but I just got to say, I got to shout out to Aces Republic of Gamers or ROG because they are the official gaming phone partner of MSC 2023. The ROG Phone 7 comes with the Aeroactive Cooler 7 that provides you with a portable 2.1 sound system and alongside the spectacular 165 hertz AMOLED display, you can play games like you never experienced before. Speaking of experiencing nothing like this before, the start of MSC so far, a lot of two zeros. And I hope this is a trend that's like, okay, we're going to leave all the sweeps early so that later on, the knockout stage as well as the grand finals is not a sweep. That has been the case, at least for day one and day two. Yesterday, sweep, sweep, all the way. What if today we do the same thing? Sweep, sweep, all the way. But would that not spell an upset for this matchup? Because again, you're looking at the world champions. Yeah, it's going to be tough to believe here, but truly the Turkish team turning up the killer instincts is going to be key for both of these teams. Obviously for Echo and especially for those a part of the Echo system, it's not going to be that much of an issue. We've seen them activate that killer instinct, but from the Turkish squad, you never know what's going to come out of them, especially with the lineup maturing over time. Yeah, looking at this matchup, we'll have a better idea about Group A because again, looking at the situation where we're all looking at who's going to be the number one, number two for now. Everyone is saying that number one, it has to be Echo. If, again, even if it goes all the way, but overall goes over to Echo, it's going to be looking very good for Firebox Infinity to grab that second spot. I think the worst part about all of this, right, even when we're looking at EXP Landers internal ranking, Alien is catching up real quick, especially at the seventh spot. He doesn't make top five, especially with the names that we have, but Sam Bird has always been a standout ever since his accompli I mean, his accomplishments are close to none so far for an EXP laner. What's scary though, is that keep in mind that Fireflux Impunity did get a little bit of a taste of Echo. Echo having to play their first match yesterday, so that's information. And we saw Saw what RSG can do with information, I bet F, uh, FIMP can do it exactly the same. Does that not exacerbate one advantage that FIMP has already over Echo? They are basically in everybody's sights. Being number one has its costs, right? Mm -hmm. And here, 40 being number one up against Alien at number seven. That's six other dudes that also is gunning for 40's place, right? And here's the thing. Knowing that Alien has been here for a while, dare I say, even longer, then wow. Sanford, they're not just fighting against Sanford, all right? Mm -hmm. It's, woo! Yeah, we got to talk about Carl TZ the here. Goat, Again, the best in the world! Ever since M2, man, he's the reason we got the Lancelot skin. Seavages, Seavages. I don't know. I, 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 keep, I keep putting on different accents here, but again, <laughs> Carl TZ is the real goat. But here's the thing. We're looking at Carl TZ. We'll be the next one to achieve a Savage in MSC. Get it. What, what do you think about Carl TZ so far? I think, you know, he's always been my go. You know, since M2, I made that prediction for M4 that Echo was going to take it away because Carl TZ is part of that squad. And when you have experience plus raw natural talent, you get greatness. And Echo continues to achieve that which, with each and every one of their players. I mean, we even see he can actually go for the Bane and he went for the, for the tanky kind of Bane. He's evolved. And you like that, Leo. I love it. I am a big fan, and here's what's crazy about Carl TZ, right? He just keeps evolving, he just keeps growing, he started off as a prodigy, and now I think no one in the world can contest, he is the GOAT. I kind of feel like that's kind of enough from us, because we talk a lot about this guy. I kind of want to hear what he has to say for himself, so let's look over Carl TZ. Here you go. 
Uh, mas okay siguro kung pauwi na namin sila agad para mas madali mag-champion. Tingin ko po kaya ko pong kunin yung ngayon kasi sobrang lakas ng mga kakampi ko. Tapos ano, yung pressure naman parang hindi ko masyadong iniisip yun eh. Parang lalari lang namin yung laro namin, walang magbabago. Tuloy-tuloy lang. There you heard it, straight from the goat's mouth. He's not afraid to send people home. Is that not just business? All about business, just, I don't mind. No hard feelings here. We're the world champions. I gotta do what I gotta do. Here's the thing, people come here to have fun, but as well, everyone here is a professional, like you said, it's all business. No hard feelings. If you're going up against me, I just gotta take you down. You know, again, it's it's all about being the champion and it's all about competition. If you wanna win, you gotta be able to have the heart to make someone lose. Or the fact that you already pretty much earned almost every single title imaginable here in MLBB. I mean, with the accomplishments that Call TZ has achieved just for himself alone, not even considering his team, I think, as Leo has mentioned, he's proven himself more than enough, and MSC is just another check off the bucket list. But the real question is whether Fireflux Impunity is going to be the shepherd's hand that takes down the GOAT. In this kind of situation, man, I don't think I can wait any longer. Looking at the crowd as well, I kind of feel like they want to see the players play. And you can't let the players play without them being on stage. So let's invite both teams on the stage. To officiate the first series of MSC 2023, we have our marshals here to facilitate fair play. They are here to ensure that we get the best esports competition experience we can, and of course, competitive integrity. Making their way on stage first, they are loud, they are proud. Here are your defending M4 World Champions, Echo! A lot of questions have to be asked. Yaoi, will he get the chill? Carl TZ, will he lead Echo to conquer the sea? Carl TZ continues to lead Echo to conquer Southeast Asia. Now making their way on stage, formerly known as Incendio Supremacy. They finished top eight at M4. And now they're making their way on stage all the way from Turkey. It's Fire Flux Impunity! They're walking in loud and proud, not even losing a single game in the MTC Turkey Championship Season 1 playoffs. Will Fireflux Impunity continue their win streak? Also now making their way on stage, their coaches, Coach Tic Tac, Coach Trevor, and Coach Bad Galsef from Fireflux Impunity. Looking at both teams, the coaches will make a very big impact because again, Looking at how the meta has shaped up for MSE, I would dare say we don't have a staple for now. Every single team have their own flavor, and it is up to the coaches to understand the flavor, and it's up to the players to be able to take the taste. I'll be like, nah, I want something else. One more thing that we have to consider when we're talking about Fireflux Impunity, on the mind of Coach Bad Gasef, of course, and their analyst, Osprey, is the fact that their lineup ain't complete. Not much like Echo, who has been playing with the same main five for the better part of a year now. I absolutely love the fact that Echo refuses to change their lineup. These are all talented players. Players that some may say before this, when they were literally everywhere, all across the board in MPLPH with many different franchise teams, they got them together saying, this has the potential for greatness, and Echo unlocked them, creating what we know today as the ecosystem. Definitely all players are highlights, but Sanford as well as Carl Tizi are the ones that we've been talking about just now. And again, I kind of feel like these are the players to watch for this match. And they are the standard, all right? You go around the world and you say MLBB right now, the way it's played at the highest level, you compare that to Echo. If they can try to beat Echo, if they even come close, then that's something to watch out for. If they can't, well, we'll talk about that later. As for now, something to note. Fireflux Impunity is missing their marquee mid laner in Rosa. Standing in their place is now going to be Kyura. Interestingly enough, they shuffled it up. They shuffled it up. Alien still in the XP. Kazue going into the jungle. Sunshine in the gold lane. And Apex 47 as their roam. Kyura is gonna have to fill very big shoes. We loved Rosa in M4. I mean, Rosa made a name for himself, but Kyura, this is his time to shine. The fact that he's taking that spot, there's gotta be something that Fireflux and Purity see in him, something either similar to Rosa or an entirely new dynamic. It's very interesting because if we look at nearly all of the team, right, 
almost every single team from various different regions, everyone is taking a risk here. And I kind of feel like they have the mindset. We try with the same idea over and over again, but we're hitting a plateau. Now we got to evolve. But the same can't be said about Echo. They found their stride. They found their winning formula. They don't need to change. So this is a very big difference between Echo and every single team here in MSC where they know what is their greatest strengths, what are their weaknesses, and they have moved towards it. While other teams, in a way, they're still gambling a bit with what they're supposed to do. Let's walk through a little bit of MLBB competitive history here. Since Blacklist International has achieved the world title, they've set the standard of supports being uh, enchanter style to play as a team, to play a very slow, methodical game until Echo shook things up, showing that playmakers are the ones that reach the top of the heights. When you think there's 100%, Echo shows you that there are more levels, 200%, 250%. Risky plays allow for the ceiling to crack even higher. And that is why when I'm looking at talent predictions, I'm leaning towards Echo. And <laughs> LaFell, you're the one who says there are no absolutes. What's going no on here? No absolutes, man. Here's the thing. I, <laughs> I believe in chaos. I want to watch the world burn. At this point, I don't even care about being right. He woke up and chose violence today. I, I did, yeah. I went to sleep with violence. <laughs> Dude, I think you just got yourself a one. My roomie is Mirko, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got an automatically approved visa to Turkey. They love you there. Yeah. <laughs> LaFell, come over. <laughs> I'm digging it. You know what? I think the world knows and the world understands that this is a rough matchup for Fireflux Impunity. They'd be happy to come close. They'd be happy to score one mm -hmm. over Echo, right? But the, the scales are tipped against him. Again, you mentioned how Yaoi has become the new standard. He became the playmaker. He reminded us that, hey, Estes is cool, Matilda is cool, but nah, y'all haven't seen my show. Now, Apex 47 has to tilt towards one or the other because Apex 47 is good for both, right? We've known he has a good Atlas, he has a solid Estes, there's a Turkish Delight, their own version of the Ube. Yep. But what are we going to see? How are we going to see Fireflux and Beauty evolve right before our very eyes to even come close to what Echo has established? I'm going to pull this conversation a little bit because we did talk about there's a slight advantage seeing Echo play first. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing, I kind of feel like they, they didn't show much, man. Yep. Because again, Sanford on the Yuzong still 100% ever since MPL Philippines. Yaoi on the Cho is amazing. So I kind of feel like not a lot has been shown, but still, looking at the situation, not a lot of Yuzong bans. Gideon, do you think Sanford with the Yuzong has to be respected? I think Yuzong on Sanford needs to honestly be dissected a little bit. Why exactly is he getting away with why uh, with his current plays, right? Why not? Why isn't he going for a Lapu Lapu, something that he is shown to be especially and honestly has won him a world title in the grand finals of M4? A lot of it comes down to where the meta is at currently, right? If Grok was still available, do you think Sanford would have taken it? I 100% believe that he was especially capable and honestly might have been preparing to bring it for this very tournament. One of the pioneers of the side lane Grok, Grok in the what's now called the Master Assassin. Mm -hmm. uh, he came close to winning a championship in MPL Season 10 with that, but he's just not going to come through. And here we see Kyura, previously known as Tienzi, rep in Turkey. Yeah, he was an esteemed Turkish MLBB player distinguished by an astonishing repertoire of heroes. You know what, I kind of feel like our script writer just, just took the dictionary That's and right. see what's the, the, what's the most beautiful way to describe, mm -hmm. describe this man here, known for his flashy playstyle, which showcased moments of sheer brilliance. Watch out for his calculated aggression, but the only thing that I got to ask here, Gideon, do you think he can not even be aggressive? Because now, if I'm not mistaken, as we saw just now, Kira is going to be the mid laner. And we got to see, going up against Echo, being aggressive, I don't know if it's good or bad. Here's the thing, right? Echo is always going to have to adjust. A lot of this, and especially, I wish this wasn't just a best of three, because conditioning is going to come into play. And Echo is really, really good at tempering and messing with their opponent's mindset. They reset a lot faster than the majority of the teams here at MSC. When you don't reset after that game number one, a lot of those lingering habits still show during game number two. Something which I'm hoping Turkey is able to kind of cover for. Something I'm hoping for as well is for this man's dream to come true, his wish, because I also want to see it. The last time Carl Tizi played an Alpha, if I'm not mistaken, was in 2021 when he was still playing for Brenny Sports in MPL Philippines Season 7. Very memorable because I wanted that to work. Mm -hmm. Dude, ah. I, I feel like if he picked it up right now, it will work because again, Alpha is so good against a lot of matchups. 
even the Minsitar, because it is one of those heroes where you're like, oh, Minsitar is, is very destructive in how you want to play the game. Alpha only has one dash, and that is his ult, but usually he uses his ult to get into the fight. Once he's in, he really doesn't care. He spams his first and second skill, and the thing is, even without any spell bam, just the natural spell bam that he has as a hero without additional items, he can heal a lot. All he needs is just a little bit more sustain and damage. As a jungler, he can get both of those. We're not even talking about his absurd clear speed. And oh, it's with so Spear, fast. Yeah, with Spear of Alpha on such a short cooldown, so he's clearing camps double time compared to people like Bane. I, I want to make an argument that even before Bane got nerfed, he was almost keeping up almost equally. I tried Bane jungle mm -hmm. as soon as we got home last night and oh, a little yeah. bit this morning. What emblems? Exact same as Carlty's yesterday, and uh, I tried to mimic the build. Uh -huh. It's not as easy as it looks. Right? You have to synchronize with your team, and you have to draft very specifically. There's a lack of damage. There's a clear lack of damage, given the new nerfs on Bane in the recent patch. So how they did it yesterday was a very calculated risk. So either way, we have to watch out. Carlty's hero pool, given the Bane, given the Alpha, is basically infinite right now. All right, it's time. The draft is set. It is time for Echo versus Fire Flux Impunity in this best of three. Let game one begin. We're gonna start the drafts here, where again, the bans, I kind of feel like will impact quite hugely, because again, we gotta see Fire Flux Impunity, what do they do? don't wanna see going to Echo. <laughs> Echo betting out the S's, pure, pure respect. Leo, you called it. They know. The glue as well, the Novara and the 1-1 one, one ban, I kind of feel like it is one of those staples. You just don't want to give it over to Echo or anyone in particular. They know. They know. They're, they're, they're throwing back to Jakarta just six months earlier, right? They, they know that Apex 47 is packing an Estes. He's packing an Atlas. But I think they're willing to deal with that since Diggy is available. We're seeing here the Eve taken away from the already shaky mid lane of Fireflux Impunity. I mean, if we're talking about shaky mid lane, I'm not seeing a Valentina ban. I haven't seen a Joy ban either. None of the suppressions have been taken out at the same time. I think the draft is rather open right now and not a lot of information is being given. Like from Echo's side, it's clear that the target key heroes that Fimp has shown before in their previous bouts. But Fimp on the other hand, right? We're seeing the Nuvaria, we're seeing the Wama. They're just standard bans. This third one, Arlet as well. At least this gives us a little bit of info. Actually looking at Echo's bad, it does seem like they oh! want to be able to win the box fights. Because again, I kind of feel like Liu, you can touch on it a little bit more in terms of the box fights. Because again, it's, it's, it's a lot going on in the Philippines. First picking the Lancelot is going on, Carl Teasy. And we can see the reactions, oh. man. This is crazy. What allows uh, for the box strategy in the Lancelot is it's not necessarily a box the way that a King's Calling is or a, a real world manipulation. It's more the thread. It's more the duct tape that keeps said box together, right? You're able to cordon down, finish off uh, uh, stragglers out of the box, or even just, again, take objectives. So it is what's stapling the box together. Mm, I see. So it's putting it all together, whether it's inside or outside the box. But it's clear that even for Fireflux Impunity, they know what they want. Song as well as the Valentina. The Valentina are very flexible, I agree. Yeah. But the Yuzong being a very hard and direct target, specifically on the sand. With the quick response coming in from Echo. The Kajan as well as the Kadita, they're expecting something. They're trying to deny alts. What I like here, you know what? It feels like it's fire versus fire because Echo having the Lancelot kind of flexible. You can play aggressive, you can be a little bit more passive, but here, Fireflux Impunity having the Yuzong, having the Valentina kind of shows in terms of range, we're gonna play between mid and close range. We wanna get into your face. Echo is like, yeah, you know what? If you wanna get into our face, we wanna do the same. Having the Kaja, having the Kadita, a lot of dive potential for both teams. None of them are shying away from a fight. Coach Tekta, Coach Treb, how much dive do you want? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's beautiful because I think at the end of the day, right, it's also the amount of iframes they actually have to work around with, especially with the rough waves, not to mention, uh, not to mention the Lancelot naturally having inbuilt iframes in his ultimate as well as the Thorn Rose. We do see the counter picks getting banned away. Coach Tic Tac really on the ball with this one. Getting rid of the Minstar is a good option. Right now, looking at the ban so far, it looks like Echo again. 
when I was talking about the box, they're trying to make sure that there is no box. They want to roam around because the Eve, the Mincitar, even in a way, the Essence kind of forced you to get into a very tight spot. And it looks like Echo, they want to move around the map quite a bit. So for Fireflux Impunity, I kind of feel like if they can't control the map well, I kind of feel like Echo, they'll be a little bit too fast for Fireflux Impunity to kind of like react with. So I kind of like this Joy Band because letting the Joy over is going to be more difficult. There's too many people that it's very hard to catch. I totally agree here. You know, ban out the Joy. The fact that they already have the Kaja means you don't want to pick it for yourself. And they also decided to get rid of the Farmers from the side of Echo, knowing that if they decide to team fight harder, our pickoff composition isn't going to get that much value, which comes down to two things. Either A, we are going to see the style that's very reminiscent of Blacklist getting the floor in rather early for the side of Fimp, or we might even see an opportunity for Diggy once again. What I'm worried about is what Sanford is gonna play. Coach Bad Gal Saf, Osprey, they've really just locked it down for this young XP laner, the Apex Predator himself, because look, no Lapu, no Joy, stole away the YZ, no Fredrin even, you can flex that. What's Forty gonna play? I mean, there's a possibility. We've seen a lot of popular picks being Uranus. The third slot. Oh, there I was, it is! I, I, I actually wanted to say the third slot, by the way. Riz! The Riz! It's the Riz! The Riz! The Rizla! But now, having the Claude here, here's the thing, man. The Clot is a very elusive hero. For now, looking at Fireflux Impunity, there's not a lot of catch. Whatever the Roamer is going to be, it has to be someone that has the potential to stop the Claude. Hmm. A Kufra, maybe? Kufra, possibly. Franco is still technically on oh, the yeah. table as well. It really depends on what the flavor of the month is for Fimp and how they want to kind of manage. Because let's keep in mind, even if the Roamer is just focusing on the Marksman, there's other lanes that they can actually affect, right? The mid lane in particular, where they have the Valentina. Yes, she can push out these waves, but when you have both Kadita as well as Kaja together, you're going to have to 2v2 this. Looks like the timer has gone down. They have no more time left, and they're gonna pick up the Franco, making sure that they're gonna be able to lock down the Claude. But because this is a Franco, you could potentially lock down Carl TZ with the Lancelot. But again, looking at how this man moves, it's gonna be very, very difficult. But overall, what do we feel about the drafts? I'm liking how Echo answered uh, the whole situation because Teresa has a lot of damage for an XP laner. I was thinking prior to the pick showing, maybe Uranus. You want one dead mm -hmm. lane and then go for the attacks elsewhere. But no, Echo just said, yeah, all the dive, yes, all the damage as well. Like, there's very little peel. Oh, yeah, very, very little peel. Oh, my goodness. Even the audience predictions, we're seeing that 54% of Turkish of the Turkish people are going to be leading for uh, Fimp, but the other 44% leaning towards Echo's side. They're realists. They are they realists understand. as well. So to answer your question, LaFell, I think on paper, Fimp has the fundamentals, but Echo just has the grit and, of course, the experience and the skills to execute. Now we're going into the game, the first match and final series of the day. Echo going up against Fire Flux Impunity. All right, let's run r run it back one more time here. Because when I was looking for Sanford in the draft, he's very true to himself. He wants to fight, he wants to get those kills. I was thinking maybe even a Benedetta might have been a better option for him instead of the Terizla, because at the end of the day, Melissa is going to be able to kind of keep that Terizla back, keep him at a safe distance. Oh. Very interesting here because I'm looking at the minimap and it looks like Yaoi is starting the orange buff early. So they really want to make sure that Carl TZ gets through his farming phase very, very, very fast. Because right now he's already level 3. That's right. And they're, they're going fast enough away. Yaoi, the playmaker, barely gets away. And they also secure the little wonder. Now oh, Apex is over. in trouble. They're going to pop the roamer from Turkey. One more hit. Oh, he forces the flicker. But Carl TZ still gets it, drawing first blood. Man, that, those plays, that's just world championship level, man. Like every angle, there's just no way you can get out of that if you're in FIMP's position, right? Like what can Fireflux realistically do? Even if you flicker in the opposite direction, you're still gonna die at the end Ooh. of the day. But it's great to see that Carl TZ, he's not hungry for those kills. It's either they will come to him or somebody else will carry the game. It's just been one minute and 30 seconds, but a lot has happened. And one of it is the fact that Carl TZ is on this landslide. It's actually starting with a Steel Lake place, which usually we see Molten Essence or, or maybe even, even a, like, like a little bit of damage. But here, Echo, they're actually trying something very, very different going up against Fireflux Impunity, which is very interesting. My theory is on Carl TZ understands that he is the thread. He is what keeps this all together. So if he's able to survive a little longer, 
then yes, maybe. Because Molten Essence does give you HP, but Steel Leg Plates, that's an ungodly amount of armor for such little gold. Yep, they're gonna get on top of the turtle right now, and I think this is where it gets a little interesting. Because at the end of the day, Carl Teasy isn't the one who's going to initiate. The rest of his team want to get aggressive. Oh, Alien starting off with a black dragon form and a penalty zone by Sanford. Turtle goes over to Echo, and they get the shield. They get the damage. Kazuo already down. Alien very low, just a fourth of his health, and they disengage. Right now, starting the game, Echo already with a 1,000 gold lead. Might I remind you, it's only the phase of the game where everyone is getting their level 4 already with a 1,000 gold lead. That's actually quite a lot. And we can have to see the way that they're rotating. Very good against God. There's a hook by Apex. Not much of a follow up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Can't capitalize. Yep. I love the fact that Yaoi is mirroring Apex here, but he's not directly, he's not man-to-man -man body defense. He's lingering behind him, and he's making sure that even if he does get the cash, there's an instant counter reaction if uh, if we do see Fire Flux wanting to capitalize on these picks. And even so, at the end of the day, it's going to be about the neutral objectives. That's why we're seeing Call Teasy wanting to maintain his level lead against Kizue. Right now, I want to open a conversation. The changes in the jungle, extra 5% gold, in the jungle creeps. Right now, Gideon, you're looking at Carl Teasy's rotation, even invading uh, 5,000 Infinity. What do you think about this? So far, I think it's a great idea, right? Maintain this level lead. Give yourself the um, biggest amount of advantage because fighting around these neutral objectives might not necessarily be the greatest thing in the world for Echo as soon as his game starts dragging out to the 8-minute mark, arguably even 12-minute mark. And that's going to allow for him to make the most of that early pair of pants, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you do pants now, but you can eventually still catch up. You can go farm so fast and push away Kazue and make it not matter at all. Yeah, with 1.4k gold lead, I kind of feel like a lot of the gold lead is on Carl TZ because even look at the level difference here, level 7 going up against level 6. See? Right now, again, I kind of feel like this is the snowball happening where where you're taking away, Whoa! but Yaoi pulls in. Put the DJ down on Akura, and he could not respond. Quick pick off in mid. Disgustingly good coming in from both Sanji and as well as Yaoi, giving no opportunity to fight back here. Ooh. Now, as much as we say that Call TZ has that gold lead, right, let's keep in mind that Sanji, almost very recently, before that kill even happened, got his Clock of Destinies pre-four minutes. That's an early Clock of Destinies. And then he finishes off the Magic Penetration boots as soon as he gets the kill. I feel like what's crazy here is like across the board, everyone from Echo, they have a level advantage. Whatever rotation they've been, they've been doing, it's really helping everyone out. And, and I kind of just believe it's not them getting too big of an advantage. It's all about denying advantage. Sanji goes in. Oh, and just takes out Kyura like that. And now Kazuo is in trouble. Apex 47, can he save his jungler? Yes, there's no Sanford. Oh. Gets a kill. Ah, oh, what an uncanny rotation coming in from Sanford, right? He decides to sacrifice at least 90% of the gold plating just to make this happen on the bottom side of the map. Now, they have a very clear lead here, unless Apex knows. They gets continue back. the pressure. Apex still up, not enough damage. Benny says no. Look at top side though. Yutong, he's finally getting a little bit of gold for himself, but he's basically out of this game. Right now, looking at the situation, I think Sanji is thinking about it. They just want Whoa! to pull everyone away. Sanji gets pulled. Apex with a hook and a bite down gives the kill over to Sunshine. Benny does get a push in exchange. Alien up top, forced to use a Black Dragon form. I believe he's losing that 1v1. Sanford's still here. And they're just going to try to clear these waves. Yep, Sanford, he's just abusing his level lead. He's rotating faster, clearing faster in a matter of fact. And unfortunately, Alien is just one step behind. Looking at the situation, it does feel like Echo, they're taking the calculated risk because they're like, okay, right now, Sanji, just show your face. What we really want is the bottom turret. There, there's always a chance that Sanji will get pulled, but trading a life for an objective, a structure, I think it's always worth it. So I kind of feel like it is more of a calculated risk where it's like, there is a risk, one of us is going to die. That's right. Heroes but respawn, it's always good. Tear, tar stone. Exactly. And oh. now Sanford. Very low sunshine goes and used the goal. Wow. Line, but there really wasn't much. Couldn't wow. take down Carl nor Sanford. Couldn't react in time. Could not react in time. It negative synergy. Yeah, I mean, it's negative synergy, but let's not forget that Sanford, technically, he shouldn't be here. Like, even for Fireflux, they recognize that, okay, they're going to lane swap right now, but no, all of a sudden, Sanford saw, shows up at the top side, and now the fight. Oh, no. Cura and. He does help out and get a kill, but Alien is going to fall, and eventually that's two for Echo. And here, an attempted steal. Oh, Carl Thiesi does eventually still get it. No, wait! Kazuo secures! I gotta say, I'm still looking at what happened just now at top. 
I, I have to look at it back because I kind of feel like it's a very interesting interaction where mm -hmm. the go away is actually pushing Carl Teasy towards the wall. So the iron hook, even though it did connect, but it was like, no, nope. you can't move because you're stuck <laughs> against the wall. So I was like, so all sorts of movement to yeah, stop by so, go away. Yeah, so that's what I was like, huh, interesting. A little bit of a negative synergy, but it looks cool. It looks awesome. I mean, there's a bunch of these, right? We yeah. have seen even during uh, C games that Kufra is able to kind of oh, like yeah. shorten the distance if he starts buffering the ability. So at least we know the interaction is huh. very dependent on displacement effects. I've learned for you to do that, you need tough boots. And now, Yaoi with the conceal is looking to flank. Alien goes in. So far, everyone's just like, okay, let's clear the minion. If we see a path, we're going to go for it. If not, then it's all right. Reset, try to find resources somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Right now, Fireflux, they're going to have to take a back foot on a lot of these objectives here. Echo is really far ahead. It's seven minutes about to turn eight with a 4.5k lead. And especially at this level of competition at an international tournament, that is a gigantic lead, especially for their laners, right? Out-leveled, out-gold. Even if you want to go for these one individual plays, it might not necessarily fall in your favor. Look at this, Turkish Delight getting set up. All five members here hiding in that bush near the purple buff. Not gonna lead to much, because I think Echo knows. Carl DZ did not overextend here. Gonna attempt one. Here's a pull right in the purple buff. Apex 47 popped by Sanji. That's a man down for the Turkish squad. And right now, just with that one loss, Echo is looking like they can push for oh! DPZ, that's a deep penalty zone, plus a blazing duet. That's already two down in that single engagement, plus a push by Echo. Beautiful. Sanford literally waits for the very last second. It looks like he's about to touch the ground Dude, before he flickers. I think that's an EXP laner's wet dream. Yes, it was definitely my wet dream for sure. I'm going to be thinking about that tonight. Given the Kadira, it's very wet. It's oh, yeah. Woo! I mean, it's some hot stuff here, but let's keep in mind that Echo, every single move that they've made, they force something out of uh, Fimp. Going into the purple buff. Oh, we managed to get Kazue's uh, retribution. Now he can't fight for the neutral objective. We go deeper in. Early rotations coming in from Sanford to guarantee the lead for Benny QT as well as Carl Teasy. And now look at this. All of that early game setup, making sure that this Lord is basically impossible for, uh, uh, for Fimp to even get close. I gotta say, man, from the early stages of the game up until right now, every single bush, it feels like it's Echo's bush. Every single time you want to check for vision, every single time you have the attention of finding farm you're gonna get punished and I think that is the most that's the biggest different uh, difference maker here because five bucks impunity every single time they're moving they're gonna get caught yeah I think echo here is making the most of this 9k almost 10k gold lead oh they are translating this financial uh, advantage into space because again they have better uh, face checking they have Better vision, given the extra defensive items that they're rocking, compared to Fimp, who has to very safely rely on the hook. Oh boy, Yaoi, he loses out his flicker here, so that's one tool gone. Now, maybe Fimp can do something. Oh, Black Dragon 4 by Alien, and there's Muddles dropped in. Very low, forced to use the Rough Waves on out. He does survive using the Petrify as well. Here comes Alien, and here comes the Clap Clap! from the Turkish squad in Sanford, very low. There's a the damage, and he goes down. Sanji as well, San San is down, traded out for Alien, and look oh! at this, the fight down by oh! Apex, and there's another hook. What? The Turkish are going what? insane. That's three down already, make that four. What? The goat has fallen. Fireflux impunity on fire. This is why every single time we see this Turkish delight, their version of the Ube, their version as Junior Blacklist, they know how to high ground defense like no other. Yo, shout out to Apex 47. We're going to check back the replay. Hookman. Not just Hookman, man, but he saved the ult for Betty QD because look at this, Apex 47, the green light. He still has his ult. He's saving it. He's like, wait, there's one member missing. Cross is winning, but look at his Betty QD. He was shut down. He was suppressed. After that, it's game over, man. He literally said, nothing personal, kid. Flickers behind him just to get the bloody Ooh. hunt down. And this is just raw preparation from the side of Fireflux Impunity, right? Great preparation. They know the habits of Echo. I just got to say, man, just now the goalie was almost like, what, 10K? Now it's 4.4. Cut in half. Cut in half. That's how big that team fight was. I mean, it's huge shutdowns all across the board. Altizi ended up dying there. Sanford ended up dying there. More importantly, Sanji Dude. ended up dying there. Dude, look at the Lord advantage. Negative 3.6. Oh 
negative 3.6. I mean, sure, they got a lot of push, and that is amazing. Don't get me wrong, but this this does show that Fireflux Impunity now, they're breathing in life a bit. Yep, I, I think that's step one in maybe a four or five step process. Grand Theft Purple here committed by Carl TZ. That's one charge, pleading guilty. Given that, 10 seconds away from this Luminous Lord, I think a penetration is in check, given that FIMP have yet to take one turret, so they still need to work on their waves. Well, let's keep in mind, the last time we saw Echo actually push it and lose out that high ground fight was all because, well, Yaoi, he did have his flicker available, but everybody else, their battle spells were not ready to go, so they couldn't force out the play. And with Yaoi not catching somebody with a Divine Judgment means that they had to pull back, but they were confident. That's when we see Fireflux Impunity start abusing them. Whoa. And now, playing the map on their side, calculate Laying it down to the very last pixel. Well done as they claim more gold and scavenge this game back. Honestly, I like it because I kind of feel like taking the Lord now would be very, very risky. So might as well take a safer objective. And mm -hmm. I kind of feel like they want Echo to push in because as we saw just now, they have the potential of countering. They have the potential of actually making or forcing mistakes from Echo. So they want this. Early concealed by Yaoi. Lord trampling in. And there's a flicker. Whoa! Oh, Apex pulls just the same. And Alien survives along the way. A man down for Echo. What? They still have the Lord. But Fimp already looking great in this defense. That was, I, I don't know what to say about was that. Was that not as clean as hook? I, it was the cleanest save. It was one of the cleaner ones, but it looked so, it looked like it went right through Yaoi, and Dude. then he walked right back into it. Don't tell me you feel cheated, man. Oh, uh, no, not just yet. <laughs> right. Not until All we right. see the replay in slow-mo one right. more time. <laughs> All right. Just messing with you. But yeah, Leo, like, that was an amazing defense. It was, it was. And yeah, they did lose two inhibitors. But in the end, I think Firefox is happy to at least get something along the way. Here's another instant replay. All right, you asked for it. Okay, <laughs> here we go this time. Let's see my old eyes can catch this in time. So we do see Yaoi actually flickering forward. Yeah. Oh, oh, he dashes into dude. the hook right at the end. If he just didn't dash, it would have been totally fine. You have good eyes, by the way. Thank God. <laughs> very, very good eyes. This just speaks of how well Apex understands the physics of the Iron Hulk. But now, Yaoi looking for revenge. Oh, Black Dragon formed by Alien. Oh, oh, not oh. gonna lead them much here. This is not a good engage. Yeah, I mean, nothing to worry about. Still 70 more seconds until the next Lord comes back up. So I think even for Fimp this time, they can just wait it out, get their cool cooldowns back online, and then look to fight. Because again, no inhibitors. So they can just wait for the waves to push into them. Right now, we're living in the moment, but let's look into the future, right? Like, what are both teams looking for right now? Because it is very clear here that Yaoi has been, I would say, the linchpin of getting any of those engages, except for that one moment when Sanford with the flicker, crazy engage. But again, it's like, they want to engage, they want to start something. Fire, Flux, Impunity, what are they looking for? Personally for me, I think a lot of this comes down to the conditioning, right? Fire Flux Impunity, they understand how Echo has been moving, how their general play styles are going to look like. And considering that it is that step-by-step -step process, all you got to do is figure out what step is Echo on right now. Yaoi has tried multiple times, so expect keep your eyes specifically on Sanji or Samford. They might look to make one of the bigger plays here for this next fight. And that just translates into the ecosystem, right? You have to understand where you are on the food chain. Yep. And right now, Echo is still on top of the food chain, but slowly but surely, Firefox and Community are crawling back up. And here they understand the dynamics. We still have to stick to the Turkish delight altogether now. And I think the oh. way that Kazo is positioning himself, hmm, he might actually want to contest. You, you wouldn't do this. You wouldn't hide yourselves here if you weren't going to contest. Fimp is walking up here. They know that maybe if somebody overextends, they could get a pick, but they oh, know no. that they can't take a full 5v5 so deep outside of their base. They might as well just go back wait until it starts pushing into them. Remember, they still have the Melissa on their side. Their high ground defense, honestly, is not that bad. Yeah, right now, actually looking at the situation, three straight lords in a row. Fireflux Impunity, they let Echo to, oh, I love this. I, love, I, I, I wanted to talk about this, but freezing the lane mm -hmm. in your own base. I love this because you're forcing Echo to come in and you're actually stacking your own minions, but now that the minion is coming in, Echo, how will they start this fight? Oh, that's the minion. Big Lord coming in. 
Pura going for the pull. Alien stacking the Sha Essence. Here comes the Black Dragon form. Yaoi with the conceal. Playing footsies with the rest of the Turkish squad. Oh, and they put Sanji down very low. Alien still up, sustaining. They're going to lose an inhibitor here. Alien all the way in, deep behind enemy territory. All the while, caught easy, just dashing on through, making a signature right oh. inside their base. Alien's going to fall here with a blazing duet by Ben Cutie. That's a man down for Fire Flux Impunity. And they're still here. It's not like Echo is in full health, though. Sanford very low, does have an immortality. That's a disengage. The Turkish have defended. I mean, they've, they've defended for now, and I gotta say, it's very impressive. Carl TZ goes in, didn't actually hit the damage onto Sunshine. Looking at the base, it's very dangerously low, but even Echo, they're like, we have 9k gold lead, but why can't we go in? No, 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 this is all FIMP right here. Alien bot a ridiculous amount of time, and more importantly, got the passive out of Sanji out as early as possible, including the rough waves. We did, as expected, see Sanford try to make the play, but the follow-up damage from Sanji was not there. He already expanded all of his abilities, and Benny QT is just getting body blocked time and time again by either Kazue or even for Apex, because again, Apex, he's holding that bloody hunt for if Benny QT oversteps his boundaries. At this point, man, I gotta say, it is time for Echo to kind of like show their mental fortitude, man. Because at this point, you've been trying for quite a while. You got a lot of gold on you. This this is one of those situations where you could tilt, where you're like, okay, come on, wh what else do I have to do? And at some point, this all-in dive comp is going to hit a ceiling. And I think so far, Five Lock Community have figured out that ceiling. They're like, all right, they can only mm -hmm. do so much, especially inside our base. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, especially when they're playing a traditional front to back, right? You hit the front line, and as soon as you get rid of them, you move in towards that back side. Now, looking mm. at Sunshine's items earlier, he is in a very good position. He can chunk everybody from the side of Echo. He is a problem that Echo needs to answer almost straight away. And if Fimp is able to kind of stagger the abilities, force the resources on different sides of the map, they have a very good opportunity to take a full 5v5 outside of their base. You were talking about positioning, man. Look at the positioning of Sanji right now. Mm -hmm. Sanji and Yaoi, they're waiting. They're waiting for someone to try to get this push and then try to burst them out very, very fast. Speaking of which... Oh, no. Fim has been letting go of the lore so far. Will they do the same for this one? Oh, well, I think Kaltizi knows. Kaltizi knows that they're going to go for it quick and that Fim will know that they will go for it quick. But just the same, the Magic Sentry didn't spot Ji and Wei. They didn't spot this oh, duo no. from mid. But look at this. Looking for an engage. Oh, look at, this. Look, at yeah. this. look at this. Oh, flickering! Oh, and no, the doorway! They no. punish the playmaker! Yaoi is down! I repeat, Yaoi is down! Alien does draw a line going in straight, but Echo secures the Lord. Oh. Apex, Apex looking at Sanji, and right now, Sanford goes in! Battle is on for four! Make that five! Apex falls! And that's gonna be one immortality up! Sanford does pay the price! Apex go down! Then Cutie and Kaldizi deep behind enemy territory! And here no, no! Down goes Sunshine! Benny Cutie gets 2k! No, that's so unfortunate! Fim played that so well, they got everything out of Echo, but at the very end, that split second of thinking, I could turn this around, cost them the game. Echo takes game one. Oh what a first game in a best of three, where again, a lot are eyeing at Echo to win this one, but again, they were winning. That was a very hard game, and I gotta say, Fire Flux Impunity, if they do the same thing for game number two, maybe with a different draft, dude, I'm, 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 I'm thinking yesterday the third game went all the way. This one is not impossible. It really isn't impossible, man. I mean, you got to give it a Fire Flux Impunity. Their defense is impeccable. They've done more than enough research on the World Champions, and they've definitely caught on to a couple of few habits. You could see during the Lord Dance that even they could recognize that, hey, there is a possibility of a backdoor. There is a possibility that Benny QT is just waiting for them. And the adaptations that we saw from Echo, you know what, Benny? Make sure that you're nearby the Lord. Don't try and go for this backdoor just yet. Leave it to both Sanji and as well as Yaoi. We can make it happen. We need to rush down this Lord when we find it. I did. I, I just gotta say, a lot, a lot happened just now, Leo. Yeah, they figured out the fact that, all right, it looks like Fimp is willing to trade. Maybe we should do it. I think that's what they did with Yaoi. They understood that, yeah, 50-50, he could die if we don't get it in. And Apex has been very hot with his hooks and his bite downs. And that's the Echo Gambit. That's what they played on. 
and they got away with it, especially after the four, five man penalty Dude, zone. Sanford is a different beast, man. Mm -hmm. But I gotta say, that's forty. Yowie, Yowie, his, his engage on the Melissa, it honestly was a lot because when he went in, yes, he died. Yes, the Melissa was able to kill him. But the crazy thing is, Melissa used her Inspire. So by the time Yaoi died, and then Echo, they want to re-engage, Melissa does not have that crazy lifesteal, does not have that crazy attack speed, mm -hmm. making it so that they won't have enough damage. So even though, yeah, he died, but I kind of feel like that is a worthy trade. That's the Echo Express. The Echo Express? He's I just mean, just chugged in, just chugged in. Ooh, ran just, him over. Ran him over is is definitely you know a word I would describe this overall play style, right? Because again, this particular composition, it's all about playmaking. It's all about finding those opportunities to turn the tables against their opponent. And like you mentioned, LaFell, yes, the Inspire was a very big deal. They got the alt as well as the Inspire. So not only could she not play defensively, but couldn't turn the tables when the time was right. And honestly, Fire Flux Impunity, they set it up perfectly until that final bad call of maybe we could turn this around. Right now we got to look at the MVP of the game and the MVP has to go over to Sanford. Honestly, a lot deserving for this young man here. Look at him, he's so happy, but at the same time he's like, uh, oh, Chucks, guys, come on. I only got like four or five people twice. <laughs> just another day, own. just another day. It's just like, I don't know, I do this every single day. It's, it's not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal at all. Looking at his build as well, he's making sure he's a tanky boy, but makes sure that he has the Queen's Wings just to ensure that he lives longer, especially in those clutch moments. It's like, oh, I'm low. Oh, five of you are getting a little too close together. Now we unleash the penalty zone with a flicker. Maybe we should also start building more blood wings. Mm, I don't know. Or rather know. queen's wings. This is queen's wings. Yeah. yeah. Here's the thing, man. Queen's wings is amazing because it's basically the tenacity built in an item. Mm -hmm. and uh, tenacity plus. It's, a, it's, it's something else. It's a bunch of health. There, there's tenacity. There's damage built in. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's skill vamp, spell vamp built in. Yep. Yeah. Here's the thing, right? Well, conditional spell vamp. HP? Yep. Yeah, here's the thing. That's what I want to touch on. It's an emblem in an item plus much more because like you said, the, the, the healing that you'll get is insane, making it so that he can frontline for quite a lot. Right now, we're looking at the MVP highlights, and look at this. Carl DZ got pulled, but he's like, the Melissa's go away actually says, stay right where you are. I wonder if he had the tough boots at that point in time. That'd be interesting to double check as well, but we'll figure it out later. In the meantime, I think what we can talk about for sure is the fact that Fireflux and Unity's defense, especially against Echo, when they're trying to close out these games, probably caught Echo Ooh. off guard, oh. right? I mean, look at these motions. Alien survives for so much longer than he absolutely should. Melissa gets a free reset off of that, and then right here, this play. Yaoi tries to get everything out of him. Alien tries to engage, but almost immediately oh. after the big catch, keep your eyes on Sunshine, right? He's chunking out everybody. It looks so very good until it isn't. The goat himself forcing everything out of him, and Sunshine decides, you know what? Maybe I'll try to turn it around on Benny. Look at the difference of damage, man. That's what happens when you don't have your Inspire up. But again, you guys heard the reaction of me and Leo. That is one of those engages coming in from an EXP laner that makes it so that no matter what lane you play, all of a sudden you want to be an EX EXP laner. I felt the five-man penalty zone. I could have—I swear I could have gotten pulled in too. Mm -hmm. I, I felt my chair. Ooh. Oh, yeah, same, same. <laughs> Just breaking the fourth wall almost instantaneously. Honestly, looking at the items so far, nothing too crazy, nothing too out of the ordinary. Let me just double check that one more time. Yeah, nothing too out, out, out of the ordinary, but keep in mind that Carl Teasy was taking a step back here. He's not looking for that raw damage. That's not his job. That's not his place. More importantly, He's making sure that he does go for uh, the formula just to make sure that he lives a little bit longer, making sure that the amount of on-hit damage is negated so that when he comes for the cleanup, it's going to be a little easier even if we do see Sunshine have his Inspire. Right now, honestly, looking at the itemization as well as the goal, I kind of feel like Fire Flux Impunity, if they had a better fight, say in the mid in the mid stages of the game, right? Because again, we saw how Echo took control throughout the game. It's only during the final pushes where, where Five Rocks Impunity were able to actually control what Echo wants to do. If for the next game, it is not that one-sided going into the end of the game, perhaps it would be a game that I would say 60% Echo still gonna win, but it's not like 70, 80, just like just now. It's not going to be a complete stomp. That's what we know for sure. We know if there's high ground defense from the side of Fireflux Impunity, they can hold on and really drag this out. 
I'm very curious to know what the mentality must have been like, especially after the first two attempts, right? Like, where were they? What were they feeling? Were they like, man, these guys actually know what they're doing? Because they were getting absolutely rolled in the early game, every single objective. And especially when you look at the monster gold stolen, right? 4,145 compared Ooh. to 299. That's what the Carl TZ uh, farming pattern was all about. That's why he was deep into Kazue's farm uh, as early as what, minute two, minute three. Mm -hmm. And now thinking about what game two might look like, right? 60-40, not gonna be a stomp. I'd say maybe it's all for Fireflux Impunity's uh, prerogative to try something new. Here they try to choke down Sanford. What happened? They forced him to show the five-man penalty zone. What, I if, what if they just leave the XP lane alone? What if? I think after the game just now, the coaches are watching are watching the game, right? They got to look at the rotation from the jungler, especially mm -hmm. from Carl Teezy here, where we saw he started the purple buff, Yaoi started the orange buff. So by the time he came by, he only just had to do a little bit more damage, and he gets both buffs relatively quickly. So I kind of feel like this is also one of those things that it's like small micro plays, but it starts out your own team, everyone being one level ahead. And I think that's a very big thing to consider that the coaches and in, in behind the scenes for Fireflux Impunity, they got to talk about this. Either try to do something roughly the same or stop it from happening because every site leaders don't like fighting when you're one level behind. I totally agree with that. And more importantly, so you could see the results actually being achieved so early on. The early uh, the early kill, the Litho Wander falling into the hands of Lancelot. Even before we saw Fredrin even make it anywhere close, he's just one step behind each and every time. So hopefully we do see a bit of an adjustment. I will imagine that if I was in Fireflux Impunity's side, that they'd be looking to say, maybe we need stronger laners, right? Benny QT, obviously, in this in this particular matchup, took a step back, and Samford, this was his time with, obviously, his Sansan -San connection to make it work. What this says, essentially, is comfort ain't enough. You have to win. Mm -hmm. The 50-50 is not a 50-50 when you're playing against Echo. So how do you do that? That's easier said than done when you're playing up against the M4 World Champions, when they can both present the Echo system and the Echo Express. You have to find that sweet spot wherein maybe you're the second or third to the top of the food chain and you're able to, you know, pull a Spider Man on yeah. that Echo Express. I don't know how <laughs> though. I don't know. It's much easier said than done. Mm -hmm. We in the MPL Philippines have yet to figure that out. And again, even in MSC, the best of the best from Southeast Asia and some parts of the world come together. I still haven't quite found that formula that can come close to solving the Echo system. One thing that I really like actually was Sunshine on this Melissa because we definitely saw glimmers of hope just because the, the, the damage output coming in from this Melissa is actually quite large, especially when Echo, they actually do want to want to jumble up together-ish after Yaoi gets an engage. So I kind of feel like they have half of the formula done there yet. Mm -hmm. All they need is to fix the early and mid because we see too much of letting go objectives. And I don't know, like... Here's the thing, sometimes it's smart to let it go, but sometimes you need that you need that passion in your heart and say, no, that's mine. I agree with you. And here's go why. Away. No, I truly agree with you. Because this is what I was tired of during M4. I was tired of teams taking the step back saying, we can wait this out. We can sacrifice an objective. Our high ground defense is better than them. We can wait like 40 minutes to make something happen. I'm tired of that. And that's why it was so refreshing to see Echo break out of that system saying, no, we want to express this. We want to play through multiple avenues and not just one. We are expedite. We are expedite. <laughs> perfect. Literally perfect. I'm going to put away my thesaurus now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. No, I mean, the, 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 the easiest and fastest way from point A to B is a straight line. Mm -hmm. And exactly, that's yeah. what this lineup is all about. Yeah, right now, looking at Yaoi on playing against Fireflux Impunity, I think Fireflux Impunity is the dark horse of the MSC because we can't meet them in M4, so we're excited to see, uh, to meet them in MSC. And if they're excited to meet us, we're also excited about meeting them. An exception. Exciteception. I mean, famous. What was that? <laughs> what was I? What? What? <laughs> They're both excited. They're both excited. Exciteception. I don't know what kind of uh, accent I was putting on there. <laughs>
you, you were trying to be Leonardo DiCaprio, weren't not, you? Not gonna lie, I'm disappointed in myself. So let's move <laughs> on. <laughs> well, look, fam <laughs> famous words coming in from the lover boy himself, the playmaker, right? And again, he's playing against someone like Apex, which is a completely different style to him. But just the same, they have similarities, right? They, mm -hmm. they both are capable of playing setup and initi uh, setup initiator and support type. Roamers, right? Both of them have an Estes in them somewhere. Uh, Yaoi specifically has a Valir. Uh, you have uh, Apex 47 with his Estes, right? With the Turkish Delight. Mm -hmm. They both have a mean Atlas. Both can play a Franco for sure, right? So I understand uh, the excitement from both sides, but something that, that, that tickles me, I don't know if in a good or a bad way, is there seem to be so many dark horses in MSC. I think we, uh, I'd say de facto lost one already in Phoenix mm -hmm. earlier today, mm -hmm. but so many people say so many things. There's, what, half a dozen Dark Horses in MSC this year. Yeah, I kind of feel like even on the Zodiac, we have a lot of animals. Yo, we we, we should, be utilizing, should be utilizing more of them. Uh, I'm not so sure about that one because, again, some of these Zodiacs, not so fun to be labeled as. I'm just going to admit that straight off the bat because I'm the year of the rat, so I don't think people want to be like, ah, that's the hoping dark rabbit. rat. Oh. The hoping that, rabbit. So that, that. That kind of zodiac. I was, I was somewhere else. I was star signs, bro. Oh, star signs. Okay, that probably should. That's been. horoscopes. Uh, there that's you horoscopes. go. Yeah. You're, you're such a light Scorpio, bro. <laughs> that actually <laughs> sounds good. Yo, this team is the light Scorpio. <laughs> you know what? This team. I don't know why I thought about that. Looking at the horoscope, they're totally a Sagittarius. <laughs> I'm a Sagittarius. I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> Not Yo, that. I don't want to be part of this. I don't want to be Libra. Look, I am. <laughs> I was going to say, why do you know this? But you guys have been working for the better part of half a decade, yeah. so never mind. <laughs> Don't worry, you're part of this. Surumpun, surumpun. Yeah, yeah, we're sama a sama. Cool ah. Malaysian desk that's talking about zodiacs. That we no. were talking about dark horse horses. Yeah, you no. Know, do you not agree? Do you not agree? I agree. There's yeah. so many dark horses. I agree that there's a lot of dark horses, but I totally. But does that not negate the fact of being a dark horse? It doesn't negate the fact of being a dark horse. It's just the fact that most people are seeing fresh new faces, right? That's and that's right. the idea. Seeing these international teams, and especially under different names, is going to be labeling them as dark horses, knowing that who knows what could happen. We don't have a guaranteed champion, but we do have a bunch of competitors now. Let's have a look. Oh, wait, hold on. Did I hear this correctly? That's right. Jura is going back into the jungler. Uh huh. Jungler For position. Formerly known as DNZ. He's going to go back in his comfort, and we're going to get their formerly XP laner, or their sub XP Lunar, now going to go in mid. Ooh, how I mean, does this change things up? I mean, I did say if we try the same thing over and over again, and we're hitting a brick wall, we got to change something. This is a pretty big change. That's insanity. That's in it's insanity if you don't change. That's right, if you keep trying it. But yeah. no, this is impunity. Fireflux impunity. Mm, uh, Leo, you are on something today. I feel like the ride, you and the riders, they, you've been passing each other each other. Yeah, whatever you're having, I want it too. Yeah. Where? You want to be the GC? <laughs> <laughs> you want to be the GC too? Yes. You know, considering what's been coming out today, yes, I do want to be part of that. I feel so out of the loop here. But while the teams get prepared up on stage, I think we need to keep uh, into consideration here that Fimp most likely is going to go for first pick here. I mean, again, in addition to switching it up no. right, with the lineup. No? No. I mean, aliens say no. Oh, uh, Because okay. we are in the same group, so we will not meet in the playoffs. Oh, no. They're not afraid. Uh, not about the, the, the switch up. Oh, we'll sorry, see. sorry. I, I, I thought Alien answered you, man. I, I, I feel bad. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Because you were asking a question, and the first thing I saw was no. This is, <laughs> but this is not a good sign. This is not a good sign that fear is not part of the equation. Yes. Despite them being M4 champions, being the best in the best region in the world right now for MLBB, it's great coming in from Alien, one of their veteran players, and saying, no, we're not afraid. No, this is we're the beauty afraid. of it, right? M2, M3, how many times did you hear a team be like, oh my god, I absolutely, I admire this team. I, oh, I yeah, hope yeah. to fight against them, but also I'm just going to play really, really scared and Get let them go. Starstruck. Exactly, Starstruck Syndrome. I'm sick of that. And it's beautiful to see that here in MSC, everybody has an unreal confidence in themselves to be number one. I mean, you got to go in with the mentality that I am the best. You may be second or third, I kind of don't care, as long as I'm number one. I love that. We've been hearing that from the player uh, interviews, right? Like, yeah. where they, they, they try to rank each other, they try to rank themselves, and I think that's key. I think that's key. You, you got to continue that way, because if not, then you're already in a losing position. But it's such a weird spot to be in, right? Because you have to think that you're the best, but at the same time, 
you got to be willing to work with other people, right? It's it's such a it, it, I I love the idea because you're it's like you're trying to be two extremes at the same time where you want to be the best, you want to have this ego that you will make the play, but at the same time you got to trust other people. You got to be like I'm willing to sacrifice myself for the benefit of the team. It's getting philosophical. There's a lot of juggling here when it comes to how you look at yourself and how you look at the people around you. That's the Sagittarius thing, by the way. All right. Yeah, I mean fair enough, but also keep in mind they're having these philosophical questions being 19 to 18 year olds very early on into their lives. All the while playing video games for their job. Absolutely. In front of thousands of people. <laughs> and then watching their streams, like, okay, maybe they're not that philosophical. Right? <laughs> Think about that the next time you want to blast one of our professional players, all right? Agreed. Put Agreed. yourselves in their boots and their pants and their secret lab chairs. See if you can do a better job. <laughs> I don't think so. The secret lab chairs is a very big part of it. It yeah. helps. It helps. It helps, it helps. plenty. It helps because plenty. yeah, training helps with your with your mechanics, right? With your, uh, what you call it? Muscle memory. Yes. But the heart. The heart, the brain, the passion, the bravery. Alien, his top three EXP laners. Isn't, isn't that an insight to what we were just talking about? Yeah. Right? He doesn't think of himself as number one. Maybe, 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 or, the, maybe the question is like, besides yeah, you. Yeah, besides yourself. Besides yourself, I'm right? Gonna go, I'm going to go find the alien later. I'm just DM him on Instagram and say, hey, where were you in your 1 to 12 as XP laners? Let's just assume Freddy was like, okay, besides yourself. Oh, no, I'm going to find out. All right. I want to know the answer I'll, to that. want to know, too. I want to know the answer to that. This is an EXP lane issue. Supports can stay out of this. Yeah, the, every other role, but here's the thing, right? I kind of feel like putting yourself at number one, and the moment someone asks you, what about Sanford? And then you're like, I mean, he's good, I guess. Is that not also just a valid way of approaching the question? All right, except for Sanford. Who's <laughs> in <laughs> Kid is on top of the world right now. Truly, truly he is. I want to pull this back a little bit, right? I'm wondering what's going on in Coach Tic Tac's mind. Like, what really rattles him, right? Did that previous game rattle? I was like, whoa. They actually have studied our behaviors. Do we need to change this up for ourselves? Or because sticking to the standard is something that might not necessarily work out for them a second time. Uh, me being the closest to what we could call a tic-tac expert on the desk, uh -huh. oh. I'd like to think it still humbled him. Uh, he's one of the most humble men I've ever met in my entire life, still being an MPL champion, an M4 world champion. I'm sure that what Fireflux and put on the table here in game one still made him think. He still looked at Coach, uh, right. Coach Trevor and said, I was pretty good. All right, I'm gonna put you in the hot seat. All top, right, top three most humble people you've ever met. Oh wow! Uh, right now, rankings are difficult. Very difficult. Uh -huh. am, I, am I part of this ranking? I'm except for yourself. <laughs> except for yourself. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm putting myself number one. I'm putting myself number one. I've never met anyone more humble than me. I'm but so now humble. I'm, I'm humble <laughs> by the fact that we're going into the draft of game number two, possibly the last game of the day. Echo going up against. Fire, Flux, Impunity. All right, let's get right into this. I'm looking for two heroes, two very specific heroes here. I'm wanting to see that new Atlas skin, and I want to see Alpha. Like, come on, somebody's got to do it. Wow! We're seeing that Fire, Flux, Impunity wanted to stay on second wow. pick. All right, it's not as ridiculous given the lineup switch. Maybe with this Lunar mid, they want to stay second. They want to be able to get the two-pick swing in that close-up in the last phase. <laughs> the Lancelot Bando, we gotta talk about that because honestly, a lot of casters I've been talking about, they've been saying Lancelot is one of those heroes that is very oppressive, especially around the mid where you, you can deal a lot of damage to, to, I would say, low mobility mid laners. And now, even Sanji's hero has been banned, but that has let go the 1-1. One -one. That is ridiculous. I don't know. Teams that decide, you know what? I'm a, let's challenge it. Let's give them. Let's give them the Wawa. Let's see what's going to happen. And half the time, it's a crossbow of tank to three different people, all of them dying, and a quick sweep afterwards. Dude, I, I was looking at the one one's eyes. And it's crazy. I was going to talk about the Kaja, but you got mesmerized. Yaoi himself took the Kaja away. So now, oh wow. Okay, they. They're prepared. This is an interaction. They're prepared. This is an interaction I'm excited for. Given the nerfs on 1-1, plus the buffs on Fovius, 
that DF is gonna come out much, much faster. I mean, there's a lot of arguments to be made. Like, I'm taking it straight from Mirko's mouth, right? Most people would agree that, yes, this is going to be the natural counter. Every single time one more auto attacks, she hops. And when she hops, immediately you're going to see the demonic force come straight out of Fovius. But then there's the counter argument of, yeah, Fovius can close the distance, but that makes him that much more vulnerable for his weakness spots to proc an early crossbow of Tang. The thing is, the selection was way too fast. Mm -hmm. It kind of felt like they predicted for all of this to happen. They let the 1-1 one -one through. They mm -hmm. let the 1-1 one -one through. They, they learned the behaviors. If the 1-1 one -one is open, they're going to take the bait. They're going to want it. Looking at the players' faces right now, even they're like, okay, so far, everything is going according to plan. Now, what's the next step? They ban out the Eve. They ban out the Valentina. In fact, four bans onto Sanji. Big respect to the mid laner of Echo. All right, are they not doing the same thing? I mean, not the same thing, but they're now gimping half of the San San Duo. Earlier it was Sanford, this time it's Sanji. How deep does this young man have to dig into his hero pool? What are we gonna see here from Sanji? Well, I, it does come at a cost, right? Because at the end of the day, it is going to be both Arlet as well as the Fovius on FIMP's side. And again, I'm expecting this Arlet to be in the support position, but who knows at this point, right? Grabbing the Farsa here? Is that's what's going on? Because oh, wait, 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 wait. not a lot is, is open still. Oh yeah, no. We, we reacted so hard and so fast to the uh, Fovius pickup, but yes, the, the Arla. Oh wait, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, what, wait, what is what? this? Apex? Apex? Oh Fovius? wait, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mid Fovius. Mid Fovius. All right. Well, yeah. I've in, seen in, it before. I've in seen recent before. years, yes, mid Fovius has become a thing. I've seen things as crazy as oh. mid jungle Fovius, but yes, I here think, we go. I think this confirms it. Apex Minotaur. So mid, 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 mid Fovius, right? right. right. Man, I was thinking, okay, yeah, you already got the Fovius, you have the Arlet. The Arlet is like the insurance policy to make sure that this 1-1 doesn't get to go around for free. But the fact is, they've even doubled up upon it. You know what? We need premium insurance plus with the Minotaur as well. Win or lose, this draft is very interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm very much looking forward to see how this goes, but not enough damage just yet. I'm looking at this draft. They need a damage uh, jungler here. And they're going for the Amon. The Amon deals a lot of damage. It's not going to be easy for Benny Cutie. It's not going to be easy. They're looking to quell the storm here. Mm -hmm. I'm loving the draft. I'm, I'm going Fire Flux Impunity. You did already. <laughs> oh, I did. Yeah, sorry, I, <laughs> I forgot. the series started. No, but yes, fundamentally, theoretically, on, on, a, on the scale of just how kits work and interact with each other, I like this draft. I like this draft as well, but I'm curious to see what the battle spells are going to be from both sides. I expect for Fireflux Impunity to be greedy with this. Take flickers. You need to be able to make this play. And from the side of Echo, it's a little 50-50. Are they going to be greedy with flickers for themselves, or are they immediately going to go for the Purify? Because I feel like either way, it really kind of doesn't matter. It's all about positioning, and Sanji might be the big player for Echo this time round. Game number two going in. An amazing draft. Changing up the lineups. Having the Fovius. Having the Amon. How, is, how are they going to pair up going up against Echo? Game number two, who's going to take the win? Are we going to extend to all three games for tonight? Well, let's find out as we jump right into the land of Dawn. Echo on blue side versus Fire Flux Impunity on the red side. Looking at the battle spells here, rather interesting. But yes, they're doing it all over again. Echo, check them out. Yeah, looking at the situation, Carl Keys is going to solo the purple while Ben Cutie as well as Yaoi, they were starting the orange oh. buff. So this is going to be a very fast clear here for Carl Teasy. Call him Fast Clear McGee. Yeah, under a minute, he's able to take both buffs, totally ignore the small caps, and then go straight for the Little Wonder. Are you level three, man? Look at that, they can't keep up with this. And especially when you are playing Amon, you're naturally going to be slower. He did take Mystery Shop. He's not going to try and go out of his bounds. He needs his items more than anything else. Yeah, I would argue that he wants his items more than he wants levels. Looking at the situation right now, um, Kira, level three, and right now, Carl Tizi also level 3, about to get level 4 in-game equipment. He is going for the Steel Lake Plates again. Very interesting. It does seem like he wants to be able to tank the damage coming in from Sunshine in the early stages of the game. Mm, fair enough, fair enough. Alien, he himself decides to go for the tenacity, making sure that huh. he is just tanky enough to be that bot, uh, that stun bot, right? To stick on to the right targets. But all of it, this composition that we're seeing from uh, Firefox Impunity is to really punish Benny QT, which begs the question, right? Who's going to take care of Sanji? Whoa! 
Kyura walks dead. in, oh! lands a kill on Sanji, barely survives. I was just gonna say, I was just gonna say, buying pants early, does that not show respect for Amon's Kyura? No, Kyura's Amon. Yeah, but here's the thing, because he deals magic damage, so I'm thinking like, maybe not. I'm thinking a magic rope would be a little bit better, but now, right. looking at the situation, Alien taking quite a bit of damage, and Echo takes that as a sign, like, we can go for this, no one's gonna stop us. Look at this preemptive Black Dragon form patrolling this turtle pit. Quick turtle take here for Echo. Yep, beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff coming out from Echo as always. But again, when you're looking at Friday Flux Impunity, their main game plan, it's not for the side objectives. They want kills. They are looking for people, not just neutral objectives. Apex 47 now, level four. Carl Teasy finds oh. Lunar, taunts onto two. Oh, Kira. watch Kura gets a few stacks on the Carl Teasy. He survives, forcing out a third air strike. Down goes the goat. Kura gets a kill. Join first blood. Beautiful, but down on bottom side. Oh, oh. sunshine. He has no backup here. Yeah. Apex. Oh, they're so far off. They're really far off. With first blood's already achieved. I just love these off tempo plays coming up from Fireflux Impunity. That's the main goal. You're not playing the traditional style. You're looking to find the holes in this golden standard that Echo has set in place. It's almost like game number one. Let's see what they're going to do. Now that we see what they're going to do, we got to see what's going on because converting EXP to the mid lane, originally an EXP laner, Lunar, will be playing as a mid laner, replacing Rosa. And the thing is, I kind of feel like, let's just play War Strikes. What are you good at? Fighters. Well, that's a bit awkward, but we're gonna roll with it anyways. Yeah, no, isn't this the next best thing to a compromise? But wait, down bottom, Carl Deasy tries to get a beat on a sunshine. Here comes Yaoi, the playmaker, gets a face full of lead, but Sanji takes down the marksman before anything is said. Kyura very low, here comes Alien, supporting his jungler, using that Amon's kit to try and heal up. Wants to get the kill, Sanford's still alive. Oh. Alien can get his man. Yeah, unfortunate. Unfortunate indeed, but he wants to try and cancel Sanford's. Wow, Sanford, Nerves of Steel just stood there. Nah, mm. you're not gonna do it. Try me. I know me. it, I know it, Tipos. <laughs> Tipos. I'm, I'm number one. <laughs> <laughs> number two, three, and, and above. You guys can't, can't do anything to me. Right, right now, Sunshine is just clearing his minions in terms of goal lead, not as much as the early oh. game, and Sanford gets pulled back. Early final slash here, trying to go for the outplay, and Sanford falls, Alien gets the kill, down goes Kyura, Sanji and Yaoi gets the pull, DJ taking down Alien, and there's another fight here, near the turtle pit, Kati gets the final appraiser's wrath, but here comes the DF from Lunar, Ben Cutie looking to take the skies, couple He's more weakness points, here comes the DF, pow, one more pow, he's the one who goes down, Benny Cutie gets a kill. Yep, he had no choice. He had to use it. He already used this Purify at the same time. They were so close to taking out Carl TZ, but just so far as he manages to walk away with just a sliver of health. Now keep in mind that Fireflux Impunity, Kira should be okay here, right? No. Nope. Gets a passive on it. No! Oh, he went back strike. in. Oh. Pops him. And Carl TZ gets a turtle there. Fireflux overstayed their welcome. That's a little unfortunate. They gotta keep playing for these off-tempo plays, right? They gotta keep in mind, don't fall into the same habits. Don't listen to the traditional rules of Mobile Legends. We're expecting these fights to happen around the turtle, but that's not the main goal. At the end of the day, they're trying to shut down Benny QT. And if they don't shut him down, or at least build up a lead enough to make it happen, then you have to take a step back. I gotta say, the interaction between the items as well. Yaoi's going oh. in. Oh, there's a flicker, plus a pull on the big cow. And Lunar takes to the skies. But wait, can he take down Benny Cutie before? He's the one who does so. And there's the crossbow of Tang. Benny Cutie takes down another double kill. Make it a trip. Oh, but no, Sunshine gets him down. He does eventually get the 3K, but that's a shutdown. Big money over to Fimp, but Echo wins the trade. I gotta say, early trades here, Echo, they're like, okay, you guys wanna fight? We're not running away, we can fight. Sanji right now, I kinda feel like in MSC we haven't seen a lot of Farsas, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have forgotten the amount of damage that a Farsa can pull up, and then you're like, oh wait, now I remember. Now I remember. But now, one of the problem is, Carl Teasy, early item, the Steel Lake Plates, so far has been playing dividends. Whoa, Rogue Black Dragon coming in <laughs> from the west. Tries to get his man, there's the Petrify. Kyura still alive, healing up, and they disengage. Whoa, 
that was oh that just happened i i'm rather surprised that echo decided to make that call they got to temper themselves here right they cannot fall into their bloodlust they cannot go skull for the skull god as they usually do especially when it's the right place right time because remember fimp they gotta play off tempo and if they can Again, hit Echo at their heels, right at their ankles, tilt them off Keter just enough. That could be the opening that they're looking for, right? Again, Sanji has been playing a very disciplined game, but Samford, he's got to calm down a little. Two Radiant Armor so far. I'm smelling a third coming up for Sanford. And this does well, not only against the Amon, but as well as the Fovius. So right now they really got to go over for sunshine to really deal the damage because i'm feeling they're about to keep their ceiling soon oh there's a pole on the alien oh he does oh, get oh. dashes in and that's a double kill for sunshine alien very low can benny to get the kill not gonna Kira. go ahead and take to the skies oh amazing response what? by fireflox Beautiful play coming in from Apex. He literally hops over the uh, over the turtle pit, flickers in and using the Minoan Fury and catches all three. A great response, but how do they convert? Oh, Black Dragon 4 by Sanford. Help in. Carl DZ secure this turtle, but Lunar to the rescue. Oh, oh. this is the retribution. Kyura gets it. And right now, looking at the situation. It is a very good trade. Carl Teasy is a little bit angry. He wants to go forward. Oh, Prazer's Wrath. Not enough damage under the two that got hit. Alien and Lunar forced to back out. There's a Feathered Air Strike. Carl Teasy still wants more. That's a clear disengage and a push down bottom. Woo. Everything that's been happening so far, it's great to see that this time, Fireflux and Punity are saying, you know what? Disrespect the space as much as you can. Make Echo tilt. Make them go for that first move. If Sanford tries to go for that Black Dragon form, we can pull back because getting in and out of the fight isn't that difficult for our particular composition. Like, personally, I would have imagined that Gushin was going to be the play for Cure instead of the Amon. But the movement speed and the camouflage has helped him out. Oh, there's a pull on the Apex. Can he survive? He does, but only for a second longer. Oh, Benny QT Airlines gets 2K once more. 6 1 and 0 oh on this 1 1. Kura is standing by. But the thing is, Sanji, Yaoi, Benicuity really preventing Fireflux and Punity from really doing whatever oh. they want. Benicuity is taking quite a lot of damage, but we gotta look at Yaoi every single time an attempt happens onto either Sanji or onto Benicuity, it will be denied by Yaoi. So they really got to make sure whoever they're, they're targeting for, Yaoi cannot be there. The problem is, Yaoi's everywhere. He's literally everywhere. He always has his divine judgment in the most convenient of places you would almost feel if you are a part of the Turkish squad. But more importantly, I think that at the end of the day, it's all going to come down to that high ground defense, right? Echo, they're building up the lead like we saw previously. Not as much and not as devastating as game number one, but definitely a lot more even. Right now, Echo, they're pushing up top. And again, Yaoi is just everywhere. What are they looking for right now? Because they have two ways to engage the fight. The Minotaur as well as the Arlen. But every single time they initiate, something goes wrong. Either Yaoi is there, Sanford is there. They got to make sure. But right now, Yaoi can seal oh, who he's going to find. Let's spot it out. They don't Lunar, see Apex. Displaced. They don't see Sanford. Sunshine making the most of this. Just whoa. Oh, and they, no. see Sanford. They, don't no. Know. they don't know. They don't know. This is deep. Oh, Yaoi, get over here. Gets the pull on Alien. And here comes Apex. Close flickers in. And there's the answer. Benny QT goes down. Oh, but straight enough for Sunshine. They're still going. Lunar takes on Carl Teasy. That's a man advantage for Fimp. Double kill for Lunar. Yo, what? DF going in. Yaoi gets his immortality. Still intact. And that's a trade. Three for one. Gideon, I, 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 I could have sworn that was Echo. Yeah. What happened? Suddenly. Right now, Fire Rocks and Beauty, they're the one that won the fight. What happened? Lord. Come on. What? We got to pull out that replay. So many things happened at once. The canceling of the Feathered Airstrike, the kill onto Benny QT. All of it happening at almost the exact 
same time. Let's pull up the replay one more time and break it down. Because first of all, we see the initial capture. We keep your eyes on Benny QT. He gets a little too close and gets caught up in the big play from Apex and immediately the follow-up from Lunar, uh, Lunar to get into the middle of that fight, making it basically impossible. Like Call TZ as well as Benny QT, almost dying at the same time. This is what we were building up to, right? Mm -hmm. We were talking about how Fireflux and Punity, their lineup is amazing at re-engages. Despite Sanford's amazing pincer maneuver, you, you can't beat the fact that there were two or three big ticket ults that Fireflux were holding onto. And that's what led to this big win for them. They're now ahead, a thousand gold. Right now Sanford up top, make sure that he can clear the wave. Sunshine really wants this turret. And it looks like gonna get really close. Carl Gizzi is there to help Sanford. And it looks like for now, he's not able to defend the top turret. The Lord is marching bottom. Whoa. Alien pulls in Carl Deasy, but Carl Deasy is able to survive, especially having that Radiant Armor, can handle the damage coming in from Amon. Yep, he takes the damage, and more importantly, they get a majority of the outer turns, and that's the best that Fireflux and Purity can get. This is their very first Lord, right? It's not that strong, you're not expecting too much from it, but now, how do they turn this around and get aggressive? How do they set up this situation again? Well, Carl TZ is moving forward, Apex 47 taunted, and the thing that I like about the fight is the fact that Kira and Alien, they understand that they could kite out of the way mm -hmm. and then engage back in. Their real trouble is Sanji when it comes to damage because Benicuti, yes, does quite a lot of damage, but I kind of feel like, leave that to Kira, he can handle that. The rest, you gotta shut down Sanji. Let's not forget about some of the smaller synergies between the heroes from the side of Fireflux, like Sunshine, especially with Bennett's Rage, with the Minoan Fury, and arguably even with the final slash. You think you're out of it? Nope. You get sweeped back into such a high damage all. And let's not forget, it doesn't have to be Bennett's Rage. It could be Nibiru's Passion as well. Looking at the items as well, in terms of damage, I think Benicuti is going for that Malefic Roar because the front line coming in from Fireflux Infinity is getting just a little bit annoying because look, actually it's surprising. Looking at the Fovius, not really doing any defensive items, going straight on damage. Nope, uh, this is what they want. They want some representation of burst because, again, consider the new buff on a Minotaur, right? The yep. almost genius wand-esque effect of his passive wherein every time he hits someone with a skill, it lowers their physical and magic defense. So I get it. They want both DPS and DOT. Let's not forget about also the fact that he gives adaptive armor or, well, or magic resist, depending on the situation. And that's the beauty of it. It allows Lunar to actually get deep into that fight. Let's not forget that CCs, especially if they displace an opponent or arguably even a knockup, procs the demonic force. You already hear the grumblings of the Lord. Already on the map. It looks like Fireflux, Impunity, they're all here except for Cura which is on the top side of the map, but coming back down. Ooh. He should be seeing Sanford, but I kind of oh. feel like Sanford's seeing him first. No, they both see each other. Yaoi goes in. Will he oh. get Sunshine? Flickers in, spent, and he's going to get welcomed in by Apex and Alien. Look at this. Lunar very low. Forced to use the Winter Truncheon. That's a pickoff for Echo. That's 5v4 now. I wonder, is there going to be a steal in our near future? Watch Kyura, watch Carl TZ, look at the Lord, and that's Kyura what? stealing it away! They take down Benny Kyuri as well, plus a massive Mino and Fury by Apex 47, <laughs> and now Yaoi, the playmaker, trying to take it down, but he's going to go down as well, alongside what? Carl TZ. It's just Sanji no! here! Triple kill for Kyura! Say his name! DND! Oh... My God. This you guys feel it? You guys feel a third game? The tides are changing. You guys feel it? I'm feeling a third game here. Oh, man, it's coming. We all want it. It's going to happen. And now they're looking to go for the end. Dude, right now, only Sanji is alive. Alien is tanking Final it. Final Sanji is pulled back. He goes down. What's the base? What's the base? Five Flux Impunity. Take a game from Echo. The world champion suffered their defeat here. Now it's equalized. One to one. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a series on our hands. Oh my goodness. I'm at a loss for words. What a great play coming out for Firefox Immunity. What an amazing attempt from Echo's side. Just one misplay. Just unfortunately, Benny QT using his own inbuilt purify a little too early. I would almost want to see. It is a misplay, sure. But I kind of feel like this is, a, this is an outplay. It really is. I mean, the draft alone, that is something to marvel at. It's very courageous, man. It's, it's very brave of you, 
to actually go outside of the bounds of the meta. We haven't seen Phobius for a while. We haven't seen Amon for a while. The fact that they're like, these heroes are good. I don't care what the meta says. We can adjust. And again, I love the bravery. I love the adjustment. I love the creativity. But again, this is just game number two, the equalizer. We're going to see game number three. If they can, if they can take down Echo, this is a game changer. They needed Cure in the jungle. They just needed mm -hmm. Cure in the jungle. And I think they found, they found the perfect spot in the ecosystem. They understand that, no, 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 we're not prey. We are also predators. It's disgusting. It's disgusting how well this team played. It's disgusting how Echo responded to it at the same time. The consistent adaptations from both sides were impeccable. But at the end of the day, whoever presses the button first loses out. And in this case, Betty QT did not press it in time. But with that being said, right, how could he possibly have outplayed that? With so much CC and only one ability that purifies one CC at a time, Final Slash, no and Fury, as well as just even if all else fails, Amon walks up, presses his ult. Here, take this. You're below 50% HP. You're gone. I think we're going to have to take our time because there's a lot to analyze here. We got to go step by step, but we're going to go in backwards because the final engage, Yaoi with the conceal, unable to get Sunshine. And it's not just this game. In the previous game as well, we see that Yaoi tries to catch Sunshine and Sunshine could see the future. He has the Sharingan. He knows that it's going to happen. He was able to deny it and then overall just capitalize over it. I think this is one of those things where you're like, you're starting to show your hand a little bit too much. Is that a problem here? I wouldn't say showing your hand too much. I think this is a lot of just pre-preparation for Echo, right? And we're finally getting to see it for the very first time. The question is, really, who is going to be the MVP of this match? Because a majority of the members from Fireflux Impunity played out of their minds. Yeah, speaking of playing out of their minds, the MVP for this game, Apex 47, 0, 2, and 1. Ladies and gentlemen, don't look at the KDA. Look at what this man did for his entire team. The team is looking at the MVP and they're like, yo, you know what? MSC, you guys know what's up. If anything, this is the best kind of MVP, where the, the numbers best. don't explain it, right? It, it forces you to watch the game. And folks, if you do watch the game, you're doing it right. Check out what Apex 47 was able, able to do against the world champions, against Yaoi. He outspaced them, outpositioned them, and caught a majority of Echo in his Minoan Fury more than once. Like I'd say there were two or three big ticket Minoan Furies here. Might I say, even if it's not the top of the standings, I think Minotaur is back. Yeah, I think Minotaur is back too. The way that he's utilizing the time, the fact that it's three hits and the final hit is going to be that big knockup. And especially since you can fake people out, <laughs> you, you can go in on the second beat thinking, oh, I'm going to flicker in early and everyone's going to think that's going to be the final beat. So they all use their abilities and guess what? It's too late. They get knocked up and let's look at it all over again because this was the very beginning of it. Dude, looking at the highlights, it's really not as close as we thought it was uh, because, again, in the early stage of the game, actually, Fireflux Infinity, they started a lot of the fights, and I kind of like watching how Sunshine is playing the game, but look at Apex oh, 47. Wow. He engages and he disengages. He has the engage. He has the peel. He is the difference maker because he is causing a lot of problems and also a lot of space for his own team. Problems for Echo, space for his own team. I don't want people to think he's, he's <laughs> so giving problems to, to his own just team. Just to clear yeah. it out. Here yeah, we go. Just clear it up, yeah. Watch this. Oh! Dude, but Kira as well, man. We got to give him a shout out. Yeah. The kills, the retributions, it's amazing. That's right. No, Apex 47 is the perfect example of a setup MVP. He set up everything for Sunshine, everything for Apex. And yeah, again, we're talking about pressing buttons. Lunar, he just had to go DF as soon as those dudes started moving around. Yeah, I'm just surprised that he was able to hit that retribution. There was just so much chaos in there, and especially with the knockup, it actually blocks the Lord's health bar in its entirety. So it's like you're you're making a little bit of a guess and you're predicting when exactly you're going to do it. But this game ends at one of the most symmetrical games I've ever seen. Kill score of 13-13, game time of 15-15. Make a wish. Looking at the KDA, can we really say Echo did a lot of mistakes? 6-3 and 1, Ben Cutie. 5-2 uh, and 7, Sanji. 1-2 and 8, Yaoi. Carl Tizi, not the greatest. Sanford as well. Wait, first loss? In a while, yeah. In a while, yeah. What Blacklist International what? could not solve, Fireflux Impunity did in the group stages of MSC. So the baby 
the junior blacklist is now stepping up. I don't know, but by hook or by crook, they have done it. I don't know how, but yeah, in all of MPL Philippine Season 11 playoffs, Blacklist and Echo have not met. And then come the Grand Finals, M4 Deja Vu. But here, in <laughs> Game 2, this is this is insane. Truly insane. We got to watch more MTC these days, man. What exactly built these guys to this point? How did they, more importantly, how did they come up with this? Just got to say, graphics were a little bit misleading. It's 0, 2, and 11. That makes not much more sense. But yeah. Darn it. <laughs> Again, look there at you go. That, that, there you go. We were missing one digit. Yeah, you know, zero to eleven. Then, looking at the game, I kind of feel like this is one of those things where MSC people say is for Southeast Asia region. Now they're looking at it's like, yo, the next king of Southeast Asia might not necessarily come from Southeast Asia. All right, maybe too soon to tell. Too soon. But this is this is a, a great step forward in changing the dynamics this, of the power uh, rankings in MSC. For now, you guys must be saying this is a bit of an overreaction, but this just show how big of a deal it is for you to take one game off of the world champions. Because again, it's not the end of the series. Let me remind everyone here. Mm -hmm. But again, having this one win, it does change it does shift quite a lot in the atmosphere here in the in the arena. Yeah, the, the status quo has changed definitely. Right, right. Before this, we we're hearing a lot of shouts. We we're hearing a lot of the rumbling, especially oh, game number one. Carl TZ going to get a signature pick on that Lancelot. Instant rumbling on that stage. This almost dead silence yeah. as soon as. Uh, as Fim was able to close out that game and the roar afterwards, what a turnaround. Pikachu meme face. Pikachu meme That's face. That's what <laughs> happened. I love that. At 15-15, Pikachu meme face. Oh. Oh, for those who don't know it, it's that one. I gotta say, man, for all of you at home, all the folks watching MSE 2023 right now, we're in for a treat. Game number three, I don't know why, my brain is saying one thing. I think something is whispering to me. What is it? The next game, Echo might explode. They might end it quick. They have to. Again, that's one way to reset. You just show the world that, hey, game two was a show, yes, but back to reality. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think even for Coach Tic Tac it's, uh, himself, right? We were, I mentioned this earlier, like how would he feel after? It's like, yes, he's a humble person. Yes, it's like, wow, that was pretty good. After this, all the more. it's oh. like, whoa, hold the phone. We got to talk about this one more time. Because again, <laughs> the research that has been put through, the extensive research in a matter of fact, because that draft happened so quickly. That first phase, boom, boom, boom. Each and every time they knew exactly what they wanted. This has been pre-planned since the very beginning. A conspiracy in a matter of fact. They practiced this draft yesterday. They might literally be just yesterday. <laughs> that, and they also practiced it back all the way in Turkey. Because it, it could happen. Because again, they knew that Echo was going to be in their group for weeks now, right? Mm -hmm. And speaking of which, I need to manage my uh, guest coins. I, this, this changes things. <laughs> this <laughs> definitely changes things. <laughs> Dude, so sorry for Get everyone. Your pass, by the way. So sorry for everyone with your <laughs> guest coins. I think a lot of people. Voted for this to be a 2-0. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Welcome to MSC. Can you imagine all the Turkish fans that decided to go for a game <laughs> to win for Fire Flux Impunity? How much of a conversion that would have been? The odds between all the, the stonks, two? All the stonks. All oh. the more makes it easier for you to get your uh, Triumphant Eagle Leomord skin in case you missed out on it. Or uh, the, the, the Claude skin, too. I'm excited, man. I'm, th 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 this, this spices things up. Most deaf. This spices things up because, again, let's put ourselves in the position of a coach. Coach Tita, you were talking about him. Yep. How would you respond seeing an Arlit and then seeing a Fovius? Quick snaps. Just picked up no fear. Nope. Showing him like, yeah, we don't care. So that makes this all the more a conversation yeah. to highlight Coach Bad Gal Sef, Coach Osprey, right? This is, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. From a country that has no MPL, taken down the world champion. It's ridiculous. It truly is ridiculous. And I think here, this is going to be one of the few times Coach Tic Tac is going to look at the rest of the team. It's like, guys, I need you to quiet down. Get ready for me to call you when necessary because we're going to look to counter draft this. We cannot have these set plays because these guys have figured out the playbook. Yeah, no, and you can see it in the face of Coach Treb as well. Tick, let's do it. All right, we're going to do this right. We got to do this right this time. We are not going to fall into the pit trap.
reminding myself again, Bright X Flash going up against Onik, very close game. Evo Sledges going up against uh, Phoenix, very close game. That's right. Now looking at this, Echo, it does give me the impression no team is safe. My personal tagline, there is absolutely no absolutes. And we haven't even seen Blacklist play. Yeah, that's the worst part. We haven't seen other powerhouses come and rumble just yet. Not even outplayed even. That's right. No Blacklist yet, no outplay. And a lot of people have stonks in both of them. I do, personally. Dude, this is... They're both in my top four, five. <laughs> oh, man, my power rank. <laughs> my gas coins. Seven. Because again, looking looking at, at this situation, this is what I love. And people keep... I, the thing that I like in terms of the patches, right? I'm hearing less and less complain about the meta. The only thing is like, yo, we want, we want the assassins back into the jungle. But other than that, right? Other than that, this shows how equal things have been. Just because you're at the top, that's the problem about being at the top. Mm -hmm. You only have one more direction to go. Yep. And that's going down. Yeah. But it also does say that maybe some of the teams that we've been kind of like questioning about their standard place, their unorthodox side, maybe they're just ahead of their time. Oh yeah, perhaps. <sighs> In a sense, they're here hiding quite a lot and other teams, now they're like, okay, we gotta take this seriously, but let's move the conversation over to game number three, the final game of the day. We're looking at all the players, they're sitting down, and looking at the the facial expressions, it's a little bit lighter for Fireflux Impunity. And now we're looking at Echo, almost the exact opposite. They're like, we haven't been this series for a while. Yeah. We got to do this. Yeah, look at the pout on 40. And look at Carlton he's slumped over. I'm sure they also can't believe what just happened. Because again, that last team fight, the, the, the last, I'd say, minute or two of game two was like falling in love. It was slow, but also just quick at the same time. Ah, oh, yeah. that was a very poetic way of putting it. Fault in our stars. <laughs> I wish I could take credit. Yeah, yeah. I if, appreciate if you just, that. If you just stayed silent, I, I wouldn't know. No, I would have called him out. I was about to call him out oh. on it until he <laughs> dropped, dropped the John Green in it. And then I was like, okay, fair enough, fair enough. He, got, he beat me to it as always. What? Master of lore here on our side. <laughs> what does it say about me? I've never seen that show. <laughs> oh, it's not a show. It's a don't, book. Don't. Uh, well, I mean, there is a, I mean, there is a movie about it as oh. well, but it doesn't do it as much justice. But the, at the end of the day, don't spoil it, him. Chat, don't, don't you spoil dare! It? Don't, don't you dare! Is it really a good movie? It's pretty good. Pretty decent. Yeah. Is it like an action kind of thing? Uh, sure. Yeah. Some might even call it a comedy. Uh. Really. <laughs> I don't oh. know. It's really dark comedy if you think about it. Oh wow! Okay, now now you got me hooked. Okay, great. Go check it check it out later. Chat, do not, don't you dare spoil it for him. Now, don't tell him. As we come back into this game, right? They're gonna be thinking out through and through. Hopefully, oh, the draft is taking a little bit of time here. Hopefully, they get it uh, set it up faster and get this game going because I'm really excited to see how this is going to go. And every time we look at Fireflux Impunity, the air is just so different around them. The momentum is on their side, yeah. and it's funny to associate the Turkish teams with momentum because they play so cool, calm, and collected. It's crazy, right? Their carbon monoxide hits different. <laughs> the, the yes, we have to we have to change the atmosphere. Yeah. The carbon mon monoxide, the poisonous gas. Oh, one? wait, sorry, the dioxide. <laughs> carbon dioxide. The dioxide. Yes. There's carbon dioxide yes. here. Yes. <laughs> it, it's what they breathe out. And here you see Apex 47. Dude, it's, it's, it's 827. He's here all smiles. In Phnom Penh, Cambodia. <laughs> My carbon dioxide is hitting different. Okay, Apex 47. <laughs> this is his, his uh, comment on the MSC meta. MSC meta is really great. I don't think it's changed a lot. It's pretty similar to M4, but. There's some new heroes which our team utilizes and executes. I don't think we'll face any issues and we'll manage it. Manage it, he did. They did more than just manage it. Yeah, yeah, they really did. They, I, I would like to believe that they have evolved the meta, but there is a level of refinement and there's also I feel, to a certain degree, way too many components to it. It doesn't mean that it's unstoppable. It's just something that Echo was not prepared for. Who would have thought that this would come through? The Minotaur, the Fulvius, as well as the Arla. Just so many things in play. At least now they know. I don't think it's going to work a second time. Remember, Diggy, easy counter to this entire composition. Something that you need to keep in mind going into this. Yes, but also consider, despite the Playmaker's, uh, I'd say, deep arsenal and amazing mechanics, 
I don't see Yaoi as much of a diggy, diggy guy, you know what I mean? You know, he might have to, you know, step down from playing this Kaja time day in, day out, right? But because they'll have to draft around it, yes, but when they pulled it off, yeah. it was at the last phase! Dude, I, I gotta agree with Leo here. Can you can you really imagine Yaoi be like... I, I can't even do the sound Dr. Right. Rooney is my idol! That's the one. That's a lot better than both of us combined. Einstein is my... You're almost there. What was it? A little bit like <laughs> <laughs> no, but again, apprentice student. You 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 will see it in the the, the recap of game two draft, right? The Minotaur came in in the last phase, mm -hmm. and the Kaja was already picked up. Yep. So there really wasn't much that Echo could have done at that point. True, but at least they could be prepared for it this time round. They're not going to fall into the same pit trap once That's again. Right. That's and I right. believe that Coach Tic Tac is going to keep this in mind as soon as possible. I'm already seeing the Estes band here. That means Echo is going to be on the same side once again. They are so adamant on breaking Fire Flux That's Impunity. Right. Hey, you know what? I kind of feel like Fire Flux Impunity Based on what we just saw just now, the last pick kind of favors them quite a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's one of the few compositions, and I would honestly think with a lot of people favoring uh, favoring the first pick side, saying, yeah. Oh, 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 my God. Oh, oh, oh. Look at that. He's looking over. It's like, yeah, we ban out your phobias. So what are you going to do now? How do you like Got that? Him. How do you like him. that, coach? Yeah, I like I'm, that. Dude, really, like, like you, you, gotta, you gotta rewind it, just look at his face. The moment it was bad, he's just looking to the side, he's like, I'm serious now, alright? I don't care. One one picked up again, Kadita Ben. This time, no phobias. What are they gonna do? Are they gonna pick up the Kaja early just so that they can fight against this one one? Or just go with Arlet and beat this again? Same, same. I love it. The building blocks continue to almost seem similar. Oh. And we see the Eve this time. They're like, no, right. we're not going to let this happen. We're not going to go into the second phase and question it. We're going to show what our comp is all about right now. And you have to answer us, not the other way around. This is going to be very interesting. I think this third pick is really going to show whether Fire Flux Impunity, can they handle the yep. draft coming in from Echo or not? Yep. Do they have a substitute to the Fovius? Uh, what else uh, does Lunar hold? Because again, as a former XP laner, subbing in now as their mid, what other fighters in mid can you play, right? Min Sitar. Silvana. 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 Bane. Bane! I don't Dude. know. No, no, I love it actually. Right? But what is it a different kind of Bane from Carl Thies' Bane yesterday? Yeah, just full mage. Not full mage, maybe two items, and the rest go for uh, defense, but he can go full mage if he wants to. <laughs> okay, good and bad. Fairy is good against the Kaja, because Kaja wants to help someone burst someone out, yeah. and then you can handle it. But the bad, the Fairy traditionally does not do that well against the, the E. So right now, good and bad. You have, you, have quite, you have answered one of the questions, one of the problems, but now you're kind of putting one problem onto yourself. For me, it's not as great as the first draft in Game of Two. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see. The second phase is where it gets real interesting, especially for Fireflux and Community, or even Echo in this particular case. I'm looking at Leo and I'm hoping he can answer this, right? Is there an angle for Valentina Jungle here? Uh, Carl Dizzy has been known to play Valentina Jungle more I've than seen a couple him. times. Yeah. yeah, so I don't know whether it's going to be something that's viable because you can tell that it Immunity are making sure, hey, yeah. get rid of the Frederick, get rid of the Ama. So much respect coming from the world champions. No, I get it. Uh, just as important as the Fovius was, Kyura on the Aemon was also key. He really was one of the cleanup crew for Fireflux Impunity in Game 2, and that was so that made Ben Cutie's life so difficult. So even even Sanford was 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 uh, put on the edge by Kyura's Aemon. So yeah, uh, here I'd say the the fact that Valentina hasn't been picked up nor banned yet, if not here, because again it's possible. Bad Joseph and Osprey, we know that they do their homework. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's a good possibility here. Oh boy. Oh, let's see. Let's see what it's gonna be. Next band coming up from the side of Fireflux. Likely lands. Likely lands. Lands already be bad. It's already been bad. Oh, in the okay. First phase. It's uh, very similar to game two. Wow. This land is our oh no, they're gonna attack. Oh, sorry. They're gonna attack. Honestly, okay. this the show. It's kind of not great, right? Because here's the thing about a cheese strat. Cheese can expire. Yep. So it, it will happen only once. If you want a win onto Echo. You need a something different kind of cheese. But what if it's blue cheese? Oh, I'm liking blue cheese. They're on the blue side, aren't they? 
No, I mean, no, no, I mean, oh, wait, no. Wait, no, no, I mean, no, no. you're not blue. entirely wrong. Fimp is blue. Wait, yeah. blue cheese is not blue? It, it it's is. not technically blue, but it does work with molds. Oh, okay. Wait, what? Yep. It's, it, we'll explain it later. Okay. Are we going to pretend like he didn't have an accent just now? Yep, well, oh, we... For now, no, for now. We'll address it later. We'll okay. address it later. All right, move along while we wait for... Uh, still no roamer, still no jungler. Clear for Fim. Yeah, they're really nice maximizing their time here. As wow. Relta. Wait! Wow. What? Uh, Are you thinking as me mid for some reason? Probably not, probably not. But well, we've knows? seen it before. Yeah. But that means Apex will have to play the Faramis. Right? Not the worst thing in the world because, again, Faramis doesn't do that well. Personally, I prefer damage on the Faramis. This is so odd. They're pre-picking the Esmeralda with not much shields except for the Eve. I agree. I agree with Leo 100%, What's right? On? It feels really, really awkward. Like the Esmeralda in this matchup alone, there's so many things that could just blow her out of the water. So why pick it this early on and not save it for the very end? If not, they could have been looking to either secure the mid laner other than the Faramis and put him into support oh. position or lock in their jungler, which I was hoping to see. So in this case, it's straightforward for Echo. It's like, okay, I'm going to get the Akai. I am also going to get the use on, that's no problem, unless Fred Flux and Unity decide, you know what, we're switching things up. You know what's a cheese here? A Valir. Quite a lot of engage here, pushing people away. Very dive. Mm. Very dive. Save for the Eve, yeah. Yeah, because again, we don't know where this Esmeralda is going. Esmeralda will scale pretty well come late game, and we've seen in uh, Fire Flux Impunity doing quite well coming back from a dire situation. So honestly, putting the Esmeralda anywhere mid EXP, I think it can work. We don't know where three of them are going. We don't know where the farm is going, we don't know where the Arlet's going. Granger! So greedy. So Dangerous. very, very greedy. Pick and Granger like it's 2021. That's the seven going in the jungle, right? Yeah, it's probably it's definitely gonna go into the jungle. But why pick it in into the Utah? Why pick it into the Gaja? Why pick it in? Well, I, I can understand one one, especially if you have a level lead. He's even out of range water. by the Eve. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's interesting. Maybe maybe they're thinking, you know what? I'm gonna look for the Death Sonata, and then hopefully we get Esmeralda to jump on top of her to finish her up. Maybe that's the idea. This feels like a horror movie where I want to be, I want to get jump scared. I want to be surprised. I'm not gonna have any opinions for this game. I just want things to happen. I want to shut my brain off and I want to enjoy myself. So, Not that way. Just as a peek into the psyche of one LaFell. <laughs> Interesting. No, but wait, real quick. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, fellas, but the last time we saw a Granger with some modicum of success was in the hands of the Burmese Python Ken from M4. Yep. And then Moa prior, in a bit. prior to that, maybe in some games from Wise, Blacks International. That's it. In, in recent history, that's it. Yep, that's all we have to work off of them. But Guess what, everybody? We're here. This is the final game of the best of three between Echo against Fire Flux Impunity. Mid Esmeralda? No way. Let's go. <laughs> this makes me so bad. This I'm makes not. Me so bad. I'm not. Like, I'm happy. Mad, happy, confused. <laughs> like, like, what are you hoping to achieve? You're just gonna get farmed in the mid lane. And Don't more... achieve anything then. I, I mean, look at this. Look, look at how they're gonna contest. Yes. No, I mean, like, if you can't achieve anything, then don't. You know, just just wait for your friends to do something. Right oh. now, Lunar is getting harassed quite a little bit, but so far, surviving quite well. They're delaying Kyoto's purple here. This is so difficult. Not much Apex 47 can do as well. They pull it into the bush, taking it out of the vision of Echo. Alien here losing this duel. It's so hard to achieve anything, as you guys said. Yeah. I mean, this early game is not going to go in favor of the of Fireflux, and I, I think that's very obvious, but the question is, what are they going to do towards the mid and especially towards the later stages of the game? I am ready to be surprised. I'm ready to be proven wrong, and more importantly, these the Turkish Delight, they've got a couple of weird flavors here. I'm not going to lie. It's not for everybody. Right now, looking at the items, especially at the goal leaners, neither of them are building steel lick plates. They really just want to get their damage as fast as possible. So... I'm kind of feeling if any kind of attention has been brought to the goat lane, someone should die. Something I'm looking forward to. I think it's going to be a standard early game here. Both sides not making any mistakes. They're playing very traditional pathing. They're going to make their way down towards the bottom half of the map and maybe make something happen. But even then, level 4 hasn't been achieved by either Lunar or even Apex. Oh, Yaoi here spots Kura trying to commit. 
Grand Theft Purple does get it, and here's the DJ, but oh, not much of a follow get... through. Here comes Sanford and Sanji, the flicker on forward. Causes he gets the turtle, giving some shields over. Kyura barely survives. Dark first blood by Sanford. That's already one down. Lunar barely gets away. Can Benny Cutie take to the skies? The answer gonna be no. Sunshine does push them away. That'll be just one casualty from Fimp. Right now, I kind of feel like it's still fine because what they want to do is trying to get to the late game. And now, they just don't want Lunar to go home. They're sending him home, but in a different way. That's so brutal. That's so brutal. The passive from Kaja oh. into the first skill coming in from Benny QT. And now even though? Carl Adizi trying to invade this time. It's on Kira. He did use his retribution. I see. Oh. It just didn't show. The, 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 the status didn't show. Yeah, that's so funny. So funny. It's so messy. It really is. It's going to be quite a brawl for a majority of this game. I just... Oh, oh. Divine Judgment on Apex 47 might be forced to use a Cult Altar soon. And there it is, RWM keeping them cordoned in. They pop the extra life. Apex 47 gonna go down here. Benny Cutie gets the kill, takes to the skies. Sunshine survives, here comes Unar with a Falling Star Moon. Less than half health for all members of Echo up top, but there's not much they can do. Considering how last game we saw the Phobius go for a full damage build, is this the same case? Oh, Black Dragon form! Carl Deasy and Sanford stuns Kyura. He goes down, not much he can do. There's a knock up on the alien. They know they can't kill this Arla. They rotate away. Honestly, answering the question, I kind of feel like yes. And at this point, I really feel like what Fireflux Impunity should do is to delay everything. Make sure you don't get caught. Kyura right now is trying to hyper farm because he's not just taking his own jungle. He's trying to take Carl Teasy's jungle. So in a way, that's kind of slowing down your opponent. But again, they got to wait for everyone to get online. And it's somewhat working. Uh, last I checked, Carl Teasy was at 6. He just got the 7. And Kyura was already at 7. So where's his XP coming from? The jungle, man. Like, taking it, like, you have more on yourself. And you're denying Carl Teasy as well. So it is doing double duty here. Got to play selfish for as long as possible, right? It doesn't matter about getting uh, getting a turtle for Call of Duty. It's like that's great for the rest of your team, but maybe not for yourself because you can see that Kira is just power farming. Now let's look at the items here. We're not going to get too much. Oh, oh, RWM plus the heavy spin. Sunshine is down, folks. But no, it took him a while. Does get an ult off. Apex 47 going to be up next. Double kill for Sanji. Not much Fireflux could have done there. While mid is just barely surviving. Kira and Alien clearing the wave. Looking at a 6-0 with a 2.8k goal lead, it looks really bad. But again, right now, this is why what something whispered to me. I think Echo wants to be explosive. I think they want to end this as soon as possible. Yep. I, I think they're mad. You can see it. They're playing dead serious, dead to rights. They look at Fimp and they're like, all right, you want to be treated like equals? Let's do it. Right now, looking at the situation, Betty Cutie now has two core items. Looking at Sunshine, not yet. 4,000 and 2,000. That's a big difference for the gold laners. And it's going to impact them heavily come team fight. But the thing is, Sunshine, he needs three items, man. Four would be a luxury here. Will they even get to that point? Question is, Echo, the last time we saw them play against, uh, playing against Fireflux and Purity, Game 1, as well as Game 2. They had a really great early game in Game 1. Couldn't close it out as cleanly, but eventually got to it. Game number 2 is where we did see a very similar situation here, where it's teetering on the very edge. And yes, 3.2k looks like a lot, considering this is high-tier international play. But we've seen Fireflux actually bounce back from it. Yep, it's capable. Uh, it, it's possible. They're capable of actually shrinking that lead. But now, Echo makes a play for down bottom. RWM by Sanji helping clear the waves. Given vision over way deep behind that tier one as Carl Deasy attempts Grant that purple. Go for a heavy spin, pinning Kyura down. Where'd the purple buff go? Ooh. Here comes Sanford from the west, popping a cult altar early. Apex 47 forced into a compromised position. Look at all the damage. Down goes Kyura. Sanford gets one. The Apex Predator smells blood. Benny Cutie takes to the skies. Alien goes down. Sunshine as well. Oh. 2K for Big Benny. And triple kill as well. Yeah, he's still up. Lunar barely survived, but no. That's a maniac for the storm. What a clean fight. What an incredible fight from Echo. Dude, was that a second or a third maniac? 
Second Maniac. I think Sec the third maybe boots yesterday? Was there more? Right now, again, Maniacs all around here in MSE. No Savages. No Savage yet. <laughs> oh, no Savage just, just yet. But again, we got to look at the instant replay. And the thing that I want to bring up, which kind of has nothing to do with this fight. Actually, you have a go have an a experience advantage on the Granger. So even though they're losing, it looks like they're not losing that hard. But again, with, with Echo not giving space for Five Flux, oh! I don't know what can be done. There's another fight that happened because Sunshine died and Apex died, and then they're pushing this tier two up top. I don't know, man. <laughs> what just happened? I mean, this is the conversion from 5K. They got an extra 2.8 and uh, at 2.8, and now turning into a 3K lead. Echo, they got their foot on the gas. They cannot let go just yet. The last time they did, the high ground defense is great. So keep in mind that Sunshine is going to be a priority target here in this battle. Oh no. Carl TZ taking everything away from Kyura. This XP lead, this gold lead, whatever uh, Kyura is getting over Carl TZ no longer exists. He doesn't have it. And you see that mean thing that Carl TZ did, if I'm not mistaken? He actually left the baby purple. That's going to stop it from, from, from spawning. Just to make it very awkward and force maybe even Carl TZ to actually walk in to did Fireflux's uh, jungle to get so. But now it's compromised, right? The first item power spike has already fallen into the hands of Echo, and they're about to hit their second one. Dude. Look at the, the difference between 1-1 one, one and Beatrix. Oh. The goal. 3,000 and change, almost four. That's big. Huge. That's enormous. That's colossal. Uh, that's huge. I, I can't I can't deal with it anymore. The Astronomical. I, this Esmeralda is just so far behind. How do you expect oh, her yeah. to get four items against a Yeeve in the lane? And especially since you're not even taking average. You're not even like going out of your way just to hit supports just for the fun of it and farm up quick. It's You're just taking damage for the sake of taking damage. It's nine minutes in, but it kind of feels like 18 minutes because looking at how Echo is pushing, I got I gotta say, it's 13 and 0. 13 and 0. Clean as it gets, not even a turret. Uh, Ju Sun. <laughs> oh wait, I actually don't know the zero for Japanese, but <laughs> I'm surprised you know 13 in Japanese. Yeah, Ju Sun. Oh. Ju is 10, Sun is 3. He's okay. nailing it. He's yeah. nailing it. But we're buying time just to see how at least Fireflux Impunity is just gonna hold on, right? We've seen this position before. We've seen how Echo does it. This time, can they close out this game before Fireflux Impunity somehow bounces it back? And this time, I mean, we look at the items of Sunshine, right? He doesn't necessarily have everything he needs to one shot a wave. He has nothing that he needs because, again, the, the difference in terms of item is way too big, and the front lines for Fire Flux Impunity is not there. Sunshine just, just got his BOD. Yep. Kind of feels like a little bit too late. Oh, here comes an RWM. Oh my God. Sunshine put a tenth of his health. Lord and the rest of Echo just barreling away, taking down that inhibitor up top. And now mid, this wave coming in an early called Alter. And there Sanford are. obliges, and there they are coming in. DJ on a Sunshine. Spelling disaster for Fireflux Impunity. Heavy spin by the GOAT, pinning Alien up against the wall. Cura firing away. Alien barely survives. Can they get a kill? Oh, there's Benny Cutie coming in. Sanji gets a monster kill. It's just three left. Can they defend? There's this big canyon away. They're going to clear the waves. No. Instead, move over to the bottom lane inhibitor. This is just cruelty now. Echo, they're not taking any risks against this Turkish squad. They see them as equals. They will be treated like adults. Divine judgment on Apex. Lunar, barely alive. Benny Cutie takes him down. And there's the RWM. Cura falls. 2K for Benny. Make it three. And now the base goes down. Echo, take the series. 15,000 goal lead. As we predicted, it's going to be a wash, a very, very quick game. Two to one, Echo against Fireflux Impunity. Though, to be fair, Echo won. And in the last game, they won quite hard. But the thing is, now, we said before the game, if Fireflux Impunity could get one game, that's still an amazing feat. Yep, they cheesed it out with the draft. Coach Dicknack decides, you know what? No more cheese. Play standard with us. Look me dead in the eye and treat us like true competitors. And this time, we'll show you what we've got. They out macroed them, out microed them, and more importantly, they made sure they made zero mistakes. That was as clean as it gets. Been a while, and this is just course correction from the Orcas. 
the Apex Predators, the top of the chain. Let's go over to Miki. To Eagle! Okay, can you stand here? Hi, okay. Hi. So here's the mic for Yavi. Okay. So the first question is to Yavi. How do you feel about your team performing in the stage group stage? How do you feel about your team performing in the group stage? Ah, uh, sobrang saya po kasi nag-a-apply namin lahat ng pina-practice namin sa scrim and masaya ako ngayon sa performance naming lahat. So so Yawi said he's very happy with the performance so far because everything that they put into the scrim, they get to um, put out in the actual games and they're very happy with the results. Okay, ดังก็ก็ใหญ่ถ้าก็ชมว่าสบายใจชมว่าการเปิดฟอร์มแบบก่อนให้ก็สบายใจชมว่าเราตัดภาพแกบก่อนตัวใบจีพีมวยแม้
That's so sweet. I have uh, to bring this up. I have to bring this up. I think Cambodian look fans. Look at I, I personally think that Cambodian fans are rather insane. It doesn't matter what team. There's somebody yeah. out there that loves a team from the international here up on stage. Good insane. Good insane. Good insane. Good insane, yes. No, even the fans for us casters, you would not believe. Just going around Aeon Mall, Man Chai, you, you, I, I don't expect people to recognize me, right? I, I look like everybody else. My, my name in Kamai is not pleasant. So <laughs> you, you know, right? But they still say, Leo, picture. And I'm like, yes, Akun Bong Akun. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> just, just search out what Leo means ask, in Kamai. Ask, ask a Kamai friend. Ask a Kamai friend. If you don't have a Kamai friend, get one. They're great. They're great. They're awesome. They're so awesome. It's, I'm very glad that MSC is happening here in Cambodia. The Khmer is Actually, just so good. You know what? If, if anyone in the comment section, if any one of you speaks Khmer, you know? Just tell them. Just tell them. Just, just, just let them know. What does Leo mean? In Khmer, yes. People might not believe. We'll vouch for you. We'll vouch for you. Yes. Whatever you say, it's probably true. No, it proceeds to people just saying random stuff. Yep. All right. It's time for the post game. Let's look at our MVP of this match. Coming in hot this time, it's going to be Benny QT. Absolutely crushing the lane, walking away with a GPM, one of the highest ones we've seen so far, right. at 900 at 27 a minute. That's the Manic Storm. He scored the second, maybe third Maniac of MSC 2023. Dude. I, the only one in my mind right now was Boots with that one. Yesterday, on the Uranus on the of all Uranus, things. Yeah. But again, like, just want to be safe. It could be the second. It could be the third. So there there, there might have been another Maniac right? today. I don't, just, we'll because, look it up. Because here's the thing, right? A lot of crazy things have happened, and uh, we just forgot. But either ways, either ways, this is the MVP. And I'm, I want to see later on, because I think... Echo won this game without a single death. Yeah, they did. They had a literal perfect game. They were treating Firefox Impunity like they would treat an adult. They're cha if, when you look at a world champion and world champions are playing against another world champion, there's a different air around them. You can see the lane dominance. You can see the decision making. You can see that there was a level of perfection that not many teams can achieve here. Yep, this is the uh, Echo Express of all Echo Expresses. They added another engine to the already very fast and powerful train that is their main five. And just looking at the draft alone, it looks like Coach Bad Yosef, Coach Osprey, they may have run out of options. Like, this is not a good draft. This is not what the meta demands or asks for in 2023. Yeah, you can say there were some great picks, like, conceptually, but no, a mid lane Esmeralda, a Granger in the jungle, I... I don't know what's going on. Honestly, for me, as someone that plays Faramis quite a bit, I really do feel this is a very bad game for Faramis because, because Apex 47 really could not do anything. He can't frontline, he can't save his teammates because, again, there's a reason people don't pick the Faramis to go up against the Eve. Sure, you could win, but you're really hoping for the rest of your team to pick up the slack. I mean, generally, it comes down to the simple concept of temp HP can't deal with just raw damage or large AoEs. It can hit multiple people, and, and again, it has been nerfed, I wouldn't say to the ground, but it's definitely not as big as it used to be. So 700 extra temp HP, not a problem. Just a couple of taps from Eve, and you're basically reset all over again. But with this perfect game coming out from Echo Sai, you can tell by even from their builds, they got hella greedy. Carl TZ making sure he's going for the full tank. He's not making that mistake going into any sort of damage or even a Thunderbell. But look at Benny QT. When you see, oh, you know what? I'm going to go for that Scarlet Phantom. You know that he is confident in his play. You know for a fact that he's super far ahead of everybody else with a couple of crits even better. Looking at the bill again, zero deaths. This is uh, no mercy. This is no mercy, and this time, especially Sanford, I gotta say, among everyone, I think Sanford was the angriest. Ugh, no mercy, no quarter, no goal. Because look, I'm looking at Fireflux Impunity, and then for the past five minutes, the reason why I've been relatively quiet is because I'm trying to figure out what they were trying to do. This is... I'd say abysmal damage coverage. You kind of want to have at least some level of magic and physical damage output to force your opponents to be honest, for them to build both the Antikiras and both the Athena Shield. Here, it was all physical. That's all they were banking on. Uh, Esmeralda deals very little DPS, and even that, you want her to be some level of peel. Apex 47, he's the roamer. 
He's the roamer, so he's gonna build tank here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're, you're looking at Sunshine, you're looking at Cura, you're looking at alien ability damage output, and that's why all Carlty's he dealt with was physical defense. That's it. I was looking for like, uh, not even tough boots. Yeah, it's just it's you can't do anything with comp, right? It really. Let's say, let's say in a perfect world that both teams manage to somehow make it all the way to the 30 minute mark. Argue, I would say a little bit more generous, 20 minute mark, and we have full items on both sides. Maybe Fireflux Impunity could look to do something, right? Then Esmeralda is finally online. The Arlot should be able to tank. Cura unfortunately won't be able to scale as hard as Sunshine, but he can still clean up fights, which is important. But at the end of the day, that's impossible to achieve with the lineup that we are seeing from Echo. Day in, day out, they get outscaled. The laning is basically impossible for a majority of their members. And more importantly, without control over the mid lane, Echo gets to move wherever they want, however they want. Yeah, this last page of our post-game analysis doesn't really help paint the picture because of a perfect game, right? Yep. Like, these numbers are totally skewed and totally leaning over to the victors in Echo. So now, I'd like to just present uh, a possibility, right? What if, what if we're, we're judging this comp and maybe a year from now, much like tanks a lot, we might be reading it from an angle that only the team understands. Because again, I will have to be the first to admit, I gave Ken of Falcon a lot of slack because of that tanks a lot, but now it's all the rage. What if this is the same situation with this lineup from Fireflux Impunity? Possibly. That, that's actually quite interesting because mm -hmm. honestly, if I want to wrap up their, their draft, I would say this is very optimistic. Very optimistic that you won't get punished in the early stage of the game. So I kind of feel like with this kind of draft, if it comes to the point where you do not get punished early, when you can clear the ways relatively safely for you to get to those items, I think those are the changes that has to be done for this to be pretty meta. Honestly, I personally think that Coach Tic Tac, he went into the room, looked at the rest of his boys, they all looked back at him, he took the Filipino flag, turned it around real quick, <laughs> hurt him, hurt him real good, went back into the room, is that how Filipinos do it? Yeah, no, no, no. When it's in, in, a, in a state of war, yes. the oh, red goes on top. up. Yeah. Oh, dude, I'm learning a lot today. Pretty cool, right? That's it's very one unique, cool. It's one unique thing about their flag. It's great. Now, let's look at the group stages all over again. We have Group A Echo sitting right on top, but we still have another match of Fireflux Impunity with Evo to kind of settle who makes it through to the knockouts and who doesn't. Recapping, RSG sitting right on top as they have knocked Ooh. out oh. Phoenix. But that means that we still need to see that matchup between EVOS Legends and as well as RSG. I'm looking forward to it. Group B is amazing. That's amazing, <laughs> man. Nobody would have expected that Dude. being the group of quote unquote death, as they I, like to say. I think people would have it in reverse, right? People would have RSG slay SG at the bottom and Phoenix somewhere number one, number two, right? But tomorrow, man, Group C, Group D, more matches. We're gonna finally see outplay, play, blacklist, play as well. All right, uh, I was excited to say that there are two more teams that we haven't seen play, and tomorrow's gonna be a treat. Dude, let's start it off. RSG Slate SG going up uh, against Evos Legends from Indonesia. There it is. Amazing game. Second game, Onik Indonesia going up <laughs> against outplay from North America. Amazing, and blacklist. Their debut here in MSC going up against Occupy. For Occupy, the boys from Egypt, is going to be a reset of all resets. Mm -hmm. How about it? From today's sweeping loss against Todak, they have to just erase all that and then come back tomorrow and face the M3 World Champions. Yesterday we hit 1 million, right? That's right. I wonder tomorrow if we're going to break another one. I feel like Two I million? feel it. 2 million? I'll make, a, I'll make a hard prediction. 3 million. Onik outplay? Both. Maybe Onik out, maybe all three. Because again, all of Indonesia and all of Singapore, plus the agents for match three. Dude, think about it. It's definitely a possibility, but more importantly, this means that it's going to be done for us, at the very least, here at the desk. Well, that's it for us here. Thank you very much, Leo. Thank you very much, Gideon. And thank you for your services. But now, we're going to throw it over to Harada Miki to wrap all this up beautifully. Okay, everyone, we have three wonderful serves today for day two of MSE 2023. No, the net on behalf of, of Moonton, our sponsor and the production, I would like 
to thank all the fans that come to the arena as well as those of you who watch it on the broadcast. Thank you so much. We hope that you will continue to tune in for the remaining day after MSC. So, hôm nay này tạo khía nâng thua ca tam đan tu sna sầm đắp hai sai bẩn to tiết chung mùi nâng ca bạc cốt MSC đôi khía. Until then, this is Haradamiki. Thank you and see you tomorrow. Bye.
with Destiny Kingdom and Lee Shining oh. like Atlas, winning of madness Count us for practice, that is a smash As we are the heroes here to slay Never back down, under oh. restraint Yo, yo, fatal link Yo, yo, sink or swim Woo. Match by match, day by day Determination and one at a time
Strive for dominate.